Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello and welcome everyone to another long, wonderful, but mostly long, episode of the Cultaholic Weekly Wrestling Podcast. You're listening to the dulcet tones of Matthew. Joined as always by the lovely Jack the Jobber. Hello. And Ross on wrestling. Hello. Ross, that beard's coming along all right. Just shy of three weeks' growth. Oh. I'm on. I'm in it for the long haul now. The earliest I'm shaving is just before Christmas. I'm giving myself three months, and if it looks like crap, then then we'll get rid. Nice. But it's got a nice base. I'm confident. Buttery, buttery biscuit base. Yeah. Oh, buttery biscuit base. Yeah. Mm. Greg Davis, right in your face, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's right. <laughs> the crowd say bow selector. <laughs> Jack, how are you? I'm all right. I, I, last week I was ill. This week I've got a cough, but the illness is largely gone. So I, I'm, I'm better than I was last week. Oh, I wasn't even on the... I booked it off last week because it was my birthday. Yes, it was your oh, birthday. Right, okay, never That's mind. That's right. right. But you were getting a bit ill anyway. Yeah, no, I'd you already... You got illness for your birthday. I'd already been ill. Do you not have a PlayStation? <laughs> oh. And then uh, this week, I, like, I feel better in myself, but apologies if I do cough. But I am armed with throat lozenges and stuff, so hopefully it's all right. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to you cough and paying more attention than I would have. But now you've said it, I'm all ready for it. Mm. Yeah. That's quite sad that it would take a cough for you to pay attention like that. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Have you been watching the new Drag Race UK? I saw the first episode, me. Not seen any more. I like Theresa May. That's the one. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hate me because I'm an immigrant. Oh, I, I saw so that around the interweb. Uh, yeah. But what's the, the name? Theresa May. Theresa May. Theresa May. The name's like absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. It's really funny. She's the Spanish Geordie. Yeah. Oh. From Spain, but lives in Newcastle. Oh, nice. No, she counts okay. Okay. Don't you be saying she doesn't count for, for Drag Race UK. She's a Geordie. Yeah. Yeah. She's mental. She's off her flipping head. Mental. The Geordies. Th- off their head. Has anything happened no, this week? No, God's sake. Anything at all? I mean, it's been such a crazy news week already. Stay, I'm I mean, um, the Zodiac Killer. Oh, I. Has been identified. Bloody Gary, yeah? Just carry Gary, down the road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, Pretty much. That, the, he's about the Facebook photos. The guy like, oh, Gary. Just Gary? Yeah. He did it all. Bloody Gary, yeah? 40 years, 50 years, got away with it. Bloody Gary, yeah? What's he like? But his mate knew as well. The one taking the pictures with him. He was like, oh, it's Gary. Zodiac. <laughs> Great lad, though. <laughs> Great guy. Yeah. <laughs> Helped him move house one time in uh, 87. Didn't say anything. But the, the Zodiac killer in those photos looks like he hates him. And the other guy looks buzzing. Like, he's like, hey. So it's like as if he's told him that he's the Zodiac killer. And he's like, well, now I've got to be his friend. Oh, man. It's like a Riddle and Randy Orton relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Zodiac killer is Randy Orton. <laughs> I love you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think someone tweeted, I can't remember if it was a true story or not, but somebody tweeted, like, my dad worked with Ted Bundy and he dropped him off every Friday. And he, every every single Friday, oh, about yes. fairly, go, see you Monday, Bundy. <laughs> and the tweet ended with, I don't know why Bundy did not murder my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Zodiac Killer, turns out it was Hornswoggle all along. <laughs> Just as friggin' anticlimatic. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, I know, David Lee Roth. Retiring from music after Kiss said, You're a bit old and crap, aren't you? And he went, Coming from you guys. Oh, uh, but, all right, but, I'm done. But <laughs> Sam, who knows his music, uh, I don't know why I said music like that, uh, reckons he's been phoning in for a long time, just been standing in front of thousands of people, just sort of shuffling on the spot. I think the, the phrase Sam used was, Scare them review there from the driver. Mm. Yeah. True or false? You tell me, comments. I don't know. He's doing that CMLL thing. Are Molly Crew still going? Uh, that's a matter of debate. Uh, yeah, in a way. The only just... way they've got momentum is because the world turns. Yeah. <laughs> they've all just relocated to Dolph Ziggler's body. That's what it is. Just that's Motley Crue now. Just yeah. inside Dolph. Yeah. Aye. Motley Crue would not let Dolph be one of their friends in the 80s. <laughs> no. I think he's far too clean <laughs> for them. He'd be taking photos of him and the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, AE Dub have a new title. They do. They do. Lovely, the TBS title. The TSB title. Well, you've ruined it for me now. I, I, saw I didn't see this. Someone else pointed out to me, and I went, TBS. Like, young young Jamie, right. young Jamie, I'm going to ask you to pull up the new TBS title on the Google machine. We have a different Jamie 
at the wheel today. Yeah, it's it's Andrew, so it's the even younger Jamie. It's the even younger Jamie. But I obviously you just see the TBS logo. Right, and yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, you people be the judge. It's TBS, that's the logo, that's how it works. Right. But Matthew on Twitter has pointed out something which I will oh, ex- no. let him explain when young Jamie fires it up on the old on the old OBS machine. Here we go. Ooh. It's coming in hot. <gasps> Oh! It's a wall! <laughs> it's the wall, brother! Oh. It's been working before. Hey, it's us again! Before. You gotta click, go on the, back on the thing. I go back on the thing. And then click on the browser. And then if I do. No, click, no, double click on the browser. And then you see where it's red at the top. Yeah, oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. It resets it, yeah, yeah. Do that, and then. That's it. Only, oh, it's only. Cl- it. It's not done it. Oh! Oh, my I'll God. Streamlabs does right. that. Just, just go in, just go in on a flyer, right? If we do, uh, <laughs> keep speaking amongst yourselves. I will speak amongst But I, Tony Khan has, well, via Tony Schiavone, revealed a new title, a new secondary title for the Ledes, which That's is right. a strange move when they haven't really got enough time for one title on AEW. They've mm-hmm. now got two, so that's going to push the backs further up against the wall there, I guess. Mm, mm. It's just where they go and just take the entire NWA women's roster and go, yeah, <laughs> we don't really need you guys anymore, do we? In which case, I'm all for it. Mm. It was unveiled. Could, it was could very we, nice. Can we just pop up, a, just a pic in the old-fashioned way, just pop up a picture of it on the screen for the viewers to see if this doesn't work? Uh, I can do. <laughs> no, not like live, not right now, just in post, just in post. Oh, no, he's got it. He's, he's, he's got it. Go yeah, on. there you go. That, that's there it. There you go. Oh, what a, what a nice made background. It. Looks like we've made it. When I, uh, when I tried it this morning, Richard, uh, I've used never before. leave us. No, don't, no. Richard, stay forever, right? Uh, Just open image, yeah, yeah. Open image, new tab, then, then click it. Then yeah, it's there. It's what you're doing on screen is showing. Fine. Andrew, told, oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. Yes, right. thank you. If you can squint. So TBS, the name of the, uh, the TV Apparently network. There we TNT's go. bigger brother or something. That's right. Oh, yeah. TNT's a subsidiary of TBS, well, that's just I believe. their normal logo, Matthew. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? Nah. Until you look at it and go... O's. What? O's. Why do you say like Apple? Because you like the two Ronnies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean O's. Uh, Hose. H O S. Oh, Capital H. Oh, no. Little O S. In different area codes. Oh, yes. that's a shame. The hose belt. No, it doesn't mean that. They've come so far. Those are the thoughts of Matthew Gregg and <laughs> those who have caught the Holocaust wrestling as a whole. <laughs> Damn it. I, I set me up just for that. I never noticed that until you point out on Twitter, but now I'll not be able to unsee it. You've ruined that title forever. Oh, good. It's not even had one defense yet. <laughs> so happy. Uh, what the weirdness? Oh, I don't know. Do we convince, oh, sorry, considered reviving the League of Nations with Mojo Raleigh, Nakamura, and Cesaro? Because it was such a staggering success the first time, I imagine. <laughs> uh, Raleigh teamed with Nakamura and Cesaro against Shorty G in the New Day. In uh, 2020, Mojo told uh, Chris Hero on shoot conversations, which we saw clips of this week with you. The Yoshi Tatsu, Yoshi Tatsu one. one. Oh, I've not seen the Yoshi Tatsu one. <laughs> oh, I've seen the one st- where he's talking about how his first match with kickouts was on the main roster. Now they were doing a drill in the performance center, and I had to, it was a, they were standing in the middle of the ring and have to get them in a headlock and talk to each other. And if they were heard by the people on the apron, mm. they would have to do some sort of cardio drill yeah. or something like this punishment. And Yoshi's got Mojo in a headlock, isn't it? And he's talking to him like, oh, I bought a CD. Mojo's like, okay. That's the like, first bit. Yeah, yeah I, I, I bought a CD. Mojo's like, okay, what's the next bit of the story? Get on. He's like, I bought a CD. Do you know what CD was? And Mojo was like, nah, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Yoshi Tatsu goes, CD's nuts. Uh... <laughs> he went up in my estimations uh, when he did oh, that. Yoshi absolutely. Tatsu. <laughs> we do that to a man like Mojo, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently Mojo said he lost it. And yeah. I assume failed the drill and had to do some cardio punishment. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, apart from that wonderful story that was shared, <laughs> which looks like a good shooting of you series by the looks of things. Uh, yeah, he revealed my most WrestleMania, most, sorry, most recent mania. I'm doing the heel thing. I tag with Cesaro and Nakamura. They like that. They talked about being a new League of Nations and I was going to be the mouthpiece of it. Who knows how much that was going to be a thing. Uh, and then I'm doing my heel stuff. Then the 24-7 stuff was around there. Then I moved SmackDown. I was really hyped up as Babyface to bring in Rob. <laughs> We had big plans, and then blah, 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 but it didn't happen. That's all the fact that they brought in the League of Nations. Because he went, you know what, that was such a good thing. I enjoyed the lads back in the day. It was just the lads having a good time, wasn't it? Oh, them doing the little thing and, like, photos and stuff backstage and try, like, there's little bits. Yeah, sure. The lads. But, like, everything on TV was rubbish. They yeah. were booked badly, but you could tell they were friends. I mean, Miro, was, yeah. uh, sorry, Rusev won a title, didn't he, back in the day, famously so, as part of the League of Nations. 
Have you been the US? The WWE no. TV Championship. Oh. <laughs> See, I was mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, everything they did that wasn't on TV was awesome. <laughs> the photos of them just pointing like that. That was oh. good, that one. Of what was, forget what the angle was. It was something to do with Reigns where... It was, was in the Rumble. They start hugging Vince McMahon. It, <laughs> yes. It, it, was, it was in the Rumble where Reigns was... He went in as champion at number one. And Rusev was second and put him through the announce table. And Vince is there and he's like, come here, boss. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> just takes the monitor with him. And I interviewed Seamus just before the pandemic. And he said that Miro has still got that. <laughs> just kept the monitor. Oh, I don't know. If, he told me that off the record. It's not going to... He's that's probably a, pulling you up on... monitor, man. It's he's keep... left now. It's fine. Aye. He's not going back. No. Yeah, that's why the man at Miro. <laughs> yeah. He kept that one TV Why monitor. was I not pushed properly? Oh, I don't know, because you talked the TV monitor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you heard about that? Big E also said this week, the really legal would not clear a big meaty men slapping meat. <laughs> Section of merchandise. Why not? Throwing away millions there, Sally. I know. How, what would that look like in your mind? If <laughs> <had> a, <laughs> Come on, Ross. If Biggie had <laughs> merchandise surrounding the whole big man slapping meat shtick, what would that look like? Mafu? Mafu? Uh, it would look very nice. <laughs> I've got a design. Have you, Jack? Go on. Just Biggie and Lashley. Uh, sorry, who are the big meaty men? I mean, it's Biggie and Goldberg, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the pair of them in cartoon form with just two massive comical T-bone steaks just going like that would be a way around. Giant girthy bits of meat would be true. Yeah. I'd specified at real time. Giant <laughs> yeah. girthy yeah. bits of meat. Mm. Bits of man's getting a tattoo. They can sell like cuddly toy steak shaped things with Biggie's face and Goldberg on. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. All well, for the kids. Yeah, let's move on. In conversation with Ryan Satin, sorry, Ryan Satan, to apologise, <laughs> an out character, Dominic Mysterio shared his thoughts of the <laughs> of the SummerSlam 2005 match between Ray and... <laughs> sorry. Oh. Compose yourself. Yeah, when Eddie Guerrero and Ray Mysterio talk on each other for custody of Dominic. Well, Dominic is asked about it. He says, I don't know if I thought Eddie was his real dad, but I thought if Eddie would, <laughs> he would have to go home and live with Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so in WCPW, sometimes we weren't privy to certain booking decisions. Just it's just a way of exercising power, I think, from the higher ups, right? Yeah. But in this instance, you got to tell the kid this is not real, haven't you? Uh, I saw another interview with him a few months ago where he's like, he would go to school and the teachers would like pull it one side and go, "We've been watching the telly. Like, yeah. is everything okay?" So imagine when you're that young, oh. people outside of it believing it's real would sort of feed into the narrative that my God, is this actually real? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's fake. Then Ten people ask you, is it? You're like, oh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I think that was real. I generally thought I'd probably end up going home with them because I don't... I remember them telling me that, like, they wanted to do this storyline and my dad pitched it to me and I was all on board with it. But I remember asking him afterwards, I'm like, what's going to happen <laughs> when this match happens and if you don't? <laughs> and he says, maybe if I had to live with Eddie, I'd be like, you know what? Eddie's cool. I don't mind. <laughs> be fine, wouldn't it? It's sad that he didn't... What a thing to tell your real dad. <laughs> oh, I've had to know Eddie, it's, it's all right. <laughs> what? He also didn't back his dad as a wrestler. Thought he'd lose. He's not watched Halloween, have he? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Former WWE superstar uh, Kenny Dykstra, Ken Doan was friends, has joined WWE as a performance center coach. Oh. According to Mike Johnson, the PWI insider. Uh, he's only 35. That's How young was he at the yeah. time then? Wow. Young. Yeah. 20 like, odd, 21. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them, where was... The, 2006, wasn't it, when they first rocked up the Spirit Squad? Was he squad? the one when they split up from the Squirrel Squad? He was the lad, like, Ric Flair. The Squirrel went... Squad? <laughs> the Squirrel <laughs> Squad, squad. yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That's a t-shirt. <laughs> was he the one when he split from Spirit Squad? There we go. Ric Flair was like, I've had more women than you've had matches. No. I've won more titles than you've had women. Oh, oh maybe. Oh. I don't know. Was that him? Because he was, like, super duper young. Yeah. It might have been. He, w he was the, what, the breakout one, wasn't he? Yeah. Not, not Ziggler. Yeah. I remember. I remember them at WX Dub and they got brought in and everyone was like, why have WX Dub brought in the Spirit Squad? Really? Because if, if I was going to a promotion and they brought in the Spirit Squad, I'd be like, yes, get in. I wouldn't be like, why? It was like, uh, that's pretty out there. So they go, ah, oh, get the old school WWE crowd in. They went, well, we were so sick of the crowd cheering the bad guys that we brought in some bad guys that are definitely not going to get cheered. And he was right. They was, were this, awesome. was this pre or post? Fantastic return in the mid last decade. Oh, when they came they... out 2016, right? Yeah, yeah. this was 2017. Ah, so right. yeah, it was after. 
No, what I mean, a weird I, time that was. Yeah. Them rocking up, headbangers came back for a I was week. I say, yeah, the headbangers. Oh. Like, Miz, we need a tag team to work cool with who are cheap. Hmm? Went too cool on NXT ones. Have I made that up? Were they? Oh, it's Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, they did go against the like Central. Early. Oh, oh, really yeah. early NXT. NXT oh, yeah. was it earlier than I'm thinking, right? Yeah. yeah, just so many things happening in wrestling. Now I won't do it yet. I'll oh, it's just okay. a bit longer. Oh, I know. What could be weirder than any other things coming back? I know. The Women of Wrestling's back. Wow. What a, what a strange, strange way they're going about it. By pro- yeah. prodding the proverbial bear. Is that the right phrase? I've prodding the bear. I mean, you wouldn't want to prod a bear. When you try and antagonize folk, what are you prodding? Saying boot to a goose. <laughs> Whatever the phrase is. Isn't it is. poking the bear? Poking the bear, not prodding the bear. I think that what's the difference between a prod and a poke? Well, Let us know in the comments Depends down below. Dinner mm-hmm. first, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Buy me a drink, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes, they prodded the poke. They did everything else to the bear. Wow. <laughs> eight, I thought eight. you said they prodded the pope there. They prodded, they prodded the, the pope. pope. <laughs> in my head, it's English. <laughs> AJ Mendez. Well, we're turning to wrestling for the first That's time in a long bit. time. That's Woohoo! Lots of other people. Got Jack's first cough if you're having a drink at home. Second time. <laughs> Sorry, second. Well, I'll put, a stra- I'll put a strap thing. The first one was a dark match. No. Uh, yeah, AJ Mendez is back. Everyone loves AJ Mendez. Fantastic. Uh, oh, um, Tessa Blanchard. A c- with accompanying nuclear t shirt playing off the nuclear heat sort oh, of really? stuff. Oh, really? Because, ah, you dirt sheets, you write your potentially factually correct headlines. We'll show you. You'll see. Take that one. <laughs> it's called Stevie Richards. <laughs> yeah, it's good because I saw it out. That's a good shirt because if so, you want to... Oh, you got nuclear heat. Why is that? What are they going to say? Uh, look at that. And run away. Allegedly, allegedly. All alleged. Uh, all Tess has done is deny it um, and say no. Which one she was denying, I can't remember. <laughs> there were lots of them. There was? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just strange how they're doing that and antagonizing folk when they're trying to get off the floor. Strange. Yep. But AJ being back's good news, and the, the role she's got is good, and it? she's going to be the color commentator and the sort of producer of things, nurturing the talent of tomorrow. It's weird that when me and Andrew reported it on the news a few days ago, um, we, we read that... Um, a year ago or so, the guy that they, 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 they go around asking like old roster members of WOW, wow, that, um, like, oh, are you going back? Have you heard about it coming back or not? And they all said, no, the last time we heard from the owner was when the Tessa Blanchard thing was going on and he rang us to say, don't talk about this publicly. And mm. they were like, what? And to me, that sounds like that sounds like they're just at home, like making their breakfast. And then he just rings up and goes, don't talk about Tessa Blanchard. They're like, eh, <laughs> not even in wrestling anymore. So I don't know. My stepmom would do that with your brother. He'd be like, all right, Matthew's brother. I don't know what his name said. Uh, there's a show on Channel 5 tonight about hardcore porn. I was like, what? So, yeah, you can't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. You know, I don't know why. It was a bizarre thing she was going through that period. So I think I'd say, hey, you know, the, you know all the stuff that's just saying? It's like, yeah, oh, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, don't talk about it. Yeah. I don't know what else we say there. <sighs> yeah, it's just very interesting to see because it happened at the same time AW Dynamite was happening and uh, it was just like, everyone's like, wow, what's happening on Twitter? Oh, okay, cool. And then, of course, that leads us to absolutely nothing happening in the wonderful world of Round the Corner. We'll say it briefly at the very end and try and see how long we get through the podcast. For people who aren't into this type of thing, there's a big split in the area between certain people or whatever. NUFC's been taken over by the Saudis. Yeah, it's conf- uh, conflicting. Like Newcastle doesn't like Newcastle. Yeah, it's conflicting because it, a lot of people are celebrating because it's the end of Mike Ashley and it's it's 14 years of a, a football club being neglected and not run like a football club maybe should be in the Premier League when you compare it to other, uh, other Premier League teams and how they're run. But on the other hand, you can't ignore where the money's coming from. But again, Newcastle fans ain't got to say where the money comes from or all that deal getting done. So it's there and it's happened. Um, so it's conflicting. That's what my thoughts are on it. It's uh, and obviously the, uh, the Johnny Sh- was he called Johnny Sharples? Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he summed it up pretty nicely. Where it's like because it was a certain section of the fans thinking, oh, we're we're getting picked on because they're bringing all this stuff up. We're not getting picked on. It's just stuff that should be reported on because it's happening and we can't ignore it. So, but again, football fans don't have a choice in 
in what deals are done and what deals aren't done. So to have a go at them for the stuff that happens over there and all that stuff, it's just I don't know what you how how we can combat any of that. So conflicting emotions. I'm not. I'm not beautifully conflicted. said, Ross. It was very well said, but I'm not conflicted. You're not conflicted. Nah. What are your thoughts? Nope. If I speak, I am in big trouble. <laughs> I see. That's absolutely fair enough. Well, on that bombshell, <laughs> that was the news. <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, from that lovely bit to another lovely bit. Everyone's favourite segment, the Hall of Fame. In condescending order from last week, the tech person pressing the bu- <laughs> pressing the buttons with the demon's heartbeat lights at Extreme Rules, 17%. <laughs> who was that? Have a guess. You? No, no. Oh, the tech person. So who was on the podcast last week then? S- Sam. Sam. It was Sam. <laughs> that, that, would, that would have been Sam. That was good because we had Puppet Jack in lieu of you being not nice. obviously absent, so I was doing the thing. Oh, things. bloody hell, we need to redress. He's been ill most of the week. so I've that- already booked Friday off. That thing, no, the, Last the, the the thing that should be in this segment. The thing that should be in this segment. The on-location shoot. Oh. oh, yeah, of course, yeah. I will still do it. I will still do it. I will still do it. I'll still yeah, but the not going to be bothered about his uh, laptop now. He's just going <laughs> <laughs> to the entire time. No, I'll wait until the cost go. Yeah. But I will do it. I will. I'm a man of my word. Yeah. Oh, uh, big your pardon, this is not done right. Oh, but Tim Horton's 10%. That's disgusting, that. I oh, that's very picture. nice, Gordon. You. She had a picture on Instagram. A lot of people were saying, like, oh, it's quite rubbish, that. I had a, ah, lovely, really? I had a lovely time. Tim Hortons. Is that ice cream? <laughs> no, coffee. No, like, I, it's the Canadian, Canadian Starbucks. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry, I think I'm thinking of, like, Baskin Robbins or something. Tim Hortons. Cow Basque. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no those, that was good. I like that. Armed Anderson, 74%. The pun, I like that even the better. The pun is great as well. Thank you. Armed Anderson. So great. He took it to new levels this week, didn't he? We'll get on that later. He, he, will, he, he really will. did. Some point out that he'd... Uh, I can't remember the context of it. Oh, it must have been backstage at WrestleMania, maybe 29, with um, CM Punk Undertaker. Uh, he had the urn that they were using with sunglasses on. He's like, yeah, remember Urn Anderson? <laughs> He's got a good sense of humour. A man. joke for the Northeast there. That's how they say Arn in Ashington. Urn, yeah. Urn. It's good, that. Thank you. Three people understood. Yeah. Well, Kino <laughs> logo, when we like on Twitter, yeah, and peas pudding, dislike in person. You. Do you like peas pudding? pudding? No, no. Ham, ham um, and it's, peas. Ham it's, and peas. Peas pudding is so like wet and dry at the same time. I don't like it. Yeah. What do you have it with? I don't. But I guess I guess if I was to have it with something, yeah, ham in a sandwich. It just ruins a ham sandwich. Mm. Mom, can I have a ham sandwich? Do you want peas pudding in it? No, I don't. I'll Why not, arm, please? Because it's disgusting. Get out. You're not. Re- you're not really. Ross takes up the mask. <laughs> it's a Zodiac killer. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> so my pick for the Hall of Fame this week, which I'm definitely not thinking off off the top of my head, because it, there's been so many crazy things happening. Who can think of a highlight? Um, let's see. What I were like. AEW Dynamite was good this week. You know what? Luchasaurus. Okay. Luchasaurus is mint. I'm not positive enough about wrestling. I don't feel sometimes I think I bitch too much. That's true, absolutely. But you, when you're bitching, you have to remember the things you actually like. Got to take the bitches with the botches. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oh my god, that was great. That was good. That Put was that really in your good. Twitter bio, yeah. please. Yeah. I take the bitches with the botches. Yeah. I love what? it when they call me Big Botcher. So <laughs> uh, I have to give props to Luchasaurus for his killing spree. He did what the real dinosaurs did to the cavemen. I thought you were going to bring up the Zodiac Killer again. <laughs> oh, no. He wears a mask. Oh, my God, you're right. He actually looks a bit like Seth Rollins when he takes the mask off. Yeah. He does. Like a big old stretch Seth Rollins. Mm. Take Seth Rollins and MS Paint stretch him. Mm. Yeah, he just had this wonderful spree where he chokeslammed Adam Cole onto Kenny Omega, did the front flip, which is very impressive for, what, 6'8"? Something. Like, well, that might be his build height, but he's still tall. Yeah, he's, he's, still very he, tall. he's big. Um, did that. Took out one of the young books, Yvon Ducks, who took him out. Then did the over-the-top malarkey, and then moonsault the outside. We're going, Rawr. Yeah. It was, the, it was on Rampage last week. I think I got my, my notes when we do Rampage review. The selling of the Panama Sunrise. Luchasaurus doing that as well. So it's not just one way. It goes to other as well. Yeah. He goes both ways. <sighs> yes. Uh, and he's one of these people who, one of these 
bubbling under dudes. Obviously, got the main main event dudes, uh, Cole, Punk, Omega, etc. But they've got these people underneath. Where it's like, let's just say their flight's delayed. Let's just say you know the Iceland volcano erupts again and they're stuck and he like who forgot to have a title shot or whatever. They got like they could do worse than having like Luchasaurus is here. And I'm like, coming out. I'm gonna pose a question now to prod the Pope, so to speak. <laughs> This is a new phrase we've caught in the podcast. The We're going to prod the Pope here. Is Luchasaurus keeping himself away from being AEW world champion by being a dinosaur? If he lost oh, the mask, nah. If he lost the mask, would he have a higher chance of becoming AEW world champion? The the Pope has been prodded. It's hard, exactly. isn't it? Because <laughs> part of why he's so popular is because he's a dinosaur, big dinosaur. The innocence of the gimmick, yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying because on some ways, no, it doesn't create main event style. But at the same time, without that, it's just big white bloke doing flips. Lots of that in AW already. So I think whatever makes him different is going to enhance what he's got. He could he could bring back, what was it? Judas? Messiah? Is that him? Ju- no, no. What was his name in NXT? I forgot. I completely one know. appearance. Young Jamie. No, Judas do Messiah is the guy it, from uh, do TNA. A quick, a quick background Google. But, oh, um, a quick one. Hang on. A quick one. Judas Messiah? Don't have to bring, don't have to bring it up. No? Maybe, I don't know. Wasn't he... Who was... Um, who was... What's he called again in, in Lucha Underground, like the big bad one? Not Jeff Cobb, the evil one. The one... The one. Miyamoto. Yeah. Who was he? Was he Judas Messiah? Yeah. Oh, right. That's okay, okay. There you go. Judas Devlin. Seen it. At the top there. Judas Devlin. That's his name in NXT. Yeah, that, that, that's just a dude. Right. Oh. But a naughty there's dude, too, There's too many white guys with long hair and beards and, you know, I'm just saying... <laughs> The room at the top. But dinosaur lads, absolutely. Get them all. Seen them. Well, they have like another dude as a dinosaur. Like, no. <laughs> like, I can't believe I thought I left you in the, the Petalenion age. Who was that? Who was oh, sort of the King Kong name. to his Godzilla a while ago? They did that thing in the time with the movie. Oh. Oh, I was a uh, Bear Country. Yeah, Bear, Bear Country. Country yeah. I was the one, yeah. Yeah. Just got a primate in. I push. Have you a seen primate? Aye. Aye. There we go. I'll be King Kong. Have you seen <laughs> him? I'm three million years old. Have you seen Luchasaurus talk about, I think it's when he's on the shoot interview with the Young Bucks talking about his time in Big Brother. He was on one of the series of Big Brother in America before he was Luchasaurus. He didn't just go into the Big Brother house. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but they do a lot more like sort of physical challenges, I think, in the American ones. He was obviously class at it. Like he was just, oh. but he said that j- during his time in the Big Brother house, he got into a bit of like a relationship or like a flirtation with one of the other contestants. But he was like, some days she just wouldn't seem to like like me as much and stuff, and it was really weird. Turns out she was part of the twist of the series, which was that she was a twin, and they'd swap her twin in, like, some days, like, without any... And they, their challenge was they had to do that without anyone realising they were twins. So sometimes you'd be like, yeah, she just seemed really annoyed by me, like, half the time. And then I realised it was literally a different person. <laughs> literally doing the old switcheroo behind the referee's back. Twin, twin magic, magic, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The killer bees. Wow. I had no idea about that. That was fascinating. Yeah. Um, well, I'm happy for our giant dinosaur overlord, uh, and I hope he takes over a few football clubs where he's at it. So that's my pick, Luchasaurus. <laughs> what have you got? Who was second place? Uh, oh, Sam. So me. Yeah, Sam um, Jr. Well, I was going to... I didn't really have one until the last segment, and I was about to tell a story, but then... Oh, get in. No, no, it's not my own story to tell, unfortunately. But um, I realized oh, I'll just save this for the Hall of Fame. So Andrew is young Jamie in this episode. Sorry to pull back the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I realized like Andrew's very impressive because like, in this world, it's so easy to just be annoyed by people. And I've never known Andrew like express that. I'm sure you do get annoyed by people internally, but I've never seen you be angry at someone or snap at someone or even like, I've, ne- I've never seen you be negative to someone in any way, right? That's Which cool. is very oh, actually. Impre- Oh, have you? Mm. Which is very, well, personally, I haven't, which is very impressive. And then I remembered one story that Andrew told me where he was a bit of a rascal in the story, but he wasn't really. It was more, Andrew used to be in a band, right? And uh, they were, where's it in London? Yeah. They were playing a gig somewhere. He said yes. This sounds like a Skins episode. Look at him melting that chair. They got on the wrong side of some bikers, right? Okay. Who who then like chased them from the venue or something because one of Andrew's bandmates had called them Bell's Angels, which I just think is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> what an insult that is! <laughs> Isn't that good? Is that what happened? Yeah. So we were playing. It was like a. House Come and speak into yeah, the no, mic. No one's going to hear this. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank 
God. It's like on the America TV shows, like, oh, please welcome this week's guest episode. <laughs> um, so wait, the, wait. Thanks. Yeah! The, the story was, we were in London playing a house show. We'd been signed by this label, but that didn't mean anything at all. Um, and we were playing, like, a, a, a show there. So next door is, like, this base where, I guess, the Hells Angels and stuff hung out. Um, and uh, one one of the people there that signed us was just being dead loud outside, being like, oh, the Hells Angels, they're there. They do all the stuff there. And uh, we didn't realize someone was in a car looking after the Hells Angels base from the Hells Angels, just in the car, let down. And then they kind of just like sat up in the car like that. And we're like, move along. Like, don't bother anything just move along oh, an actual vampire and uh yeah an actual vampire <laughs> man it was blared and uh and then she she was just going off and off and off and uh and then she went um hell's a- angels more like bell's angels and this guy got out of his car <laughs> and it's like coming to chase us and we were on boris bikes with all our gear <laughs> in the Boris bike. So we were just like pedaling dead fast and all our gear like flapping about everywhere. And um, with this Hells Angels coming after us, thinking we were going to... We Wait, gonna he got it. his car to chase you on foot? Well, he got out of his car to come and get... Because we were like just on the bike, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. stopped stationary. And uh, and yeah, he was like, he got out of his car to, I don't know, to do what, perhaps just chase us off. Be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, Naughty people, and uh, and then yeah, we he got out and we just pedaled off dead fast, thinking we were gonna get killed by Hell's Angels, and that's the story. That's a lovely I'll story. I, I didn't know you were in a pilot for the reboot of The Inbetweeners. <laughs> 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 Bell's Angels. How sad's that though? Looking after your mate's clubhouse from a car outside. This isn't Sons of Anarchy. It's England. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this, this is England. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Joe. It's England, boy. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Thank, thank you. My nomination is Andrew's story. Fantastic, or Andrew's feud, Jack. Andrew's feud with the Hell's Angels. I love it. We've gone from thinking out in a week in advance what the our pick for the Hall of Fame is going to be to, uh oh, I forgot I've got one. Let me think of what I did last night's stories to, I can't even bother to think of my own story. I'll get someone else to tell a story <laughs> instead. Hey, I've revolutionized the game. <laughs> Playing 4D chess. Yeah. Love it, Jack. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Ross, what have you got? Mine's a wrestler one. I'm just going to say, for the family. Oh, oh of course. For the yeah. family. Of course. The in-ring debut oh. this week of Tony D'Angelo happened on NXT 2.0. And from the, the v- Velour? Velveteen? Velour? Whatever. Say Velour, don't say Velveteen. Well, it's velvet, isn't it? Like a crushed velvet sort of... I'm not referencing that fella. Move on. You just made it that, you bugger. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, from the tracksuit to the hat to the, the slip in the referee... Some money to that try and bribe funny. them. That's a lovely little touch. A, lo- a right touch. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, obviously it got off to a, a bit of a shaky start, but I think it's one of those gimmicks that maybe ironically to start with, people are liking. But then with little touches like the bribing of the referee, it's going to go from irony to full on. Wah! Grand Tony Le- yeah. Le- Cern. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony D'Angelo. It is weird because, again, watch the Spanos when it was on. Watch the season finale and got disappointed like everybody else. You know, yay, surprise, surprise, surprise. So to me, it's almost like old old hat to an extent. But there's obviously in the time generation now, we're like, yay, get it. he's going to win the match. You need some gabagoo. You know, everyone's just so <laughs> over this gimmick. Like all of Twitter was like, NXT was great. Was it? It's like, yeah, this one dude who came out was like the biggest stereotype you've ever seen in your life. I mean, waste management. I mean, my personal preference for wrestling, give me, you know, there's obviously a place for work rate and cool moves and flips and whatnot in the wrestling as the door opens Why is by that? itself. Um, but there's also room for gimmicks, and I'm really enjoying the, the new gimmicks in NXT. So. How, how can you say such a thing when I've tried to nominate the dinosaur <laughs> Hall of Fame? Yeah, give me more gimmicks. I'd rather have less work, work rate and more gimmicks in my wrestling. Mm. So Tony D'Angelo feeds into that. Yeah. If they're doing stuff with it, there's going to be a story. Mm-hmm. But, and again, him trying to ride the ref, I'm like, oh, okay, I like that. I but, don't know I mean, what else they can do in terms uh, of little, little touches, but... Uh, he wins a match that he wasn't there for, so they're getting paid for a no-show. <laughs> like, mm. but, yeah, did you see any of The Sopranos? Nah. Oh, no, I need to watch it. But I want to watch The Wire first, I think. Which one first? Oh, Which one first? Oh, come on. I mean... Yeah, ma. Hey. Yeah. Hey. The brick of my balls. Hey, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Accent one like of the, the week. What? I think you like the, the Sopranos. Oh. Yeah. 
Well, I support the Baltimore Ravens. So and the wire's set in Baltimore. Oh, Where's oh, the Sopranos? Is New Jersey? Yeah. Joysey? Yeah, yeah, because okay, right. they, they drive along the New York City oh, okay. landscape, whatever it's called. No, I, should, I, I do need to watch it. I should. Mm. I thought, like to watch The Wire, though. That made, that made me very happy. Mm. Because one of these things I recommend everybody, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I'll watch it, whatever." After oh, I keep on watching this other crap I'm watching, and it's like, "You're actually gonna watch something good." I'm so proud of you. Well, my girlfriend has just realised that all the episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch are on Amazon oh. Prime. So we watched the first two episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. But she's a big wrestling fan, Melissa Joan Hart. Isn't she, she is. Yeah, so she follows me. Fair enough. Oh, does she? Oh. She's got good taste. Oh. Those botches do get the bitches. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Ross has had that on his <laughs> sleeve. Gone. We're going to fire this one off. So, what a motley crew this week. Yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, Still going. Picks are Call the Holly. Yeah, that's one of the so There we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've had three hours sleep. I'll be all right. Man. Luchasaurus. Hey. <laughs> Jack's Andrew story. My Andrew story. Yeah, there we go. Courtesy of Andrew. And called the Holic now, and uh, Tony Tony D'Angelo D'Angelo Tony Tony D'Angelo Tony D'Angelo You might recognize <laughs> You <laughs> might recognize these dogs. It's where we got the stuff off the boats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> hey, it's just as good as the real life Tony yeah, D'Angelo. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! Love it. These three picks are yours and yours alone. But only, if you can, to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Might help you vote if you just randomly say cultaholic. When you're <laughs> trying to think of what else you're trying to say. That says, this week in the wrestling, it's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah. Oh, before we do this week in wrestling, and that's kick, that kicks out of my brain there, because we also kicked... This week in wrestling, lovely Jen. What's happening with uh, Inside the Ropes? Looking like the stopping for a bit. Oh, or... ah, yeah. Hopefully oh, Kenny's all right. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen. Well, I don't think any of us have seen Kenny for a little while. Not um, in real life. No, no, not yeah, exactly. COVID yeah, and, everything, but... and yeah, that was very sad news. Yeah, so I'll really. just give a little shout out to Kenny. It's yeah, hundred percent. Doing all right. Understand completely. You know, mental health takes priority over anything else, and just you know, and health generally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah. Uh, it was really sad because we all know how hardworking Kenny is mm. and how good he is. Like him and him and Tom are like two of the best interviewers in all of re- like all of wrestling media. Like so, yeah, three, three of the best. Yeah, cheers. I'm just sat here. But I've done interviews as well. All right. No, three are we, of the of best. Course, you're really good as well. But are we on the same level as Kenny and Tom? I'm getting there. Okay, fair enough. Well, Kenny, Tom, and Ross are the three best interviewers in all of wrestling, right? And. Um, <sighs> And <laughs> and we know how hard working Kenny is as well. And yeah, it's just it's just sad to see, isn't it? Mm. But um, I yeah, was sad to see Kenny right. like saying that he was thinking he might be letting people down, which is yeah, what, what he's done yeah. over the past six, seven, eight years, getting the names over that he's got over. There's there's, there's no worry to feel that way, Ken, mm. if he sees this. So uh, he's worked wonders, as I said on the old Twitter last week. Mm. That Vince Vince McMahon drinking takes out you. Let me tell you. <laughs> I I'm could hear trying, the glug I'm as you took that. I was on purpose trying to do like, yeah, I'm good. Vince McMahon power swig. And it's like, whoa, <laughs> his gullet must be wide. <laughs> no, no one likes a braggart. <laughs> uh, Smackdown. We learn that the drafted superstars won't change roster until October 22nd, the night after Crown Jewel. Adam Pearce and Sonny Deville announced the first round of draft picks. Roman Reigns stays on Smackdown. Big E stays on Raw. Obviously means a lot, and they've been on both these past few. Shut sure, sure, Matthew. Shot Flair moves to SmackDown, and Bianca Belair moves to Raw. I was going to bring this. This might be a big question. Question. Yeah. But does the two night draft work? Mm. Is that a big question? Question. Mm. Or is there something big in wrestling happening this weekend? Because if I'll, not, I'll answer it now. Surely it'll just be who's benefited from the draft, or do we, well, we'll, do, something does, like we'll, do, we'll answer that now then, because I don't think it does work anymore. No. Or never does when you've got people like Mad Hat Moss. Mad Cap. Mad Hat. Cap. Yeah. Mad Hat, isn't it? Mad Cap. No, Mad Cap. He's Mad, mad Cap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beg me pardon. Mad Hat Moss. I've got Mad Hat Moss written down in my Are thing there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one word. Aye, Mad Hat. I'm yeah. sure it's Mad Hat, isn't it? Anyway. It's mad mad Cap. Whatever. In, mad mad, mad Cap's an expression. Like, you know, like, like oh, Pope so the Pope. Well, that's yeah. probably why I thought it was so silly then, thinking of the Mad Hatter from Alice Munhard. Anyway, oh, okay, yeah, it don't work when he's getting drafted before Sasha Banks. That's mm, all I'm saying. Mm, the yeah. two-night thing. 
And then half of them are just, we're keeping this one. <laughs> like the draft. It's so weird that they're doing. The, the draft only... is no one's. They never injured. make it ex- like explicit, do they, that everyone just gets unassigned a roster before they start? If they just say, right. like, everybody's in a, a pit of. A void of nothingness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some of them are. <laughs> <laughs> we pluck them <clears throat> as and when we. I saw it before he was drafted. I can't remember. He might have been drafted later on. But Sammy's into it. Like, I genuinely don't think they've got me on their draft notes or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mad Cap. I've got written down. Yeah, that's just a mistake by me. I do like the idea of him having a Mad Hat gimmick. Right. I mean, it was just about that, wasn't it? Just the cackling yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. No, no Mad Cap means like way. I but during the match where Corbin was having his match, he was just going. <laughs> what? Yeah. What does Mad Cap mean? Hang on. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know what Madcap actually means. I've heard the Probably expression. some sort of American. I've got to explain last week as we were saying, or I was saying that no wrestler should ever be called Moss. Yeah. Someone was like, oh, Ross, it's an American football reference. Do you know that? Is no, it? Otherwise, I wouldn't have said it. Apparently, well, there's some. There's a player called Randy Moss. Yeah. But, I mean, he wasn't the same position or. He, there's no similarities with is Randy it a Moss. Verb? Is it a verb to Moss somebody in that context or something like that? Possibly. Someone was saying, I yeah. Don't know. So that's why he's called Riddick Moss. I don't want to Google that. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. Everyone's on a sign. Oh, oh go on. Madcap means amusingly eccentric. <laughs> oh, that just suits him to a T. Yeah, I, I, I think of Riddick like, Moss when I think of that. That's what it means, Riddick. Go out there and do it. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Wonderful character development. <laughs> Morty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A very merry un, un- birthday to him. Yeah. Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns arrive to talk about how the demon is no longer undefeated. Well, it's Mojo somewhere in the back going, this is bollocks. Mm. <laughs> they turn their attention to the match against Brock Lesnar, but Lesnar is here in person to interrupt. My God, it is a special episode. He and Roman brawl. The Usos get involved while Roman and Heyman back away, and then Lesnar hits F5s on the Usos, because what else is he going to do? Yeah, so. yeah, they didn't explain the rope break from Extreme Rules, where well, that should have been the first thing they said. Yeah. Is that just not going to be explained ever Even now? though we had it explained last week, Jack, I don't know if you saw this. Oh, go on. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> World-renowned wrestling journalist, Wrestling News Now, have explained oh. the... I don't know if you want to fire up the YouTube channel there, young Jamie, just in case people missed it last week, but there is I picture love evidence. I love it so Picture much. evidence of Brock Lesnar climbing onto the apron when the lights were turned off just before did, the rope did, did, did was broken. Did you not see this? No. With a the pair view. of Brutus the Barber beefcake shears. Oh, my God. And he God. the rope. I there is put, photographic evidence. I wouldn't put anything past Wrestling, wrestling News now. Wrestling News now. Wrestling News. Get there. 847K subscribers. There we go, Andrew. <laughs> oh, <is>. my God. <laughs> <laughs> what? How is that? <laughs> oh, my. Just in case oh, you missed so it. <laughs> It is highlighted in a yellow circle just in case wow. you can't quite see it. it. How did we not see that during the broadcast? Nobody saw it apart no. from Wrestling News Now. Well, good report, fair enough. <laughs> Look at those views, though. It just makes you sick. <laughs> they blown it twice in case you missed it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about that. So there will be a time when I've been like, wait, we're all doing this and busting our ass and that guy's got the how many subscribers? But now I'm like, oh, that's all great. Oh, man, it just makes you sick and honestly does. Oh, God. Get him off YouTube. Oh. <laughs> Get him off. You can't handle the truth, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where we are. Happy Corbin. We should mention the camera work from that opening segment. Did you see it? Oh, it was I a tried not to. Different level. I hope they released the um, the backstage. Yeah, well, AEW put that thing out for Punk's debut, and he's like, camera one, camera mm. three. I hope they do that for this segment, because that must have been... Three, one, two, one. Oh, amazing. Anyway, yeah. we know camera work is crap in WWE. Nothing yeah. new there. Like Dr. Armour. Left, left, right, left, left, mm. right, left. Oh. Abby Corbin with his friend. What's his name? Mad Hat Moss. That's right. Mad Cat Moss. No, it's Mad Hat now. Mad Hatter. Beats Kevin Owens. <laughs> Thanks in part. It's construction of Mad Cat Moss <laughs> on the outside. He's oh. mental. <laughs> to be fair, there was a fire <laughs> line in their promo before the match <laughs> where Corbin says to him, give me a joke. And then... Mad Hat Moss says, uh, I've got two short ones and a long one. And he goes, joke, joke, joke. Oh, my God. Hey. Hey. Oh. That is both. What was the phrase? For, um, Crap. For, for, for Mad Cap. Oh, amusingly eccentric. That was amusingly eccentric. Aye. I can, I can talk. <laughs> now, this is worrying for Kevin Owens, this. Such a straightforward loss. So easy. Easily beaten. He's on Raw now, anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's very yeah. true. Yeah, very Happy true. Corbin's going to stay with his new his new friend. He's going to look good, look strong. Yeah, I'm glad that Owens went out on his shield. 
when, <laughs> put him over on his way out to roll. That was such a meh match, though, for how long they've been going. That hinted that they were going to keep going for even longer, even though we've been going for a long time already. But it can't happen now because they're on different brands. Yeah. So what a shame. No, I'm all right with it, to be honest with you. Sometimes that, that was it. That, that was the end. Yeah, that was the end. Corbin right. wins. Yay. He yeah. remains happy. Slow. Unlike Kevin Owens, who will be happy come January of next year. Yeah. I was like, why would Mad Cat Moss be dressed like that? Because <laughs> he's just Mad Cat. But he's in a suit. Oh, well, he's, he's eccentric and amusing. So he was in a suit, but he was a bit weird with it. Uh, he's evil mad. Looking like the medium to large dog of Wall Street. I think he... D- <laughs> Not the wolf, but the medium to large dog. I think he does need... One well, that petite can lift over his head. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does need to up the eccentricity a bit. Yeah. He should wear a monocle and a big top hat and... Uh, how ca- yeah, we've got uh, Becky and Seth on the show, looking like they do. And then we've got Mad Cap Moss. Oh, hi, Becky's really drippy now, isn't she? Looking understated. Mm. Maybe he's an understated <coughs> Moss. Is that going to be leading to his first feud, do you think? Going, hang on. I'm the only big drip around here, pal. <laughs> goes, do you want to hear a big drip? He goes, are you just going to do the joke thing? He goes, Ploop. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just does it anyway. All right, we had a little cut there because uh, Jack's had a little coffin fit. So yeah, everyone yeah. needs a hobby. Uh, round two of the draft looks like this. Drew McIntyre moves to SmackDown. Ooh. Oh. And uh, he's already going after the title, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Was he? I can't remember. Well, <laughs> I think he'd rather go off the madcap than have another bloody match with Jinder. <laughs> yeah. He might have challenged him on this week's Raw. So he might have challenged him after this. Mm. But he's going to SmackDown anyway. So it's it's a silly one, in my opinion. Mm. RK Bro, stay on Raw. Fair enough. Kingston and Xavier Woods move to SmackDown. How dare they? They put them back together and then split them straight up again. Bastards. It's weird because they were never uh, properly together again. They were just getting Raw and SmackDown merging because, uh-oh, it's NFL time. Quick, hot shot, everything. Yeah. So I didn't really split them up. They're never together to begin with. Yeah. But still, yeah. Edge moves to Raw. Wait, I thought you were like Deed. But I guess he's going to be not Deed. Edge is indeed. I thought Seth made him Deed. Oh, no. He comes back this week, didn't he? He's Undeed. He's Undeed. Aye. He, he might be Indeed. Get a he, little rest. Now he's Undeed. Yeah, he got better. Deed is dead, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Edge comes out and says that he was the only person on the current roster to appear on the first ever episode of SmackDown. I hadn't thought about that. Poor Michael Cole. Aww. Not acknowledged by Edge's yeah. talent on the first SmackDown. How dare you? Yeah. Rated our superstar. But now he's been sent to Raw, which he sees as a challenge. Speaking of challenges, he calls out Seth Rollins, who appears on this Tron. Rollins <laughs> reveals that he's at Edge's house and wanders inside. He strolls around and makes himself at home while Edge calls Beth Phoenix and tells her to get the kids out of there. Uh, I think strolls is the key word there. He's so yeah. ca- It's the most casual home invasion I've ever seen. Yeah, he, he didn't really do anything. It was, they, uh, what, what do you mean he didn't do anything? He, just, he got the orange juice out of the fridge and put his mouth on it. Potentially some backwash too. What, okay. if, what, if, what if Lyric and the other, the other child... Then have a drink. I don't know what the names are. Sorry, I know one of them's called Lyric. No, one of them's called Lyric. It's a nice yeah, name. Yeah. Um, oh, is it? Yeah. yeah, one of them's called Lyric. One of them's called Lyric. Uh, the older one's called Lyric. Um, but what if they have a drink? What is it with rich kids? Anyway, go on. Lyric's a nice name. Lyric Copeland. Ah, oh, okay. Aww. Lovely. Um, what if they then drink from the same thing? I hope they don't. That would have been great. You know what? If they go like, oh, quick, quick, Beth, Beth. You need a, and it cuts back to the house because oh no, Beth's there. She's going for the orange Whoa. juice. No, I was, she's going. Ugh. I tell you, I was worried when he was sat next to the the pictures that they'd drawn on the wall. I thought he was going to tear them off. If he, he, just, he just said they were crap. He just said they were crap, didn't he? <laughs> I thought he was going to tear them off and rip yeah. them. Out. Yeah. No, that that would have been you know good. I love the setup of the segment though because obviously we see Rollins walk into the house and then Edge, who's in the ring, just sprints backstage. And then we see a bit of Rollins, and then we see Edge later on calling Beth. But the way it happened, it like Edge was just going to try and hop in his car and drive home and get him. Yeah. So I did a, a quick Google search, and from Baltimore <laughs> to Asheville, North Carolina, where Edge's house is, it's 508 miles oh. over seven hours in the car. So I was thinking, he's going he's to try and drive there. Oh, my God. I thought it would be quite funny. Yeah. But yeah. It's a shame he didn't hop in the car and try and get there. I'll save you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We've got to reference the, uh, the bump as well. WWE's hit internet show. I was wondering if we were going to mention this. We've got to, haven't we? Because it, it's it was it wasn't malicious, but it's still a thing oh, they shouldn't have no. walked into. Yeah, Sonya was a guest, and they were 
chatting about this angle, and the guy goes something along the lines of, so how would you deal with a, a home intruder, Sonia? Not malicious, but how uh, It couldn't be more Alan Partridge if they tried. Yeah. yeah. So for, fair play to Sonia for, for fielding the question like she did, but uh, yeah, Partridge. Accidentally Partridge should have tweeted Accidentally that. Accidentally Partridge, should yes. Have, should have tweeted that clip. Yeah, uh, Carmella wants a rematch with Liv Morgan. Liv attacks before the bell, so Carmella bails the outside and has a team of assistants secure a protective mask to her face. She gets back in and beats up Liv before posing. The match never begins. Hate this again, feud. What was this? Hate this feud. Again, there's, they've only got so many gimmicks and characters for women in WWE, and five of them are, I'm really pretty, and you can't hurt my pretty face, mm. and you're ugly, and I'm going to say bitch a lot. Mm. Uh, so we're at this level now. And it's just okay, cool. They had a, again. They had a very, very decent match. Extreme Rules. Yeah, that but, should have been the end. It was a good pre-show. Yeah. It was. In fact, he got bummed at the pre-show, didn't it? It could have well been on the main card. Yeah. It was a good match. It was the sort of win Liv should have had as well, like an actual win where yeah. she did moves and didn't like sneak one. She, she yeah. beat her by being the better lady at the wrestling. Mm. And now this happened where it looked like they were going to have a match, and then it just sort of went. <laughs> yeah, that was the actual noise think, it made. Isn't Carmella after Raw now as well? So she mm. might be. So this could be the end of this feud as well. Again, oh, the no. bad guy wins. <laughs> Although not necessarily because we do have a few weeks, don't we? A couple of weeks until Crown Jewel. Oh, yeah, and two more matches. Take effect. <laughs> yeah, oh, got, Kevin Owens could still get Nakamura revenge on... and Apollo Crews haven't finished, finished their feud yet. <laughs> Kevin Owens could still get revenge on the Mad Hatter and the Rabbit. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Round three of the draft. Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss stay on SmackDown. They've not split up yet. Yes. Good. Wait till people start liking them and then they'll split them up. I'm ready for a good time. Yeah. Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash stay on Raw. Mm -hmm. Hit Row are called up from NXT no! to SmackDown. No! It's the one thing. Well, I guess SmackDown's a better place than Raw. Let's look at the positives there. There's less time to fill on SmackDown, so there's less chance for Balak's. Um Michael Balak's. Oh, Michael Balak's. Flashing me head there. Um, but yeah, it's going to be weird, isn't it, to see if they still allow them to be them because it's clearly them writing their stuff on NXT. Well, I think anyway. Um, oh, I've got to object because Top Dollar was on Twitter because people were going, hey, watch out. You know, you're going to go to the bad place. And it was like, shut up. Like, we're going to be fine. Um, that way we wrote all, we write all the stuff on NXT. Yeah, no, even, NXT. Even, even the stuff we did last week. And we're like, oh, really? Uh, what, the impressive oh. rhymes? I would, it yeah, rhymed yeah. every sentence. No, the bit where they went... Yeah, the bit like every other week they've been like, yeah, we're Hit Row, we're going to do this to you. It's like, all right, yeah, cool. Hit Row, something cool and look cool. And last week it was like, Hey guys, let's introduce the rest of the roster and the card. And it's like, oh, this sounds like someone else wrote it. Like, no, no, we wrote that. You're like, oh, well, they might have written. Play they, might have written minute, they might have written the content of it, but not the the idea yeah. wasn't theirs. Yeah, heroes. You know what? We should just talk about everybody else in the show. I'm really worried about Hit Row now. Yeah. I, I think we all are. Yeah, because they're good. Yeah, I don't want them to get. And now they've got Bruce, like every other gimmick. Yeah. Bruce Pritchard writing six He's bars hit. for them. He's down. <laughs> it's Brucey P. <laughs> Again, when they don't make on SmackDown years from now, why didn't they make it, Bruce? Check me up. Oh, they just didn't commit to the character. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Keith Bearcat Lee stays in Raw, and Tom Campbell's done a very nice video explaining who the hell Bearcat was and what means something. Bearcat. It's just a way of saying it. All right, Bear <laughs> Bearcat. Bearcat. Despite the rules about the draft only taking effect after Crown Jewel, the New Day are here on SmackDown. They team with the Street Profits to beat Alpha Academy and the Dirty Dogs. They do. Oh. Who looked lovely in a, a shade of teal. Mm. Yeah. Delightful. Yeah. Bet, they got play, play bet, they, bet they got the bitches in the bars afterwards. I need to stop saying that out of context. I don't know if someone's going to clip that. <laughs> That's just you going, bet they got the bitches. <laughs> yeah, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they probably, if, if they were that, if they wanted to, yeah. Yeah, looking uh, for us, no one skip to the week of wrestling. Bit. I know, I never clips just bits from this podcast, do they? Anyway, no, it was don't. all about Tez's game, wasn't it? Tez is yes. continuing his ascent up the main roster. I'd be worried if I was Angelo at the moment. Yeah, It's not looking good for Angelo. Um, who knows? He could make it on his own. The hamstrings has gone there. Oh, it's a fly. Bloody oh, hell. Uh, everything's oh. going wrong at once. I think Ange Angelo's Sorry. some sort of voodoo prince. Don't say his name again. I know. I've just slandered him. And oh, no, no, the fly is taking out Jack. Uh, I've realised that I reacted to the fly like Mr. Burns. Like I did that. But it was because I didn't want to knock the mic. It's not because I'm pathetic, right? I could punch a fly if I wanted, right? Right? Who's How's going Hammy there? I don't know. It just went. And the fly has been drafted Maybe's to cramped. SmackDown. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it pinged or is it just... How do you get like that feeling of cramp? 
Well, you yeah. just like I'm gonna be sitting. Maybe it's deep. Let's say yeah. Make sure you deep move vein thrombosis. That wonderful jazz musician, Ross Noble. Hey, uh, deep vein thrombosis. That was good. <laughs> um, but I, Tez, doing the reversal out of the walls of Jericho position before the you know mm. before they get flipped over, and then he flipped out and then did all sorts of flips. Mm. And it was flipping good. Let me tell you. Was it your oh, yeah, move of the week? I've, oh, I've forgotten to write one down this week. Oh. You mean, you mean, yes, it was, Ross. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. That was the move of the week. That's secret from Angelo. Because... Because... Oh, my. Oh, 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 baby. As you said that, yeah, I, just saw an, I, just saw, <laughs> I just saw Andrew start to write down. As you said <laughs> that. <laughs> what a so, bro. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So Andrew's picked this week, has he? Eh? You no, come you in here. It was. You come in here. No, it was after you said it. That's oh, all right. That's all right. Yeah. I thought you meant you started writing before I said it. No, it was a- as soon as you said it. He was on it. It was really good. Well done, Andrew. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming. You enemy of scourge of bikers. <laughs> <laughs> Round four of the draft. Naomi moves to SmackDown. Good. Yeah, maybe. Sure I, don't, I don't know what that means actually. It's weird what they do at the moment when I am. Yeah, here. she's like I a, don't get it. she's the voice of the voice. She's like a CM Punk figure. She just wants to be Trev Fairley. Why does Sonya hate her? That's yeah, I don't understand. It's a it's a storyline they haven't written yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ray and Dom move to Raw. Okay. Where they'll split up like every other tag team. Uh, Jeff Hardy moves to SmackDown. That's where he should be. Yeah. Aye. Well, I mean, he's, he's a SmackDown boy. Yeah. I he mean, leads blue. Yes, yeah, right. You should see someone about that. Uh, Austin Theory is called up from NXT to Raw. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, we did see what he debuted immediately, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what he's like without The Way, because he worked in The Way, but maybe without The Way is not it's The not Way. The way. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. He's got time on his side, though. Yeah. Being 12 makes you sick, doesn't it? <laughs> Young, charismatic. Crap facial hair, though. So that's right. That's one thing you've got. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Take that one, Austin Theory. Your beard stinks. (laughs) Jeff Hardy is interviewed backstage, but Brock Lesnar interrupts to thank Paul Heyman as as suddenly this becomes an episode of SmackDown from 2002. Mm. Uh, He credits him for Lesnar being a free agent. He says this means he gets to do whatever he wants. We then cut to Roman's locker room where he's with a very nervous Heyman. Roman wants Heyman to go to Raw on Monday to make sure that the Usos stay on SmackDown. Heyman leaves and Roman tells the Usos to go with him. If he fails, leave him for dead on Raw. Now, at this point, I was dead excited. I was like, what sort of intrigue are we going to see Heyman get up to backstage on Raw? It, just not, no, it didn't no, show any of it. No. Uh, the main event is Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks with Becky Lynch on guest commentary. Sasha wins with a roll-up after interference from Becky. Uh, Charlotte Flair runs in afterwards to take out Banks and Belair. She and Becky held up the titles at each other. Uh, yeah, I sure. Yeah, they did. The closer show. Yeah, they, Becky was behind the other table and Charlotte was in the ring. And One for Jack, though. Charlotte kept her shoes on while delivering the she big She did. Aye. I was buzzing. He points out every time. They always I, make her take her shoes do. off. <laughs> they, always make, they always make blonde women take their shoes off and fight barefooted. I can think of Lana and Charlotte who've done it a lot, right? They've both done it a lot. But she kept her shoes on this time. There was that one time I've been so impressed that they give of it because... Charlotte Flair was like, oh, she's interfering in something. And she ran down the ramp in her heels and gave a big boot. Nice. I was like, very impressive. That's very, very impressive. impressive. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'd be like Bambi on ice. Train there. You so, tried? Uh, main event was good. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. It was nice and technical in places. And then Bianca Belair was sort of like, bosh, sit down. I'm the EST, me. <laughs> Pure oh, hard. Yeah, that. I... Like, <laughs> it was a nice mix. At the minute, and, and I suppose maybe maybe after Raw it'll be the better time to talk about it, but I don't know what Becky's motivations are at the minute. Like, I don't know why she does things that she does. I thought Raw, her appearance on Raw was very interesting. Baffling. Mm. And we'll speak about when we get to Raw. I was going to say, yeah. But we'll, with Crown we'll Jewel as well, they announced the triple threat match for the... Is it the SmackDown women's title? Uh, yes. Yeah, it must be, yeah, because so, yeah. Charlotte's not involved. Bianca, Sasha and Becky. Should be lovely. Be second women's match there. Maybe yeah. third. We've had Natalia oh. versus Le- is it Naomi. Was that it? I can't remember. No, it Natalia was, was no, it was um, Alexa. Maybe, hey God, yeah. that's terrible. No, uh, what's her name? Um, <laughs> I can't remember her name. I can't remember her name. She had that left punch thing. Lacey, Lacey Evans. Evans. Yeah, the women's right. Yeah, women's right. That's it. <laughs> that left punch. You still can't get your head around it. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, N- Natalia Lacey yeah, makes Yeah, that was the first bell, match, yeah. 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 I'm sure Naomi had one as well, didn't she? Maybe she did. I can picture her in, like, the, the long T-shirt. Yeah. 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 Did she have the match against Alexa Bliss? Maybe. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, why? I've searched Naomi Saudi Arabia, and it's brought up Neom, which is a, a planned cross-border city in the Tabuk province of northwestern Saudi Arabia. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> Thank you for that hard-hitting journal. Yeah. Yeah, so that'll be the triple threat match, but that will on to later on, because right now it's mm. AW Rampage time. Brian Danielson beats Nick Jackson to open the show in Nick Jackson's, what, his second, third singles match in, in 10 years Phoenix. or so. What a role he played as well as the uh, superior yeah. Jackson. They didn't let him get too much offense in, but that's fine by me, because it was all about making Daniel Bryan look... Like, sort of introduced us to this new old Daniel Bryan mm. with his, his new old submission moves that he hasn't used for 20-odd years. Um, but uh, Matt Jackson wearing a $22.99 Amazon shirt that Brian Alvarez also owns. Yes. The drip has been exposed. That's the main news from this match. The drip has been dropped. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, point of The Elite run in for a beatdown afterwards, but Jurassic Express and Christian Cage turned the tables. Danielson and Jungle Boy get Kenny Omega and Adam Cole in stereo submissions, and they both tap out. Ooh. Setting up the dynamite ting. Yes, it did. Ricky Starks gets a video package, which shows that he's a fancy man with a fancy house and a fancy car. He says he isn't scared of Brian Cage just because he's bigger and won't back down and uh, may not like to be vaxxed. Oh, oh, oh. I actually thought Brian Cage was done until we got the dynamite because he hasn't, he hasn't been on TV and they'd been burying him yeah, on dark. So I thought, oh, he's gone then, right? He tw- showed up. I'm like, huh. His Twitter game has been flappy. I think is the, the right word to use. Flappy. There, flappy. Go on. Translate to <laughs> adult for me. Just being like a bit like, no, I'm fine. Uh. Flap, flap. Yeah, a bit flappy. <laughs> Big flappy, that's his name. <laughs> <laughs> Wing in at 40 pounds. <laughs> big Flappy, Brian. No, wait, it's funny if it's Brian Big Flappy. <laughs> <laughs> BBFG. <laughs> no C, BBFC. Next up is a triple threat match between Thunder Rosa, Jade Cargill, and Nyla Rose. Cargill wins in a match with several no DQ elements. With several no DQ elements. Yeah, and it. Look, I like Jade Cargill, but I was surprised. That she won between Rosa and Rose. She pinned Rosa? Y- yeah. She's oh. sh- shocking. I reckon that makes her the favourite. I forgot the word there completely. The favourite for that new tournament they're doing for the TBS yeah. Championship, Matthew. The TBS. 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 TBS Championship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she won it. Mm-hmm. Orange Cassidy faces Jack Evans in a hair versus hair main event. The Hardy family orifice tried to interfere, but are blocked from the ring by the best friends in Dark Order. Cassidy wins, and the good guys cut Evans' hair before hugging it out with Brody Jr. Yeah, Aww. so I didn't... I, it was too wordy to, I think, put in the recap, but they tried to walk out, Uno and Grayson, but then Brody Jr. and, and his wife were like, nah, you get back. So it was a nice heartwarming moment. Yeah. Was it in Rochester? No, not anymore. That was the other week. I think it was last oh, it week. It was? Yeah. I think oh, so. nice. Yeah, yeah, because it's like oh. the arse end of the oh, last week's good. dynamite. Um... So yeah, that yeah, was class. Nice yeah. moment. Ah, uh, the match was fine. The diving DDT, Orange Cassidy did. Oh, no, was it on Jack? I can't remember. Maybe it was either way. Go back and watch that match. There's a diving DDT. I thought it looked gnarly AF. Should have been the finish for me. Uh, but yeah, because I was initially thinking, oh my god, we've built this. You know, it's an okay match. Gonna get to the big finish, and he just started like snipping the ends off his hair. I was like, no, no, mm. come on now, get the clippers out. Molly Holly from WrestleMania 20. But thankfully, they did. So I'm looking forward to seeing, um, and they call him Jungle Jack there. Jungle Different Jack kind Evans. of jungle. Mm. The, 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 Ma- the ground jungle. Jungle's massive. Yeah, that kind of jungle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that kind that of jungle, jungle Jack. Right. Yeah. Two yes. different types of jungle. That's yeah. fantastic. Yes. Yes. The actual yeah. foresty jungle. Ah. And then jungle. <laughs> With the hands. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I can't imagine him bald. I don't want to imagine. No. Because mm. you, you, be, <laughs> you have to be a real, real stud to pull off being bald. There he is. There he is there. Oh, I like, I like seeing As he wears his face. hat. <laughs> <laughs> he pulls it off. I was going to say, he if you don't, can you not create some flames if you haven't shaved like for a couple of days and take your hat off? <laughs> I've tried this. <laughs> Have you? Oh, that'd be good. Do not. Uh, never mind. So I felt the back of his head last uh, the other week when we were doing reactions and it was nice and, you know, coarse. Mm. <laughs> mm. I imagine it would be a fine way to, to get an itch just going on the back of his head. Yeah. Trying to impress people like, Hey, how you doing? 
Monday Night Raw. Becky Lynch opens the show and declares herself Raw's first draft pick. Hey, that's not how that works. She reminds us that she never lost the Raw Women's title and says it might be time to become Becky Two Belts again. Now, I thought this was interesting because Becky came out. She was fairly understated in her retire compared to what we've got to know over the past few weeks. Uh, she was um, smiling. I think I've said that already, haven't I? I'm losing the will to live here. Um, but she was also cutting a baby face promo, in my opinion, playing the other two like fiddles. I thought this was very baby face in terms of what we've seen recently from, from Becky Lynch, which I thought was strange. I know Raw is a different land, but, you know, we yeah, all watch them both. She's like we? Bret Hart. She's yeah. a face on Raw. <laughs> Well, I guess it is. That that might be how they think, of course, because it is a, a relationship ender if one goes to SmackDown and the other goes to Raw in terms of uh, Mandy and Otis. That's the reason they're no longer together, because there's a massive divide between Raw and SmackDown. That relationship simply can't survive. It's terrible. Awful. Yeah. Please talk. Sorry. <laughs> it's a podcast. I like listening to you talk. Words are crucial. They are. She's in a room with Vice Charlotte and then Bel Air. They all like you until Adam Pierce and Sonia Deville book Flair versus Bel Air for later on. Becky says, Hey, you guys haven't wrestled before, have you? Yes, they have on NXT. <laughs> Round one, the draft is revealed in full. Becky Lynch stays, well, moves to Raw. No. It was strange. It was weird. She said, Hey, I'm the first, whatever. Because the commentator was like, No, this isn't official yet. And yeah, and Pierce came out a minute later and was like, "Hi, she's gone." Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll weird. have her. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it was weird. The Usos stay on SmackDown. Paul Heyman is shown looking relieved. Bobby Lashley stays on Raw, and Sasha Banks stays on SmackDown. We need if you got haven't seen this week's Raw, just go back and watch when Bobby gets picked because they're doing these weird little <sighs> cutscenes. Yeah, where they go like, "I'm going to Raw, Bobby Lashley," and it just cut to him and he's just sat on a crate or something backstage and he goes, "Glasses off." Ah, glasses back on. Yeah. That you Wonderful. pick him on. 2K20. Wonderfully That's natural. right. Pick me, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Grr, master of disaster. <laughs> Jeff Hardy challenges for Damien Priest's US title, but loses. After match, Jeff says that maybe it's time to see his new ego. Oh! oh. A different side, he says as Willie well. the Wisp? Might be. Willie the Wisp. Willow the Wisp? Willow the Wisp. Willie the Wisp. <laughs> Whoa! You cannot have him and Mad Hat Moss on the same roster. It's the same thing. Just minus a mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's injured by Austin Theory, who is in total fanboy mode, and asks for a selfie. Jeff's like, oh, okay, thank you, fan. But then Theory beats him down. It's a wonderful poo house way to debut. Yeah. I was a fan of that. The selfies were good as well. He actually clicked the button. Yeah. Uh, is it actually going to be Willow? You'd assume so. I'm oh, worried. 2011, evil Jeff Hardy from TNA. If he comes out Mars smoking oh, tabs. To, to the, the top. top. Yeah. Aye. Get him out there smoking tabs, man. On yeah. WWE. How fantastic would that be? Yeah. Was it the one pro? Pack of tabs and a bottle of brew. What about the kids? Think Good the luck. Kids. What about the kids thing? Jeff Hardy, we got boo you. Oh, he's smoking cigarettes, boo. <laughs> but what I think of the kids, you can't turn Jeff. Not yeah, now. What was can't. that line he had? He he says, Hey, people say I don't do anything I don't do anything for free. But I gave Ken Anderson a concussion for free. It didn't oh. cost him nothing. Oh. <laughs> it's like, whoa, oh. Jeff Hardy's a heel. Nice. I am will they use Willow? Because obviously we're broken Matt they put their own woken thing on it, didn't they? So maybe Willow will become pillow. <laughs> Comes out with a pillow. Pillow. <laughs> Evil pillow. What did you turn Jeff Hardy turned himself into a like, pillow. Funniest like, thing I ever saw in my life. Pillow, yeah. <laughs> That's really scary though. That'd be fantastic though. Just ends matches by going. <laughs> Oh my god, a pillow to the head! And you'll sell it like it's a steel chair. His gimmick matches a WrestleMania 19? Is it when Coachman gets his undercrackers oh, exposed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Playboy pillow fight. Playboy pillow fight with pillow. Pillow the piss. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff pillow Hardy. the piss. Jeff okay, Hardy's now it's money. <laughs> Jeff Hardy's in a really intense match with someone. And he's like, a really intense feud with someone. He's like, I challenge you. This isn't enough, this. So, yeah. I yeah. challenge you. It's a Playboy pillow fight. Face is like freaking out. Like, oh, oh. No, doing the Triple H thing was all cocky. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, not yeah. the pillow. Go and put your lingerie on now. And then next week, the guy's like, all right, I'm ready for this match. If I was like, dude, I was kidding. Uh. <laughs> yeah, modest <laughs> to the top. Yeah, they'll make money. Round two of the draft, Seth Rollins moves to Raw. Oh, oh. Mat, 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 Raw, what? as he calls it. 
Means I have to watch him. Because Becky's on. Hold Don't on. keep the couples together. Oh, oh yeah, Seth's the chemistry. Been, Seth's been good for a while. Seth, this is the best Seth of Seth career, man. Well, oh, uh, what? Go on, what's better? Uh, Shield Seth. Immediately after breaking up the Shield Seth. Ow. Yeah, that was peak Might Seth. be cooler. Yeah. 2014, Seth. Just after the Shield breakup. I, I, yeah, I grew 2015. Everything. You mean yeah. that little bitch boy who had run away from everybody? Huh? I yeah. could also he'd come out in all white gear and he'd batter John Cena. It was absolutely insane. Sometimes I was like, who's this guy? He's yeah. the future. JJ Security Woman. Then it all went wrong. And they all went it's, wrong. Well, they turned him face. His and... knee fell off, didn't it? Yeah, and that as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nakamura and Boogs stay on SmackDown. Oh, no. Get in. What Get... do you mean, oh, no? Well, wait a minute. I'm waiting for the rest. Like, is the people he's been feuding with for the... a year going to stay with him? Or are they going to Apollo. Be... No, yeah. Apollo went to Raw, didn't he? Oh. Building attention. Damien Priest stays on Raw. Fair enough. Sheamus moves to SmackDown. Oh, Raw screwed. Aye. Dude, yeah, oh. I'll, I just want to see him and Drew. Just do it again. Why not? Oh, yeah, they're both moving. Let them do yeah, it, pro- yeah, yeah, let, yeah, let them do it properly. Well, I guess they did it properly in that match at whatever pay per view it was. Which one was it? Was just it? a few weeks ago. That nah, was longer than a few weeks ago. No, I mean, like, they only had a match like a few weeks ago. Oh, right. Probably. And it was mint. <laughs> Aye. It's mint every time. Yeah. Uh, was it but a, yeah, they, they did the one before... What pay-per-view was it where they had the big, like, and they were up in the Thunderdome crowud? The one before Slam WrestleMania. No. no, it wasn't SummerSlam. No, it was pre-WrestleMania, the uh, um, Extreme... No, Elimination Chamber. Oh, and there I'll was... Take your word for it. The screens got involved. Yeah, uh, in the Thunderdome, yeah. The screens got involved. The screens got involved. The screens involved. started interfering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shayna Baszler beats Dana Brooke. Well, much trouble, of course. She attempts to injure and Corey her. Corey Graves buries Dana I've got, I've got the quote written yeah. down here. I'm all for giving time to develop, giving people time to realize their potential. But on a long enough timeline, you got to cut your losses. Dana Brooke has not accomplished much of anything. You can give me a chest full of tools, but that doesn't mean I can build a house. Now, what he said there is wrapped in realism. But the, the line where it's like, you've got to cut your losses. That's Aye. needlessly, needlessly aggressive person who was feeding Corey Graves the lines. I've saw people having to go with Corey for this. It's not Corey. It's so weird, isn't I know, it? Like, yeah. Yeah, you think Corey Graves just shot? Oh, wait, no, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. Or Vince then, or Bruce, or whoever was doing it. John Laurinaitis. It could be about half the women's division at this point. Aye. Dana Brooke cutting your losses. Anyone seen a... Nia for a few weeks after that, Mike? No. Okay. She got injured by Shayna Baszler. Of course. Come on. Just like 911 from ECW. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> she puts that armbar on, never seen again. Uh, yeah, but Dewdrop dances out to make the save. If yeah, Venice, though, way, yeah, she came out to make the save. I was like, oh, God. But then Shayna hit her from behind as in phase dewdrop. The stereo show, Mike. They just don't oh, do anything. Oh, good. Serious but dewdrop. Then the Fanta- thing, okay. uh, well, I sort Maybe. of, but then the, the segment just ended. They just stared at each other, and that was it. Well, no. they do the Emmerdale well, end of a scene thing. Where's that? They've got two weeks now to have two matches before uh, Shayna goes to smack Dune. So yeah. there's one win, e- one win each, and then the feud will end. Also, <laughs> I really hope that... Like, I'm never in a life-threatening situation or a situation where I'm risking serious injury. I hope that it's not Dewdrop coming to save me. Because <laughs> my arm's... Right. Like, imagine Shayna Baze is about to stomp your arm. And then she just... Come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm away. Like, yeah. No, run. Come on. Yeah. But, you know. Help, help. It's 12 and men, It's coming all down, all slowly like that. I think the young books were quicker, saving their dad. That was the best. <laughs> that was the best. I'll be Dad's your hero. hero. <laughs> <laughs> It was it's the that was the bear. Dad's in trouble. Come on. Yeah, checking the phone. Look at our hair right, bouncing yeah. in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be. Roberto <laughs> Carrillo and Angel Garza beat Mustafa Ali and Mansoor before we get round three of the draft. AJ Styles and almost stay on Raw. That's for the best. Shayna Baszler moves to SmackDown, so she's killed half of Raw. Aye. And I was going to kill half of SmackDown yes. as well. Aye, aye. I think that's where wow. she should be. Okay. The fo- yeah. I reckon the Fox people love Shayna Baszler. Mm. Love her. She's very Love her. Yeah. Kevin Owens moves to Raw. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. I just hope they'd make him make him a heel. She needs to be have him be the leading heel of Raw. That's I what see. I would do if I was in charge. Yeah. He's much better as a heel, isn't he? I know he's likable and stuff. He is. But he's a much better heel. Yeah. And Zia Lee is called up from NXT to SmackDown. Okay. No reference to the Tian Sha <coughs> thing. <coughs> just the fact that she's a, an ass kicking machine. <laughs> Yeah, all the, all the law they've been building up for NXT for what a year at least. Aye. Yeah, whatever. And now, um, what's she called? Mei Ying, is it? Yeah, the character itself. They had that in a room with Bo and Al being weird. This we'll get onto a bit later. It was a very attitude era segment that one. Get out! Yeah. yeah, it's like John Cena going through the different rooms. Gene Snitsky, you know. and, yeah, um, Mei Young. 
Mm. Sort of vibe. Ying. Yeah, Mei Ying. Oh, oh Mei Ying. Her Mei-Ying. spooky cousin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good save. Big E arrives and calls out Drew McIntyre. Drew makes his entrance and challenges Big E to the retitle. They're interrupted by the Dirty Dogs. <laughs> Ziggler wants credit for helping both Big E and Drew early in their careers. And this was the most fun I've heard listening to Ziggler in some time. Because then we've got clips and goes, yeah, I did help you, Big E. When we do my sidekick, look at these clips that have been zoomed in. Not to avoid copyright, but also to avoid showing that other person who's no longer with the company and probably will never be with the company ever again. Uh, Who was that? AJ Lee. AJ. Oh, AJ. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's that CM Punk. You know, they don't like that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, Wow, I think of uh, Eric the Electric. Anyone know Eric the Electric in the room? Go on. Andrew? Just does food eating challenges. But he also, it's crazy, right? He does these challenges like 50,000 calories in a day or whatever it is. But in the midst of it, to achieve that, he goes for like 20-odd mile cycles. Like he eats a lot and then goes for like a 20-mile cycle, Ooh. comes back and then eats more. How Eric you... the Electric, incredible. He's got a thing where he goes like, double e, this food is W-O-W. Wow. Wow. So many laughing. And then he goes that. like that and then a flame appears. Do you choose? Wait, how can you, again, what's he look like then? You. Basically, oh, so very you... trim man, very trim man. What effect does that do in the body if you have that many calories? I've then got no just idea. Cycle it off. Yeah, it's that, that, that's why I guess he does it to, to use it up instead of it being stored like I do. <laughs> I <laughs> hoard me. That's because if I was the bod, if I was you know like the old Beano strip was like the little people living in their head, they'd be just going, "What, what, what yeah. are we doing here?" Like, like uh, I've seen this man. Aye. I've not watched. He's a big YouTuber. Like um, yeah. I watched that beard versus food as well. Beard meets food. Sorry. And he's a very trim man as well, but he's also a personal trainer. He's a competitive eater. Like, he's a proper one, I think. Where, whereas Eric the Electric just does it for the YouTube, um, for the hits. <laughs> that was weird. There's the, the, the famous one in America, the competitive eating. Danny, oh, Mr. Hot Dog. Yeah. But name. then he had the feud with um, was it Kobashi and stuff like that. And it showed, that's his name. And uh, not Kenta. <laughs> like, but uh, <laughs> but um, the other Kobashi. But yeah, it's like, hey, all right, so here's the guy who can eat more hot dogs than anyone else. And you just like, oh, here comes this big gannet, you know, this just this big, tr- ripped, shred. I'm like, oh, they're just using this to like, to gain then. Like, oh, that's a, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Like, people are using it to <laughs> to be healthy. Food, Dirty bulking, food brother. Is fuel. I mean, absolutely, yeah. It's like the life boatman. Life boatman. Nah. Well, that was it. When we saw him in WCBW and he started being all Hanson esque and we was, you know, he put on some weight and we're like, all right. And then we saw him a few months later, and he was, <laughs> yeah. And I went, I said, like, mate, you look mint. He goes, oh, thanks. You know, he's all like, yeah, I know, but thanks for saying it. I was like, yeah, why is it? Because, well, I did proper bulking rather than just dirty bulking. I went, ah, plus I'm going to New Japan. I don't know if you ever heard this company, Matthew. And he did, by God. He's there. By God, he's still there, I think. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. it's crazy. I think. Good, uh, good for him. Good for him. Good for him, uh. yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, Dom Ziggler. Um, yeah, that. And then Drew went, hey. And he went, you can show up as well. I made you relevant. Remember when we were tag champs? And I went, I forgot about that, mm. that period. Because on one level, it's like, oh, wow, what a, just, just put two random people together. So it wasn't great just watching like the storyline bit. But the matches they had were mint. Yeah. Were, yeah. And I've forgotten all about it. So I'm like, oh, you know, you remember, ah, oh, Dolph Dolph Ziggler. And then he claimed he was responsible for the birth of Xavier Woods as well. That's right. <laughs> he, did. he was on fire this he one. He was. Day, so. Shame that Drew wasn't. It's Drew Day. Oh. <laughs> I'm Big D. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I think the Scottish have a saying where it's like, get to. Yeah, get to. Pal. Mm. Insert word That's between. how they say it, yes. Yeah. But at least we've got <laughs> Bobby Roode as well. Call himself Big Bob. Yes. Shades of Al Murray. Big Bob. Big Bob, Big Bob, Big Bob. Fantastic. Do you remember that? Do you ever watch that? Al Murray's um, Friday night chat Years show thing? Years ago. I couldn't yeah. do anything about it. Like. We used to sit down with a bag of crisps with me while I'm watching that. Oh. <laughs> I was fascinated because I'm like, oh, my, my friend put on Al Murray and I just thought, oh, it's just going to be whatever, like Jim Davidson or something. He started doing his bit. We've got the globe. We talked about all the all the places that England ruled and stuff like that. Like, Oh, it's a right. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's a traditional pub landlord. Yeah. So. He's a very clever man, isn't he? The way he does it. I love that Dolph Ziggler is just so, we're so enamored by him that every time we talk about him, we have to talk about something completely different <laughs> to what we were actually talking about. Anyway, Biggie's annoyed by this and it's the big ending on Rude, on Big Bob, to make a statement. Yep. But I don't know why they had Drew challenging him. That was stupid. It's going to make Drew look stupid. 
Drew's not going to win. Drew already mm. looks stupid. It's all right. He's got big D. He's got the big sword. Big D. He's got a massive winky, hasn't he? Yeah. I just almost, wish people with big winkies certainly. don't tend to hang around with big swords because they don't need to compensate. So, mm. but, but am I trying to insinuate that Drew McIntyre's got no? He's massive. No, no. no you know course, what? No. Of course, he's got a massive penis, right? If you're, <laughs> what a weird start of that sentence. Let's not pretend that Drew hasn't, right? Also. <laughs> Um, if your boss is like obsessed with like hyper masculinity and stuff and suspects that you probably do. <laughs> hey Vince, look at this. <laughs> no, no, suspects, as we all do. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> then he will. I think Vince is obsessed enough with ma- hyper masculinity to be like, you should use a massive sword as well to symbolize. Yeah, I like the fact Vince just has no idea about symbolism. He's like, just yeah, like, you should have a massive sword. <laughs> like the thought of like Vince in the meeting, he's like, damn it, I just don't, don't see Drew McIntyre as world champion material. And then Drew sort of outside the door and he's heard this. He's like, well then, Vince there, buddy lad. I don't know why he's packed all of a sudden. Flops it down on the table. By God! Make him the WWE champion now! No, he's a bit more subtle. He comes in and just, like, he's got the kilt on. He does the little split leg routine from Basic Instinct. Oh! <laughs> I call that meat. There's, a, there's an image for you. <laughs> Backstage, Reggie escapes from various 347 folk. And also this conversation. He bumps into Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz, who led him past. Uh-huh. Afterwards, Kevin Owens heads to the ring. He's in the by Akira. Owen stuns him and leaves. Same old stuff we do every bleed. That was crap, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey. Done with this. Tazawa wanted a match. Did he? That's the thing now. That's the gimmick. He's like the Heath Slater. <laughs> it's gimmick because he wants a wrestling no, match. No, he did it. He did, who was it with last week? I forget who it was. Um, but he did the same thing, didn't he? I want a match. Oh, it was Keith Bearcat Lee. He's like, I want a match with anybody. And, yeah. then, and then Keith Bearcat Lee came out. So I guess he's the, the Heath Slater of the modern mm. day. The 2011. 12 when Heath was getting dicked God, on by the legends. Yeah. One, yeah. He should team with Naomi. She also wants a match. Oh, yeah? <laughs> like, the, like the Biffy Clyro song. Ah. Oh. Anyone? Andrew got, perked anyone up because he's match? got a Biffy Clyro tattoo yeah, on his on the, on the You like that, Andrew, there? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Like, Mo- o- like OK Cupid, they all want a match. Mon the Biff? Well, t- well done. You Mon the Biff. The, you should repeat the thing I said. Oh, did you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the biff. Rob for the draft. The Street Profits move to Raw. Okay. The Viking Raiders move to SmackDown. I forgot they were a thing on Raw, to be honest with you. They were in the 24 7 segment, weren't they? They sort of confronted uh, Reggie yeah. first. That's sad. Finn, War Machine. It's, like, it's the relegation zone, that. <laughs> Finn Balor moves to Raw. What? Ricochet moves to SmackDown. Yeah. Yeah, those are two good picks because they're not doing much on. Well, they were. And again, well, I guess he has to avoid Brock Lesnar and those. Yeah, I hope, <laughs> I hope the baller manages to get revenge for that. <laughs> Imagine if it was oh. just a segment where he's got the same uh. comedy shears and he just goes up the, the top knob and just goes, beep, ha <laughs> ha, runs right. off. End of feud. Yeah. Finn wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's Finn Day. <laughs> we arrive. Finn Finn day. you. It's Finn Day. Yeah. Like Bin Day. You yeah. Know, it, it, what? That's fantastic. That's like nighttime. It's Finn Day. Yeah. Don't forget to put the. No, but they'll sing it. We're like, it's Finn Day, Finn Day. Gotta there cut the ropes on Finn Day. <laughs> By the way, that's the most glaring omission from the uh, the draft was. What, Rebecca uh, Black? No, The Rock. Oh. The Rock was not oh. drafted to the main roster. No, NXT needs him right now. I know. There's that weird. lack of headliners. He's wasted down there. Wasted, I tell them. Next draft. They could build raw around that man. You know what? Because they know. Worst, worst comes to worst. Like Luchasaurus, they can just thaw him out and he can be ready for when, you know, the Iceland volcano hits and it will hit again. <laughs> Volcanoes tend to do that. It can go. It's all right, lads. Roman Reigns, not here. Drew, not here. Big E, not here. It's all right. You know, it's night time. <laughs> yeah! Co- oh. Yeah! That's it. It's all they need. Rhea Ripley and Nikki Ash successfully defend the women's tag team. Oh, remember them? Tag team titles against Natalia and Tamina. Why After... isn't it Shotzi and Knox, lads, eh? Yeah, what's up? Why there, isn't then? it? They've, they've earned it twice yeah. over. <laughs> Maybe more times, honestly. Lots of times. But at least we're getting some BZ, BZKs. Eh? Do you want some BZKs? What? You don't want some BZKs? No. Some boom zaps and kapows. Oh, right. Uh, Do you yeah. want some BZKs? Is... <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Thank you. You so, know what? It was needed to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wank. It's the 
The Northeast equivalent would be left, right, coma. <laughs> making noises again. I saw that Twitter thread. It's like Ross making noises. It's like four different videos of me making noises. Oh, that's good. What noises? Really talented me. What noises do you do? I can't remember. The uh? It's on that um, insert bad name of Cultaholic account. Oh, it, thing, thingies of the, Cultaholic. The heels of Cultaholic. Oh, oh, oh yes, right. <laughs> yes. And after that, more draft. Carrying Cross stays on Raw. <laughs> Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza move to SmackDown. Okay. Because, you know, they're actually building up momentum Whoa. on Raw. Uh, Alexa Bliss stays on Raw. Wait, I thought she was having time off. Anyway, whatever. And then Cesaro stays on SmackDown. Okay. Yep. Uh... Then Goldberg hits the ring to call out Bobby Lashley. Lashley arrives and maintains that his attack on Goldberg's son was an accident. However, he agreed to no holds barred rematch at Crown Jewel. Goldberg is adamant going, it wasn't. You you knew. He whatever. proved him right, though, because like Cedric hopped on his back. And what did yeah. he do? He did the same thing that Bob did. <laughs> yeah. What a chatting bollocks, Bill. Yeah, chatting bollocks, he aren't is, you? Yeah. Uh, and he keeps going on about killing Bobby, which I'm a bit worried about. I'm going to kill you. Um, you're dead. Uh, you're next and you're dead. You're dead? Um, that's, yeah. Because he said, uh, said they can do that in Saudi Arabia. And he went, no, Goldberg, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, don't do that. Uh-oh. Uh, afterwards, the Hurt Business face the New Day and lose. The Street Profits arrive to dance and celebrate with the New Day. Were there, was there a rivalry going on between the Street Profits and the New Day, or were they just being friends? I couldn't quite work out it's the tone. It's a friendly rivalry, isn't it? Like, yeah. Oh. Mm. yeah. But this was more towards the friendly scale than the rivalry scale, I'd say. Uh, uh. It was bizarre, though, for the Hurt Business being put in that situation. Like, the whole reason was split up months ago, which I know it doesn't matter because they never remember these things, it was because MVP and Bob didn't think they were very good. And then they've lost all of a sudden again after joining them again in, like, a minute or whatever it was. Yeah. Bizarre! Yeah. yeah. I, yay, the Hurt Business is back. Oh, well, sorry, that wasn't very good to get them back together, but it'll be all right. And the, t- the definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> doing the same thing. The same, but then expecting different results. And here we are with the Hurt Business. I don't know what I'm doing here. That's right. Save me, lads. That will be cut off and put on that Twitch channel. <laughs> RK Brew in the ring and Orton calls out almost. AJ and Omos arrive, with AJ claiming that Riddle is too stupid Mm -hmm. uh, to help Randy keep a hold of their tag titles. Orton attacks Styles in the middle of their promo. (laughs) Omos tries to grab him, but Orton ducks and hits Styles the RKO before escaping with Riddle. Not sure what this proved. It proved that Raw needed this 10-minute segment. This was like a weird, convoluted sort of... Because I'm sure on 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 Twitter and on the YouTube highlight of it and stuff, it was like WWE were framing it as like, the heels have fallen for their trap, like they've got them. But I was like, well, it was a very like, convoluted series of what events trap? to reach there. Well, I'll, yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you what it proved. What? It proved that that is a potential WrestleMania main event. Omos versus Randy Orton. Singles match, <laughs> world title. Imagine. Oh, by the way, yeah, Randy Orton just showed up after not appearing for a week, maybe two weeks, and it was like, hey, Randy Orton's here. Told us that he just doesn't really get followed up on. And He's no a tag team champion, what do you expect? Yeah, he <laughs> wasn't clear for action. He's like, yeah, I am actually. Just came up. Just one. I need to walk here with you, Omos. I need it more than anything. Could he reach? I'm thinking that the vertical leap needed to fight. <laughs> you know who could have done that? Mark Great Jindrak. Oh. oh, Mark Jindrak. What a leap on that man. Randy Orton's got a big vertical leap. Do you remember when he did the splits in the midair? Because mm. he was happy. And everyone was like, what? What's this? Yeah, he did the it. fist bumping. He didn't knock him on Mark Henry, but he yeah. sort of did a little skip beforehand. And everyone was so like, happy. this is fun, Orton. I'm enjoying it. Do you remember when he pelted that present off the back of, I think, Del Rio? Someone was running away up the ramp during, like, near Christmas. Yeah. And he just launched a present, like a gift box at them. And it absolutely nailed them and took them out. And Orton's like, like you can't help yeah. but laugh a bit. It's really good. Can happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> I can't Round remember six. if it was or not, though. But uh, maybe I'm just associating Del Rio with Christmas because he ran over Santa Claus. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> God, that was such a good episode. Because go, he's such a lovely fellow. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so giving. Christmas yeah. incarnate himself. <laughs> God. Bertie Del Rio. Carmella moves to Raw. Uh, Corey Graves is very happy about that. Ridge Holland is called up to SmackDown. Interesting like, okay, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because after the two, you would mm. assume that Peter Dune would have been the one. Well, they're gonna have, they, again, NXT does need people on it. And I think Pete Dunne is someone who NXT needs. And crucially, more needs. Ridge is bigger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ridge Holland from near London, coming up to SmackDown <laughs> near you. 
Gable Stevenson skips NXT and is called up to Raw. How bizarre. I love that, How that bizarre. they showed, like, and here he is, be, like, with his family and them hugging. I forget who it was, I'm sorry, but I think it was one of the Dans on Twitter who went, I've seen parents happier to see their their, their kids going up to war. Well, they uh, know what's going to happen, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I know. Like, oh, well done. My son's going to be creatively frustrated. <laughs> oh, get it. Yeah, they read the dirt sheets. <laughs> Yeah. That is weird because I assume it's going to be they're going to try and do a Kurt Angle with him. I assume straight on there, world champion within a year. It is weird how it's almost expected. Oh, you did Olympic stuff. Yeah, you'll take to this easy because of how well Kurt Angle took to it. Yeah, I guess they are coachable. That proves they're coachable. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, I well, so you don't need to be talented. You need to be a good listener. All right, moldable, mm. not untouchable. Word Martin, life, mossable. <laughs> Oh, well, because I always, I've got it. I don't know, it's just obviously something I've put in my head that he would have been the one to to, to knock off the, the tribal chief. Oh! his throne, but obviously not if he's on the wrong the wrong brand. Because I don't want it to be Lesnar, no matter how good Lesnar has been since he returned. I don't think it will be Lesnar. Lesnar I think the threat is there. Yeah, certainly, certainly. But, but then it's, it's got to be someone new. The Brahma the Bull. Mm. No. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, sorry, he's the eyebrow raising. Wow, trailblazing. Like, go away, no. No, uh, well, why would you? Hey. No one wants the rock. Night. No, no, the yes. real, no, the real rock, the real one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Not like. that one, the real rock. Yeah, why do you? Oh, want the real rock. Why do you want the real rock to go? No, I got confused there. Why do you want the real rock to go away? Oh, you mean the real no, no, stone? The rock would be yes. The rock would be is good and everything, but I don't want him. What a waste of time it would be if Roman Reigns' yeah, reign finally totally, ended totally. and it was the rock. It's like. That's everything I dislike about WWE in their weird way of, we can't push this dude and make him a star. What are you on about? You can't be bigger than the brand. I don't know what it is, right? But like, I hate when they bring veterans back and they prioritize them over the current guys and stuff. Look at you, Bill. But when but when The Rock comes back, I can't help it. I'm like, it's The, it's the Rock. Yes. Because he paid his paid his dues, didn't he? I don't care He did his that. time. <laughs> then he went away. He did his time. I did my time. <laughs> Sami Zayn Zane stays on SmackDown. Sami Davis Jr. stays on SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> Him and his shadow. Imagine Sammy coming out. It's the rhythm of life. It's <laughs> New gimmick Here's for Sami Zayn. Bojangle. <laughs> the Candyman. <laughs> yeah, Sami Zayn stays on SmackDown. Probably proven right, to be honest with you, that they forgot about him. And then the main event between Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair ends in a DQ when Becky Lynch pulls Belair out the ring after she hits her finisher. Becky what puts is beats Be- down. What's Becky's issue with Bianca Belair, Be- man? Becky, th- this is the interesting thing, because we talked about earlier uh, for the first segment, she came out relatively understated. I thought it was very much a 2019 babyface Becky Lynch promo, or tween a Becky Lynch promo, I guess. A badass babyface. Then she comes out for this main event segment. Her hair's being jazzed up in a different way. She's got black lipstick on. She's being noticeably more of a dick. It's like they were like, oh, that was too babyface, that Becky, in the opening segment. Go back to being a heel, because that's what you are currently, remember? Mm-hmm. Strange. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't know what you are yet. Uh, she's just Becky Lynch. So yeah, the beat down banker. But then it's a top from man by Sasha Banks, who stands tall to close the show. And does a dance. And does a dance. She's happy. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Sasha Banks. Sasha oh, Banks. Oh, oh. do a dance. Do, do a dance. Happy oh. and you know if it, you're Sasha happy Banks. and you know it. I think it's like the second and third verse, isn't it? Clap Shout your hands. Oh. Shout hooray. Stamp your, hooray. Stamp your feet. Oh, right. God, I forgot how the song went. Yeah, yeah. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Uh, move to the rhythm of the beat. Yeah. <laughs> Berries and cream. <laughs> we are the children of the night. Yeah. <laughs> NXT 2.0. <laughs> In the opening match, Mandy Rose beats Ember Moon. Poor Ember. Poor Ember. Ember Strange. So good. She cut that weird eerie promo a few weeks ago where she was like, I know what I need to do. I need to go away. No, she's like, that's what she's like. You I don't know. know me, but I have many skills. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> no, she was saying, like, I need to go away. I, I know what I need, I need to do. And then she's come back now a few weeks later, exactly the same. <laughs> I need to lose the man. <laughs> what's, she, what's she done? What you done, Ember? Eh? Eh? She just wasn't, she wasn't banking on running into the powerhouse that is Mandy Rose. The human suplex machine. Mandy Rose. Rose. It was yeah. it. He was talking about Mandy's thighs on Twitter, and she was just like, yeah, cheers, man. It was uh, Eric Bugenhagen, yeah. wasn't it? Oh. It's like, I imagine being strangled by Mandy Rose's thighs is like, oh, some, what a did sloth, he say? A sloth, like, like a sloth squeezing the life out of you with its death grip. And she was like, cry, she was like crying after face thumbs up. Like, Cheers, man. <laughs> I do have massive okay. thighs. Yeah, it's class. I work out a lot. Yeah. yeah. 
Not thighs, but quads. Qua- quads. Yeah, yeah. Quads, not thighs. Quads. Yeah. It's quads, mm. muscle. Mm. Kenny Omega as well. Don't know what his thighs are like. What, he was Thurston. <laughs> oh, no, Marnie Rose got a better knee than Kenny Omega. Oh, the knee was class. Oh, yeah. More from the Brian Danielson school of kneeing than the Kenny Omega school, I'd say. But mm. yeah. I can see you go into the comments. I can see yeah. you. <laughs> We're just making sure you pay attention. <laughs> LA Knight beats Odyssey Jones after distraction from Andre Chase. Ooh. Chase also pushes Jones' leg back into the ring. He attempts a rope break. The it was really, really, quick. It was, really quick. It was brilliant. <laughs> I just thought tactically aware, tactically just just outstanding. He was sticking, he was ducking, he was... Du- no, he was ducking, he was diving. What's the opposite of sticking? Twisting. Moving. Moose, moving. Twisting. Moosing. <laughs> M- mossing. Aye. He, was, he ran away for a bit. And then he got his pal down and he won. Brilliant. Revolutionary. Are we going to go back to Andre Chase University ever or is now... No. Uh, okay. What was he wearing not. this week? Was he still wearing the blazer? The, the blazer. The jumper. The sweater. When not you call it a blazer? A blazer's a jacket, isn't it? Oh, yeah, right. So Tom Campbell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, The Tom Campbell School of Dressing. What's, yes, that's right. You know when you call something wrong for years and you have to be reminded that's ah, right? Yes. What's right. the difference between a blazer and a suit jacket? Is there a, is no something idea. that makes a blazer a blazer? Huh. That's a good question. Good Tom, question. Tom has a good point where he says, always keep a blazer close to your person because then you're always ready for any situation. You can just not wear the blazer. <laughs> check his guy to the guy. Uh, <laughs> you can not wear the blazer and just be casual in a T-shirt. You put the blazer on, you can go anywhere. But I also assume we'd have to, you'd all have to wear like posh shoes as well. Loafers yeah. at least, yeah. I've just started to Google Tom Campbell. What am I doing? Uh, bla- <laughs> what makes a blazer a blazer? Who is Tom Campbell? <laughs> While he's doing that. Backstage, Pete Dunn challenges Cameron Grimes for later tonight. Elsewhere, Kyle O'Reilly asks Von Wagner why mm. he's always helping him. He's weird, Von he? Wagner says he respects Kyle, but Kyle asks him to leave Von Wagner alone. And then he doesn't later on. He doesn't. goes and saves him again. What's the obsession Von Wagner has with uh, Kyle O'Reilly? He just respects him so much. There's respect, and then there's, you know... Because when, when Kyle, you're so much better when you're in a team. I'm looking at... Carl, uh, uh, Vo- who, who's Carl? Why have I got Carl? Carl I don't want to correct you. Carl Wagner, uh, Von Wagner and Kyle, and I see Trish Stratus and I see Mickey James. That's what I L- see. Look at this, sorry. Von Wagner's a stalker, Aye. crazy person. Yeah. Right, I found this article. What is the difference between a suit jacket and a blazer? Look how long, there's a content, there's, I can't be asked what to do. What the content say? There's not just a summation somewhere? Uh, mm. There's etymology and origin the origin of the jacket the origin of the blazer the main differences what is a jacket what is a blazer <laughs> what, what is a jacket models <laughs> suit jacket blazer the shoulders suit jacket blazer the inside suit jacket blazer fabrics oh. considerations about the style when do you wear each how to match them what's a sports coat <laughs> just so much I reckon a suit jacket is called a suit jacket because it's part of a suit whereas a blazer you can buy, buy off the rack just by itself I don't know if that's true but that's what I would say I like your version. Yeah. I'm going to say it's true. Unlike the jacket, the blazer has its own identity. There it was go. created to and be that worn. Name, with... and that name is Von Wagner. It was created <laughs> to be worn with mismatched trousers. So there you go. Oh, right. Yeah, so you're right then. I reckon Von Wagner wishes he was Kyle Riley's blazer. So he, he wants to wrap, wear him like a suit all... jacket. Yeah, wrapped around him all day. Well, that's it. He can be the suit and he can jacket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good that. I like it. Tommaso Ciampa announces that Halloween Havoc is back. I forgot it was a thing to begin with the first time. Yeah. They went, it's it back. Good. I went, oh, that's good. Yay, 97. I enjoyed it last oh, year yeah. with the wheel. Yeah, I about forgot it was a thing. And they had a zombie ref that keeps them showing yeah. up. Canadian? Yeah, he's Canadian, yeah. He's a Canadian, what? Uh, during the, the stag do that, got yeah. down, that um, Loomis and Earl then went on, yeah. Yeah, he spoke at one point and they were like, you're Canadian? Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the law. He needed uh, a challenge of the his NXT title. Bron Breaker answers the call. I've got the biggest balls! <laughs> Champ accuses him of seeing the title as a stepping stone or something bigger and better before granting him the title shot. Yes. Just one second. Look how much happier we are talking about NXT 2.0 than we are. I'm telling you, any man. Any other, like, Raw, SmackDown, yeah. or NXT 1. Give me to the way forward. Yeah. Take your five... I'm going to go Big E. Go on. You can take your five-star yeah, matches sorry. and you can shove it. What I want is big, meaty gimmicks slapping off yeah. other big, meaty gimmicks. A gimmicks that can be summed up with one word. <laughs> Lecturer. Steiner. Oh, we got a... Wagner. An introduction to a brand new one. Professional... It's three words, actually. Oh, Professional yeah. poker Poker player, player. yes. <laughs> it was so rubbish. Oh, I forgot to put that bit in. Hello. Yes. 
I am Duke Hudson. I have purchased Joe Hendry's local hero <laughs> jacket, which now makes me a professional <laughs> poker player. He's playing them all one on one. His like, catchphrase was, and it's fantastic. It's 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 wonderful. Whoops. He's gonna beat somebody and he's gonna say, better luck next time. Oh he's a poker player. That was his catchphrase on his thing. No way to hold him. No way to hold him. Sing, no no I'm scared of the, I'm scared of the copyright. The, 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 the thought of Kenny Rogers there has made me think of something I was meant to mention earlier when he brought up my beard, and that was Greg Brzezinski. But <gasps> we've missed the boat now, so what's the point? Nah, screw that. Let's Look, put, put let's, the handbrake on. If you want to... Get the picture of Greg... Bren- what's everybody makes... Sh- Br- Greg Brz- Brzezinski. Brzezinski. Um, make sure you're alone. <laughs> make sure you're alone at this time because you're about to get aroused, right? Don't be with your parents or anything like that because this is about to change your life. Yeah. This is the man I've been going to for reassurance about my beard. Oh. Look at this stallion. Oh, we're getting there. We're, we're getting gonna, there. Oh, 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 oh. Zoom in on a, a couple of them, Andrew. Give it a, a little click. Give it a little click. You're in there. Top row, oh. long hair. Second Top one. row. Second one, this one. Look oh. at him. He's been reassuring me that you need to give it at least 90 days to grow your beard out to see where the bald spots like filling and stuff. So. It sounds like... Oh God, it sounds like oh, he's personally been. It sounds like he's personally been telling you. Like, I don't wish, worry, Ross. I wish that's it was. It. I wish I had some personal contact with Greg. Imagine Did you have, you have like, cameo. I maybe. Oh. Imagine being. I think he's fifty-eight. Imagine being fifty-eight and looking like that. Get him with the long hair, Andrew. That's where things go to the next level. It's a human Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Whoa. Whoa! That's what. Hey, that might be what Richard Tubman looks like when he's fifty-eight. But anyway. No. Beard Brand is the YouTube yeah, no, the, channel. The, the third one. He's right. Yeah. yeah. Beard Brand. Uh, Beard no, 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 Brand. No. Oh, my God. One. one, two, three. Get your fingers out. There you go. Beard Brand Whoa. is the YouTube channel, which he has. Look at him. What a reassuring man. The truth about not washing your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it washes itself after several years. Well, when you look like that, I'm sure it does. <laughs> Good God. Aye. Oh. There we go. I don't know why I thought I mentioned that there, but Kenny Rogers has made me think of him. You can see where Kenny Rogers comes from there, can't you? Absolutely. Kenny Rogers is a slightly less evolved version of Greg Brzezinski. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, Kurt know, Russell if even you're sexier. For fame pick, you could... What uh, have science brought? Beards. Beards. Backstage, Indy Hartwell is saying her friend per- Persia Perota about the Persia Perota, I think, but I'm not saying. Okay. Oh, yeah. God. All right. Apparently, Dexter isn't here tonight because Indy wore him out. He had packets of condoms. They used two packets of condoms. That's like, like twenty condoms. I mean, the strips that Dexter had. Last but there was week. more. Yeah, they yeah. had more than twenty, though. Yeah, that must be at least you know thirty odd condoms in that streak he had on the. On yeah. the bed. and that's only the ones we saw. So sixty times potentially, the intercourse was had. At least it was safe. Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh, they like made balloons and. And like Drew McIntyre, he's packing. <laughs> and after the next revelation, I am <laughs> shocked that it's not actually Indy who was worn out. And they're like, this isn't subtle enough. He goes, my God, yeah. you're right. She also says she's 9.5. And they went, what in? And then before they can explain what that means exactly, they find smoke billowing out from under a locker room. Damn. No, it's not Dexter just lying on a bed <laughs> of all the moisture. For no, it is in fact Mei Ying and Boa who yell at them to get out of the spooky. Get out! What yes. was he doing? He was like, yeah, bent, what were they doing? Like, kneel down, any the, the the foot of the the, the throne. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll be explained. Are they, next are they week. getting it on? Mm. I thought they were like worshiping the evil thing. Uh, but it's not. Uh, yeah, probably. It probably. was very like Mae Young and Snitsky from Out Studio. Oh, we're doing something dirty in here. Get out! <laughs> it's weird. They're like, all right, sex, 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 sex. Something serious. Oh, okay. Oh, back to sex. Uh, yeah. That's the end of that gimmick. Like Tian Shah. Bruce and Bruce and Vince are around. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of cool, wasn't it? With for a bit with the old uh, the, the the promo packages they had put together and the the backstory. It's so weird being a wrestling fan and you're like, oh, okay, it's a bit weird now, but let's see where it goes. And it never goes anywhere, no. and I fall for it every time. I'm like Charlie Brown missing the football. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of which, Joe Gacy beats Ike Manjiro and hugs him afterwards. Uh, again, I still can't tell even at this stage, because I'm trying to be optimistic, if it's supposed to be, ha, 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 the left, aren't they silly? Or, because his delivery and everything, and the dialogue is I think it's so on the... It's, it's on the walk the tightrope. Is it supposed to be that he's, again, 
pretending to be. He lures you into a false sense of security, and then he just knocks your head off because he was like, to, yeah. he was like, they're doing the, the the shoulder block spot, and he's like, I believe in you. Go on, try again. And he tries again yeah. and knocks him down. I think. Obviously, Fox have lashed, on, lashed onto it and given them some publicity and put that thought yeah. over our minds. It's like, ah, it's two old men going, ah, look at these pathetic young people uh, with their morals and whatnot and, you know, their stand upness and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But you look at just the matches by itself and the promos and whatnot, I think it's the, the other way around. Right. Yeah. And then later on backstage, Gacy tells Champa that he deserves a title shot more than Braun Baker. And, you know, Gacy was, sorry, Champa was being very, I forget the word he used, just pick whatever buzzword you like for the left. Um, Oh, he said somebody has to have balls to take you on. I don't think that's very nice. Champa says that if Gacy can beat him next week, he'll make a title match a triple threat. So you don't think this gimmick is a mockery of, like, woke millennials and yeah. stuff? You well, don't I think? Want it, I match. want it to be that he's pretending to be woke because it would be such a fascinating character because it's very, very relevant. Oh, I'm really woke. Oh, I love, I love the gays. One month of the year. You know, it's like that. That's why uh, on earth would Vince McMahon do that? All right, I, mean, I, really I don't think don't they'd re- it'd be such an undercover gimmick. Uh, if he, well, you say, so you think he knows what he's doing? Joe Gacy knows what he's doing. Yeah, and he's defying the very simple. Yeah, and then, but then again, doing. realizing that's that probably just a parody than... of like, oh, they say they believe in this, but they really don't. Yeah, that's not so true. Mm. And again, as I just said, I'm very stupid for believing and getting any hope behind anything. Uh, he it's might the fact that they'd be it. doing it on TV would be amazing. Yeah, but it's. Uh, it's a different strand, obviously, a different direction, but it's like it's sort of Bo, Bo Dallas thing from the main roster, isn't it? Go on, I believe in you. You can do it. No, you yeah. can't. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it's. It depends what lens you look at it through. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out more. I guess as yeah. the weeks go on. I didn't didn't realize that Ikeman Gyro's uh, offense was going to be so jacket orientated. Now, don't take it off. He doesn't take it off, and mm-hmm. he uses it uh, again. To punch him. One word gimmicks. That's all we have in next. Jacket now. man. Jacket. Yeah, he uses it to punch him. <laughs> also. Joe Gacy is... Is there a blazer stirred. or is there a suit jacket? Oh, shut up. <laughs> it's a blazer. There's no suit involved, is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe Gacy is glared at by a large, bald man in the crowd. Snitsky. <laughs> Parker Boudreaux. And it's not mentioned or said. Oh, I don't he think... He just goes, oh! Well, no, his name, oh. his name is... Um, I forget his first name, but his second name is Harland because that's a hard and gritty name. He's the guy who looked like... Um, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, yeah, Which but I now he doesn't is, look like Brock Lesnar. That's a strength, isn't it, surely? Looking yeah, like Brock Lesnar. Good and thing. they've taken that away. <laughs> Not many people on the, on the <coughs> planet look like Brock Lesnar, but they had one, and they've made him shave his head look like Kane and Snitsky's yeah. love child. Well, in, in fairness, though, they, they don't want him coming on the crowd and people going, hey, look, it's Brock. He's I don't he's think he's that's he's... a bad thing, mate. I wish I looked like Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not? Yeah, but I think they'd be like, no, no, it's going to be different. It's going to be unique. I if Matthew looks like Brock. <laughs> Sat there. Yeah. Oh. I don't think the booking was very good this week, guys. <laughs> 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 Hey, have you played Sonic 2? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cora Jade is supposed to take on Virginia Ferry, but Frankie Monet... <laughs> Virginia these names, Ferry. These names are just absolutely that, That's the name, by the way. Like, Frankie Monet attacks Ferry. <laughs> Frankie Monet, Virginia Ferry, and Cora Jade. That yeah. takes a place. Trey Baxter comes to ringside to cheer on Jade, but she gets the upset win. Yeah. The roll Oh. Yeah, and then they what? hug it out, and I'm like just waiting for Vince to just bury Trey Baxter for being someone's boyfriend. <laughs> are, they, are they a real couple? I think maybe. I don't know. He only went through two packs of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Pete Dunne faces Cameron Grimes. Rich Holland tries to get involved, so Kyle O'Reilly runs out to even the odds. Unfortunately, this distracts Grimes, allowing Dunne to hit the bitter end and win. He and Ridge battle O'Reilly afterwards. And Von Wagner. He's there again. He's there again. Leave Even though he alone. said, don't do it. No, I want to get beat up by these people. Kyle's got trust issues, okay, Von. Eh? Yeah, Von. 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 Remind me of Bobby Ball on I'm a Celebrity. His wife, on it? Von, 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 Von. Got him through it, didn't he? I don't remember that, just but the sh- cool. Used to shut his eyes when he was struggling and just go, Von, 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 Von. Think of his wife and get through it anyway. His wife uh, is called Von. Yeah, Yvonne. Von. Yvonne. Oh, oh like a right. short. Okay, it's like Von's right. a middle Not- name. Von Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> Her name's Von Wagner. Here's my wife, Von Wagner. <laughs> All right. Imagine, the middle name is the first name. I was imagining Von Wagner's full name being Yvonne. <laughs> Yvonne Wagner. Yvonne. Kyle's of like, the Yukon Kyle's sailed like, the seven seas. Kyle's like, you need to leave, respect my boundaries, Yvonne. And Von Wagner's like, shut up. And oh, that's the thing, isn't it? Kyle's got trust issues after the whole Undisputed Era thing, and yeah. Von won't leave him alone. The guy's struggling, Von. You're not helping <laughs> 
But I didn't enjoy the fact that Kyle attacked in this match because it didn't forget the thing that happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Which, you know, now that NXT is just another WWE. Yeah, because everything else is such a blur. You sometimes go, oh, there's actual feuds yeah. somewhere among this. Among things like the long awaited debut of Tony D'Angelo. For the beats, family. He beats Malik Blade. Later, Tony Malik asks Blade. to be Lash, Le- Lash Legend's guest on her show next week because obviously he needs a week to prepare, and she agrees. It would be good if she asked some, some questions. So how do you get your money? Uh, no, no, no. I think that will happen. <laughs> That'd be good. Because yeah. they were on commentary, they were w- saying waste like, management. Yeah, the business and the... <sighs> she just can't wait for Tony to win all the belts. It's the total package, isn't he? The total package. It's Tony Tangela. The total, total so, package. Did you like uh, the Mama Luke's? In oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. Da, da, the Jimmy Hart da, da, version da, da, of the Godfather da, 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 theme. What playing. a theme that was. Big Vito like the and the Johnny Lebeau. Yeah. <laughs> The ring announcer when Big Vito would come out and go, uh, the Pavarotti of hard shots to the body. <laughs> that was the thing, because when I was getting into WCW, he was very much the hardcore division was Big yeah. Vito. He'd come up with his kendo stick and his mm. hat. Mm. I remember a match he had with the demon, Dale Torborg, where he found the demon's sarcophagus yeah, yeah, backstage yeah. and started hitting yeah, him. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But the demon was never inside. He, but he hit him from behind. It wouldn't have hurt him anyway, but still. No, it would have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, it would have. Well, it came for him. Because it's really hard. Yeah. He should just, he just put it. Hey, it's the demon. Like, poked it up and just took it to a landfill and put it to a concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I got into it at a weird time. Yeah. Like when Vampiro chucked Sting off the Tron. Yeah, yeah. Set him on fire. Set him on fire and then a smaller man jumped off the yeah. Tron. And then big videos like you didn't see nothing to paint the camera people. <laughs> I hope they start to, imagine if he started to imagine right if he beats some jobber and then just to do the concrete thing. Just take him outside oh my yeah. God. to a local thing. Wow. The, the sky's the limit. And he's never mentioned again. The sky's the limit for Tony D'Angelo. He's just killing people every week. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, uh, Indy Hartwell beats. Oh, the brute crew's in next door. Oh. Hear the loud clear. Do you wanna do you wanna leave, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, mean yeah, yeah. It's a loyalty <laughs> test. You have, you have the makings of a varsity athlete. Uh, Raquel Gonzalez comes out and talks mad trash about toxic attraction. They arrive and surround her, but she's saved by Zoe Stark and Io Shirai. Pointless. Yeah, this, not much this, to say. this was so this was so main roster. It hurt. <laughs> oh yeah, again, just <laughs> there's bits when they're like, let's just pretend to do what they do in the main roster. It doesn't work. Like, uh, so let's see if I get this bit right in the main event because you're smart and you pay attention to the shows. MSK defend the tag titles against Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, oh Josh boys. Briggs and Brooks Jensen, and the Grizzled Young Vets. Mm-hmm. Now, didn't Carmelo Hayes said that he was cashing in his title no, opportunity? No. I think they were doing it without cashing in the title opportunity. Oh, okay, so it's without. He still got it. So this was a four-way match. It was scheduled to be that. Then they brought backstage, and then became eight-person elimination. Yes, oh. we're gonna have, it was going to be a singles, like a normal tag. Yeah. And then the brawl happened and it became a four-way tag. Yeah. And then they had the, the elimination rules were put on that. Yeah. And that's, how, that's, that's what happened. Right. I think. Okay. Okay. For tag titles. Right. But so... MSK, nobody banks on MSK being the best tag team in the history of professional wrestling. They win everything. Yeah. And they're really unlikable while doing it. Yeah. Why are they so unlikable, though? Be- I think Jack Atkins nailed the... The, the nailed the head of the nail into the thing where the nails go. <laughs> That's how the saying goes. That's how it goes. Where you just said they represent the youth of today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 29 now, and I'm not the youth of today anymore. Um, never really was, to be honest. But they just they're, they're too young and hip and happy, and just they've got so much to learn. <laughs> I'm out them, but I think it's such a weird. Apparently, it's just like an insult amongst people playing games now. The younger gen, the youth, as they call them. Well, they call if you if you beat them in an online game or whatever, they call, oh, yeah, but you're just a try hard. Which I think is a wonderful say when you've just been beaten by someone. Yeah, but you were trying harder than me. That's yeah. the only reason you won. It's a flex to be casual, isn't it? It used it? to be an old phrase. It's amazing. You only beat me because you're trying harder. A couple of years ago, <laughs> Andrew, what was the name for someone who was a loser in the game and things? I'm Noob. sure it was on Fortnite. Right. I can't even think. You're a who? I forget what the word was. <laughs> I don't know. Bunch whatever it was, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, they're trying up, but the expression trying hard is always a funny thing for me. But MSK are trying too hard. Oh. To be but like, they are. Hey, it's us, the Animaniacs. Woo-hoo. They are WWE baby faces. Though. That's what yeah. it is. Isn't it? The New Day managed to make it work because they're. They've got charisma. Naturally likable, mm. I guess, but they're being. Is it cookie cutter the right phrase? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to be like, yeah, they're fun like and zany, aren't they? They Ooh. even did like, hey, I've got my popcorn. I'm eating like, no, 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 don't, don't do something that someone's already done and made it theirs. No. 
Big E, long after Big E's passed away and everything like that, he'll still show up as, as that <laughs> in the popcorn <laughs> gift. He's immortal, like Pachidi and that certain other gif. Oh, God. That's his legacy. Um, I, I disagree that they're naturally likable lads. The new day? Yeah. No... MSK. Well, good. Right. That's what we were in agreement. Oh, then. Right, okay. yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. there we go. Next segment. Because you know, is was it Wesley who was de- whichever one was Desmond Xavier? I think it's Wesley. <laughs> I forgot his name was Wesley. Yeah, it's Wesley. I actually forgot about that. Desmond, that's Desmond Xavier, isn't it? Yeah, sure. I don't know what they were called before. Desmond Xavier and uh, hi. So, <laughs> <laughs> so these drinks, so I can't help you. After a wrestling show once, he was dancing that I was at. And it, I hated him for it because he was so good and all the lasses were looking at him and stuff and I was there, right? And this was just after we'd left War Culture. So I wanted, I was like, I'm gonna be, everyone's going to be like, what's going on? And I was like, I can't say anything. But instead, everyone was just buzzing because Wesley was dancing. Ah. I was like, eh? Talk to you in a minute, Jack. A sexy man is dancing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to shock the wrestling world with my pals. But no. Turns out people prefer actual wrestlers, which is weird. I didn't. I, didn't know. I remember Roddy Strong doing that in PC Dub. He does because it's right next to. He was doing a dance. If I'd done it, people were going, Oof. but because it was Roddy Strong and he has that just, yeah, I don't care, charisma. People were going, yeah, Isn't it the finger bangs. Oh, uh, almost. It was all all upper body, near legs. Oh, and, but people were going, Lama? yeah, no, no, I'm not like like stacking the shelves. I picked a pretty, pi- <laughs> a pretty picture of what it was. It was just like almost lazy dancing, but yeah, group of people surrounding. Oh, that one. Yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. I've got all the moves, mate. Wesley's was more bo- popping and locking. I'd no. say he could do all the show off, all the stuff. Yeah. Anyway, so that was uh, <laughs> yeah, that was the next thing. Main of oh yeah, then then Brooks and Briggs are like the hand towels the MSK, but then attacked by Imperium. Hey, remember them? Mm. Um. And then Brooks and Briggs chase them away. Again, the, the one word gimmicks again. Uh, Ring camp. Brooks and uh, Briggs are funny because they're really? friends because they battered each other in a bar fight and they're like, we're friends now. And we're both hard. And that's it. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. They're like the APA. NXT is so weird. Yeah. I can't look away. Yeah. The gimmicks are good. Um, Once we've cooled down, we stop like introducing twenty seven per show, and if we're getting into storylines. We'll we'll we'll, we'll realise there's a good thing happening. The only downside is there won't be anybody watching by then. <laughs> it's such a weird. Oh one. god, the demographic uh, goes, plummeted because it goes down and down and down, doesn't it, week after week? Yeah, which is a shame. But there we go. Yeah, well, don't you know like old people love MSK. <laughs> I yeah. saw a thing, I think it might be in the article headline on cultaholic.com. Oh, that's where what it was we like the, the average age for this week's NXT was 62. What? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw that on cultaholic.com. So, how? Yeah. I don't know. Because all the young uns switched it off. How can you even. 62. Because ne- that's the average age of the people writing it. These Nielsen boxes, how the, I don't how? understand how they work. Like, <coughs> how can you determine <coughs> from a box how old the people in that living room are? Eh? I didn't even know there was that many old people. Because <laughs> 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 for 62 to be the average, there's got to be some 80 year olds watching wrestling in America. <laughs> Did they know that many old people existed? Yeah. Crazy. Oh, that's it. We have to move on now. <laughs> nothing's eating that. Thank you. Oh, hey, AW Dynamite. Can you imagine being 62 <laughs> and we're still watching the wrestling? No, I hope not. No. <laughs> It's the wrong thing to say oh, on a wrestling gosh. podcast, isn't it? But uh, no, I think it'd be quite wholesome, me eh? like having a grandchild. Should we all? Going, yeah, and then you, you watch this. You're like, oh. should we all meet up for WrestleMania 50? No, that's only. That'd like, be quite what, funny though. What, what, what would you be you... doing? Hey, this new wrestling's rubbish. When I was your age, there were one word gimmicks. There's a guy called Andre Chase. He worked to chase you. Hey, this you should have seen LA Knight. <laughs> There's no one like LA Knight around today. Oh, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, granddad, you were there for when The Rock was around. Yeah, let me tell you, when LA Knight won the <laughs> NXT title. What? So think about how much wrestling history there's been even since the mid-90s, right? That's in 25 years. So fast forward for us, like 50 years, what's wrestling going to look like then? So much stuff will have right. happened. The, the Saudis will own it and we'll all be dead. It's right, all right. Okay, it's fine. fine. Uh, hopefully, though, in like at WrestleMania, I don't know, 60, 65, 70. Yeah, what's WrestleMania 70 going to look we can like? Come, we can come back. Like, Hopefully, YouTube's still a platform and this channel's been dormant for years. <laughs> and I wouldn't yeah. do like reactions to WrestleMania 70. Like, Yeah. 
like the old times. Uh, if we're all still alive. Imagine. That would be Prime so Minister bad. of uh, the Isle of Wight, Dan Pachidi. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've separated He'll have been the embezzled for something by then. <laughs> oh. That's, That's why they like that, him over it? there. Yeah, we know he's dodgy, but he's one of our own. Just imagine he comes back looking like Tony Giangelo. <laughs> I'm in waste management. Yeah. <laughs> AW, <laughs> AW Dynamite. The super elite take on Danielson Christian Jurassic Express. The bad guys take out Christian with a big indie taker to the floor and win the match. Pinning Jun- well, I was being very abridged there, but God, there was a lot of action. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I didn't know. What, yeah, I didn't know how to really sum it up. It if was it, still shorter than a Adam Cole singles match on NXT. They all have been so far. Isn't it great? I was going to say, if you skip the Hall of Fame segment, yeah, well, that's why we did our review for this match, so sucks yeah. to be you, I guess. There you go. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Skipper. CM Punk comes out for a promo, talks about his time living in Philadelphia. Uh, the crowd wants him to wrestle. So he, No, actually, no, you're skipping the bit here. Um, he talks about how, oh, you guys want some Philly cheesecake? Or was it cheesecake? Cheese steak? steaks. And apparently some people got a bit cheesecake. weirded out because he got the two confused. You Wasn't can that? get Philadelphia cheesesteak. Uh, you idiot cheesecake see how easy it is um, and like Morrison's in that can't you I thought it was just Pretty a bit good. of a joke like uh, cheesecake yeah cheese. so like uh, people saying I don't know but Philadelphia cheese cake is a thing definitely. well Philadelphia cheese is Over a here. thing spread yeah. a bit of cheese but Philadelphia cheese steaks that it's like a, a baguette oh no I've had with, one of, oh. when I went to the arena, the arena yeah had to go the other place and you knew it was popular because the line was out the door and the people serving you like what do you want was it was it amazing you could tell why people liked it. Okay, right. Okay. It was like, you know, if people came over and had a palmer over here, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. But oh, yeah, then he went, what do you guys want me to do? Like, do you want, do you want me to buy you all a cheesesteak? You've been to Philly. Mm. You've been getting silly up in Philly. Yeah. What? <laughs> with your willy? <laughs> no, no. What's it like? Uh, I went with Kevin Ford, of Ch- the Chikara special fame, to go to the arena because I was at MAGFest, and I was like, ah, DC's not that far from Philly. So I got the train, uh-huh. which Americans, we were listening to this going, you're the train in America? I'm like, well, yes, because I couldn't drive in America. So um, the train was lovely, actually. I had to switch. It switched over and it got to, from DC to Philly, all the way around, I forget. Uh-huh. And it went, they have to switch from uh, gas to electric. You have to hook them up. It's a completely oh. different system because it's America's so weird. Wow. Um, Is Philadelphia like the Newcastle of America? Oh, yeah, because they won't shut up and the horrible people, cold. Oh, but they're very loyal. Yeah. So it was many similarities, to be honest with you. Um, I've heard this before. Because they're the, they're the crowd that, you know, booed Santa that one year. Mm. It's great. So I was like, yeah, okay, cool. But they were great at the show, mm. at the at the arena show. It was supposed to be the last ever, <laughs> I think they've done 20 last evers. Sorry, I'm not boring people here, but uh, it was supposed to be the last ever CCW show at the arena, along with the Evolve doubleheader. Where it's the one where Gargano got injured and he was out for a long period of time and really affected his career. But we didn't realize this, of course. We just thought it was a crap match, so we booed him. You, oh, you've hated Gargano <laughs> for a long time. Okay. No, no, no. I liked right. him when he was. Just, I liked him before NXT. No, I hated him before <laughs> you guys hated him. No, but he's had very good times and he just he wasn't very good here. But bless him because he did an interview with High Spots. He was like, well, he got hurt early on. But he's like, oh, it's the main event. It's the last show in the arena and all this. Uh. So he kept on trying. But there wasn't so much you could do because he was in so much pain. So we're like, boo, this sucks. Because oh, <laughs> it, it did. And uh, yeah, I think Ricochet or Chuck Taylor came out afterwards and they were telling them, shut up, he's hurt. I'm like, oh, sorry, I don't know. Anyway, sorry, this is a big ramble. I'll carry on. They need so to start doing something with Punk, though. Well, other than coming out and going like, yeah, it's me, CM Punk. Are you guys yeah. sick of this yet? I think that they're doing that on purpose, aren't they, for the first crowd that goes, yes, <laughs> then they'll know. <laughs> Again, uh, I put this on Twitter just because I thought it was a nice bit, but like if he came over here and he did a local cuisine, <laughs> like if he did like an oat cake, he was in Nottingham or whatever, there's a danger of them going, now you know what? I've got money in the bank 2012 on DVD. Can I have the Imagine oat cake? Imagine he came here and was like, I'll get you all a parmo. Right. You'd have them, wouldn't you? Straight away. Depends where yeah, from. Yeah, I, I. Depends please. where from, like, but you know. I'll get you all a Greg's pasty of your choice. And like, oh, no, that's, pff, what what is that, that though? Because I, I, when I go, I can't get just one. It has to be a one of yeah. Really? It depends on your depends on how you feel. If there's a gun to your head and you had to pick one pasty. Just one. All right, Arn Anderson. To be your pasty. Well, does sausage rolls <laughs> count as pasties? They're no. in the bake section. I would section. say no. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I can't decide between a steak bake and a sausage bean and cheese melt. That's what I that's my that's, yeah. Oh, you have to choose one. Oh, all right. Um I used to always get the the chicken bake. One. Uh, but I realized like, oh, why is it so creamy? Because of the cream, Matthew. You're supposed to avoid dairy. Stop eating these, you plank. Uh, <laughs> um, 
So I'll have the uh, steak bake. I mean, if I had to go with a gun to my head, I'd have to go at Christmas time because it is the festive oh, bake. Oh, if we're talking, count that then. Which, oh. just in case you're worried about, you know, the stocks of Christmas and all that in the news, Greg's have reassured us that the festive bakes will not be affected. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's not even meat at this point. Don't worry. Andrew, you're from Yorkshire, so you're probably like Copelands oh, or something, what are they yeah. called? What? Go for a bam cake at Copelands. Oh. At Copelands? Aye. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you like Greg's? Yeah, Greg's is buzzing. What, what are you picking? Have you got a gun uh, to your head? Before I were vegan, it would be a, a chicken bake. And chicken bake. Now I am, it's that sausage. Vegan, vegan sausage, sausage roll. Oh, oh. Bean and cheese one. Does it taste like the non? Yeah, it's buzzing. Oh, they do vegan sausage, yeah, bean yeah, and cheese yeah, ones. Really wow. Oh, the know. vegan sausage roll is lovely. Mm. From Greg's. All right. yeah. they're, they're all right, but... Again, not sound like a snob. Place around the corner to us that does those proper sausage rolls. Oh, the, the garage. Oh. Shout out to the garage. I've not had a sausage roll from the garage. I'd forgotten what proper non Greg sausage rolls tasted like. Yeah, I, I went, I'll sausage rolls, please. Yeah, it'll be 250. And in my head, I went, 250 for a sausage roll. And I'd be like, oh, that's because it's a proper one. Right. Oh, I'll definitely pay that. It is man. a fine establishment, that garage. Oh, God, I'm so hungry. So, yes. Uh, and he does the Northwest. He'll ask for a, what is it? The pie sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> the Wigan Finest. Kebab. What's that one? The Wigan Kebab. It's where you get bun, pie, bun. <laughs> <laughs> and you bite into it like a sandwich. <coughs> and <coughs> just get your jaw, I imagine. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, imagine very chewy. <coughs> yeah. What's going on in the chew around there? Our, our cuisine's awesome because Americans, they're like disgusted. The French, no the French look down on us, don't they? Do they? Aye. Escargot. Escargot. Escargot away. <laughs> Arn Anderson is in Cody's garden, burning his <laughs> suit. Cody did not know he was there. Arn? Yeah. Oh, what, what are you doing? Because Cody... he, wasn't, he wasn't like, Arn, what the hell are you doing down there? He's like, Arn? Yeah, because he's super cool, Cody Rhodes. What are you doing? And, he's, on, like, and he's like, and I'm an Anderson, I've got to turn on you. <laughs> his massive house with the staircase down to the garden. What a dick. Hang on, Arn, I have to go, I have to come down with my velour outfit. <laughs> Two oh. seconds, I'm on floor oh, right. five. He's just hanging around the house, isn't he? He's caught me in my lovely in three-piece his... suit. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Bill Gates. I'll be with you in a second. You know, oh, so good. Weird. Where are you? Are you near the Bentley? Oh, God. oh hello, Arn, my friend. <laughs> Cody confronts him and Arn says he might as well paint a star on his face again. Which I, I, Cody seems to dislike Stardust, right? Are we? Does he know that a lot of people really like that gimmick? Oh, did they? I thought Stardust was great. I, we, I empathize with him. A lot of people like my gimmick. I hated it. Oh, from <laughs> <laughs> he slaps Cody and makes him burn his tie. Cannot uh, make it exactly. Yeah. And he says, "Next week I'm coming for your tattoo." <laughs> Feral Arn Anderson is the next evolution in whatever Arn Glock Arn Anderson that we saw last week. Armed Anderson. What's next? When Anderson he's got a transformer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a transformer that looks like Arn Anderson a bit. He just turns into a really Cody, old car. You suck. <laughs> I hate you. A 1984 Thunderbird. <laughs> it's Optimus Prime, but with the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Optimus Prime, eh? Yeah, hey, well done, mate. I knew that from uh, Katy Perry. Is it Katy Perry with the song where she references Optimus Prime? And Katy Kanye, Perry is how you know Transformers. Kanye West out of it now, 10 years ago or something. Oh, what's, that, what's that rhyme sound like? You're cool. What is that, Jack? I'm sure Kanye West got a rhyme where it's like something about Optimus Prime, and he says Prime like that. Prime. Uh, I don't know. Is it like I'm in my Optimus Prime? Something like He's that. in his Prime like Optimus or something. Yeah, you go, like yeah. Sorry to give him his name properly. Now it's Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. He's changed his name to Ye, hasn't he? Like Yeah. We Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye West, Optimus Prime. Has it gone through yet? Is it? I, don't, I, might, I might be chatting absolute bollocks here, but I'm sure it's. I can't find it. I can picture Kanye West off yeah, just saying Optimus Prime. I don't There's know. There's a lyric that was there must popular. Be. There must no. be. There was a lyric that was popular about 10 years ago where they referenced Optimus Prime. So if you know oh. what it was, let me know. Well, his name's Ye. Well, like the dinosaur. I'm sure they've <laughs> I'm sure they've changed his he's applied to change his name to Ye. <laughs> Ye. Like that dinosaur. Yeah. Yay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm more proud. <coughs> <coughs> of you that you know that that dinosaur ye, that I you only know that because of Richard we used to oh, do the intros God. for WTF it's the first video in a playlist of weird YouTube videos oh okay. it's called like you will never get through this lip playlist oh <laughs> my, my friend used, used to play that yeah so weird my friend the one where he goes relax 
Det gik i... Og så James. Nå. Oh. Has it dropped? Yes, has it dropped? Hmm? James? No. It's Patty. I don't know. Patty's dropped for that. Easy. Oh, James, my old school. Yeah, the guy you made a career off, Morgan. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sonic Sorry, Guevara James. keeps his promise to Fuego del Sol and buys him a new truck. A big one. I don't know, like... Fuego del Sol put up that truck of his own volition, and he lost. And so somehow to buy him a new one. That kills the pals. Yeah, that, but that's... The, Dwayne The Rock no, Johnson, but you don't, right? you don't gamble if you don't... You're not prepared Dwayne to lose Dwayne The Rock it. Johnson is sponsored by... Uh, which I think is a Ford or something like that. So Dwayne The Rock Johnson often gets, like, camera people a Ford, or he got his mom a Ford, because he's sponsored by Ford and has given them for free. Oh. So Sammy's doing that. I don't know if Sammy's sp- sponsored by Chevrolet or whoever that... Okay, but made by. I don't know if your mate willingly put up his his car and then lost it. Like you wouldn't give another car. Would I mean, you? we would. We go out, oh, you dickhead. What are you doing there? But Sammy Guevara is a millionaire TNT oh, champion. The yeah. type. He's one of the four pillars. He's friends with losers. Yeah, yeah. they're doing the four pillars thing. Uh, but like, who's Tally? So who is the four pillars? It's Sammy, MJF, Darby, Darby and uh, Jungle Boy. Jungle oh, Boy, Jungle Boy yeah, right. So. It's weird because like didn't that get Nate? Actually, I don't want to talk about. Let's move on. Um, so also speaking of which, CM Punk gave some kid his shoes. Thousand dollars. Yeah, was it someone on Twitter? Probably C Hawk or someone funny like that said. Yeah, CM Punk was so embarrassed he got fleeced by him so much he just wanted rid of them. <laughs> he watched the video. Yeah, yeah, he goes to the shoe shop and the, I don't know if peer it's pressured and pe- pressured by the fellow that you've come to my shop and you've looked at my trainers now you must buy a couple of pairs. She's like, eh. I like Vans. They're skate shoes. Oh, I, I They're guess uncomfortable I'll... as hell, but they look great. Vans are comfortable. Are they? Get, get you the get the cu- what is it called? Like comfy cushion? I've got a pair on now. Have you? Oh, oh lovely. Show, you get the, show foot. You get the comf- is it comf- what do you? Yeah, I've got these. Comfy cushions? Oh. oh. Hi. Oh, get, okay. The, the, they've got the horror cool. collection out now, and uh, I've been interested in buying one, but I've already got the, the skinny Chuck Taylors at home. Honestly, if you get the... They're not that fun. If you get the comfy cush or something they're called... The version of Vans. Uh, once you wear them in, they're like oh, slippers. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for heads up, pal. But I, the, he goes to this shop and looks at his shoes and he's like, oh, I like Vans. Oh, Jordans were nice. I couldn't afford them when I was a kid. I had Beetle Bops yeah, or something, like, whatever yeah. they're called. <laughs> Lund- Ample, uh, Ample. What were they called? Um... It's band with a B, didn't it? Yeah. Bishop. British Nice. Bishop Brennan's. Auckland. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he goes, oh, you've got to buy. Oh, so you've looked around now, got to go and buy some. One pair, which he gave away to the kid, cost a thousand. The next pair, which were the same, but the colours were switched around. The red, and, the red and the black, eight hundred dollars. You imagine well, paying that much for a pair of shoes? Uh, no, and I've a good punk, so I think <laughs> I'm going to look like a right dick if I don't give these to a small child, aren't I? And it's yeah. good because then Jim Ross is like, "It's all right, kid, you'll grow into them." <laughs> <laughs> I walk aside, then we check his shoe size. He's like, "No, punk, I don't. Well, thanks anyway." Uh, so. Sammy Guevara takes on the new uh, member of the AEW roster, Bobby Fish. Hi. And they're like, he kept on talking about the forbidden door being opened. No, Bobby, you're unemployed. Uh, MLW? He's in the Opera Cup? Oh. Oh. I thought AEW was just like, yeah, we can use him if you're an MLW. We don't care. Yeah, I don't think MLW. I don't think MLW is a full time. It's a revolving door. Yeah. It uh, was a good match, though. Bobby kept up with him, which is... I was wondering if he was going to be able to do so, because I think that Sammy Guevara was, he wasn't even born when Bobby Fish started wrestling. <laughs> Sammy Guevara's older than you think. He's been wrestling for it's 11 weird. years. Yeah, to mention that yeah. on commentary, and I was like, hang on. I thought he was, like, 22. No. I like, I like the story of the match. Like yeah. the, the match-based veteran just keep scuppering the flippy attempts by the flippy boy. Mm. Oh, a tech dude versus flippy dude's always good. Yeah. Uh, like Malengo yeah. Mysterio. Oh, you hear all the Bobby's injuries and whatnot during NXT, and you think, oh, my God, Sammy's going to kill him here. Yeah. But no, he kept up, and it was fine. Good for him. Good match. Yeah. But then afterwards, he's attacked by Dan Lambert's lads, <laughs> including, the, including Junior Dos Santos. And Jericho Paige Van and Jake Zan was Haker. there as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Go and on. then another one I had to recognize. So there's Junior Dos Santos, Paige Van Zandt, Another one. Another lad. Some hard people from who trade in Miami. Yeah, some some really weird people be showing up on AEW as yeah. like a mid card kind of behind the main people. Act. Like, Santos, wait, wait, these are really big names. Junior Dos Santos is a former UFC heavyweight yeah. champion. Like, it, it's just so it's very it's odd, weird. isn't it? Jericho and Jake Hager make the save. Dan Lambert gets on the mic and says that in Miami, home of America, top team. He wants a six man tag team match. The Inner Circle versus Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Junior with Jorge Masvidal <laughs> in their corner. Jericho's mic breaks. 
to Venge. But sadly, they find him another one. Um, yeah, again, this feud continues to be bizarre because Dan Lambert, again, every week, you flippy kids and your flippy dooby doo boos and your MSKs and your yeah. likability <laughs> and your tryhards and your... Chris Jericho defending the rights of the kids everywhere. But now, now Sammy's in it. You're like, oh, okay, one step closer to this. Yeah. Yeah, I agree totally. What he talks about, you assume Jake Hager would be a favourite of his. Yeah. He's talked about the 80s yeah. and whatnot all the time, isn't he? And, and he's big a lad. MMA man. Uh, yeah. Fire line, though, again from Big Dan. The balls of Jericho are getting a bit too big for your britches. The balls of Jericho. They love balls in this comedy, don't balls, they? balls, man. It's great, fantastic. Kenny No Balls Omega. I'm like, all right. Jesus. That caught on, didn't it? No Balls well, Kenny. Yeah. It kind of like, I'm going to say this, then pause, and then the crowd are going to go, hey, but, hey, hey. But that was this week. Wherever, wherever it was this week, the crowd were fantastic. Oh, they were nice. <laughs> I just remember when The Rock turned up after years away and went like, Baron Corbin, you've got a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> <laughs> STD. Poor. STD. Oh, don't spontaneously do it. <laughs> Tony Schiavone is in the ring to talk about AW. We've already done that. Uh, JR does a sit-down interview with Darby Allen. We talk about the meaning behind his face paint tattoos. Darby's not Jim's. Yeah, I thought that the sentence pal. was a bit confusing. Darby's what? Because I wrote Darby's, Jim and Darby. Darby's uh, face paint tattoos. Jim and Darby Jim's. sit down and talk <laughs> that, about... That, that's next week. Talk about the history behind... I don't know. I can see paint. Jim getting face tattoos now after the way he said, arse. <laughs> oh, anyway. So fantastic. We'll pack later on, he's like, the bastard. <laughs> Darby says he'll beat MJF, the other pillar, because he's seen men like him a thousand times. Back in the arena, Darby beats uh, Nick Camaro. QT Marshall hits the diamond cutter on Sting after the match, who absolutely no sells it and hits the Scorpion Death Drop. The one place where it's fine. Go on, yeah. gonna sneeze. Elephant, elephant, elephant. Going through tables by Sting, not fine. No selling it. No selling a, de- a diamond cutter from QT. Fine, because he's rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Q- QT getting beat up by people every week is a, is a good role for him. Yeah. Shivani is interviewing Dante Martin in the ring. He talks about holding his own with the likes of Kenny Omega. Says he'll face anybody. I will be careful what you wish for because the lights go out. And Malachi Black is in the ring. He missed Dante and hits a black mass before saying the House of Black accepts. Mm. And I also like it last week as well. Like Malachi was like, ah, I'm, I'm done antagonizing the Roses. They've got, yeah. they've got their own issues now. Of course now. he is after Arn. <laughs> yeah, I didn't thought about that. I was yeah. very placid until last week, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, oh. I was out right, teasing Cody in his stupid tattoo, but now Arn's going to shoot us. I'm all right. I'll tell Danny instead. I just can't believe that. I was right in the end. Tom was wrong. Just got to mention that again because <laughs> it's easier now that he's not here <laughs> to get a word in. Um, Sorry, who's Tom Campbell? <laughs> um, he's the one that talks over Jack all the time. <laughs> oh, what's the? Um, oh my oh, god, what's the title of the word. video called? The, the we, we gave, gave Bray, Bray Wyatt, Wyatt the best send off from WWE or whatever it's called. The booking video. Yes, cheers to Dan Heppel for an excellent job on that. Cheers to Ross but it gets, for judging. That oh, wasn't me. It was my cousin. Judge Ross. Sorry. Different person. But it gets heated towards the oh, end. Oh, man, the fix was in. Jack's trying to make a closing statement. I haven't seen sta- this. Jack's trying to make a closing statement like you do in court. Yeah. And uh, Tom just kept talking over him. So I had to shout at him. Get some decorum. Ross, would, Ross was hitting the thing, the gavel. Yeah. And uh, to everybody, university, that means it's time to be quiet now. But Tom would wait for everyone to be quiet and then start talking again. And he was just like, no, the rules of the courtroom. Andrew yeah. revealed afterwards that he was legitimately a bit, ooh, uh, missus. Not ooh, uh, missus. Uh, my, my heart was beating so fast. Because I shouted. Oh. Genuinely petrified. I shouted oh. a bit too what? loud. You've been chased by the, the Hell's I Angels. <laughs> you got flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, More well, like Tom Campbell. <laughs> Probably, we did a I'm going to have to watch this video now. It sounds amazing. He did a bit of a joke where he went to shake my hand. I don't know if it got kept in, and he went to shake my hand and then went, way like that. And I was he like, punched him. I was already fuming by this point. And then it, we did a little joke. He like, no, come on. And then did a real handshake. And I'm worried that I might have squeezed his hand like too aggressively. <laughs> Because I'm worried, so I'm worried that it crossed the line into real beef when it was actually active You worked beef. yourselves into I did, a shoot. Did, yeah, absolutely did. Oh my god! But I'm worried. But I don't think it did. I don't think I did squeeze his hand too hard. But I'm looking back, if I did, I'll feel like such a knob. And this was great because, like, last time with, the, with Tom was in here, uh, we did that Dave Meltzer quiz, and that got cut out because me and me and Tom making ourselves laugh because that's what we do. Well, Tom put and it on Jack's, Twitter. Jack's like this. Tom put it on Twitter. Oh, you put that bit just, on Twitter, just making me complete. Like stone I, I, because I was trying to read it and then you made a joke which was a good joke it was Dave Meltzer's an amateur what and you went journalist yeah. which was good that is good that. <laughs> thank you that's the appropriate laugh 
Tom laughed. Tom laughed for about oh, a minute, a minute, a minute <laughs> and a half. Like <laughs> I was trying to read the next bit, and he was his laugh was subsiding, and then I'd start to read the next question. He go, <laughs> so obviously my face was like a smacked off. By but the way, lovely, I, ma- I love Tom. Like, I, can't, I feel bad <laughs> yeah, now. Anyway, I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the whole video back yet, so I hope what we're referencing still got left in. But uh, at the start of the video, Tom's like, "I won the last time." See all the comments on the last video; they all say, "I won." No, they don't. <laughs> it's, <laughs> pretty, it's pretty them. even. That was the good thing about. Like, I picked um, the first one to win was you, um, and there was a fair few <laughs> comments going, "Yeah, Jax is the best one," and there was like an equal amount of comments saying, "Oh, I thought Sam's was the best one," and then. Again, equal amount of comments. I thought Tom was the best one. Tom's Tom at it. the start, he's turned to a bright dick. <laughs> yeah. So he deserves this little segment of the podcast. Oh, I couldn't really believe it. it. I flicked on thinking, oh, let's have a nice watch of the best content we do here at Cult Olic. And Tom's like, oh, all the comments saying I won last time. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. No. It's your job. <laughs> Anyway, so, anyway but I no, I, that video has been in the description or something. So I can't believe, can I actually can't believe after the the weeks and weeks of taunting from Tom that I was actually right about the Cody thing and that Malachi Black did just beat him again. So I think this has been a mm. lesson in learning to back yourself when you really believe something. <laughs> I do. I went With his hand on his heart as you said <laughs> that. Yeah. Really so believe. kids, don't give up. You too can predict what's going to happen in the wrestling sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Stark is out here with the FTW title and says he's disappointed that Brian Cage didn't show up tonight. He was even going to challenge him to a Philadelphia street fight. Lots of butter. Cage arrives and batters Starks until Hobbs and Hook pull him out the ring to safety. Yeah, Brian Cage got a, hey, he's actually still employed, Pop. But you Starks hate, and the rest of the team... Ta- no, no, AEW hate him. Uh, well, uh. And I'm being paid attention because he's paying attention to things like this. Many, many a, a joke said in jest. No, mm. wait. Many a truth said in jest, Thank, thank you, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the fact that people love Ricky Starks and Hobbs and Hook. Yeah. He's got nothing. This, se- this segment was pointless. I mean, it was nice to get the, the FTW title out in Philadelphia because of the history Yay. and whatnot. Cheap pop for that, but other than that, it didn't out, did it? Oh, there was fan cams of uh, Tasmania's entrance to uh, War Machine by Kiss, his first theme in EC Dub. Ah, uh, that's yeah. nice. A nice little nod. <laughs> Oh, and someone, someone took a photo, that's the, and also a video as well, that uh, Taz has a little orange pencil case next to him. He's doing his little commentary thing. It's not a glasses case. No, like, well, maybe it's that. But like, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to make, yeah. yeah. make notes. Let me get my... Little, my orange pedra- pe- pedra- yeah, my, like, pencil case. <laughs> my HB pen, you know, which is also orange. <laughs> little orange compass in there. <laughs> that's the best thing. Wait a minute, Excalibur, I need a shop. <laughs> you know those flexi rulers that have like an orange one. Oh, See, a book comes over do you have what those ones that rolled up? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, I broke mine. <laughs> Unbreakable. He's got one of those pens with ten different colours on, but they're all, <laughs> they're, all, they're all just orange. <laughs> There's one black and like loads of orange. Oh man, he, he this is a, my favourite orange. He buys a pack of highlighters, but throws away the yeah. orange. Yeah, yeah, keeps yeah. the orange one. <laughs> it's so Taz's gimmick throughout his career has just been likes the colour orange. <laughs> Oh, he is just an orange man oh. living in an orange world. <laughs> oh man, he's hey, orange. About orange, you glad to see me? <laughs> he's orange, dabadi dabadai. Oh, oh, face her. He what grew... does Taz's house look like? <laughs> no. Oh, no, has he got an orange house with an orange window? Uh. Oh. <laughs> orange is so cold. <laughs> Higuru Shida faces Serena Deeb, looking for her 50th win in AEW. And they've actually got a trophy to celebrate her 50th Love win it. in AEW. Deeb wins instead. Yeah. And the trophy they made. She hits a Love it. it. Yes. Again, always love seeing Deeb on AEW. Yeah. Especially cool. ruining the hearts and dreams of Higuru Shida. <laughs> I was shocked at what little reaction she got when she came out. Because I think she's, she's the best. Proven herself to be up there with the elite. She should no, be no, no, in the elite. the elite. Oh, okay. There's no room for women in the elite. What are you talking about? It's AEW you're talking about. Matt Jackson's there. Is he a woman? Or? I don't know. Oh, okay. Darby <laughs> Allen is ambushed and beaten down by masked men backstage. <laughs> Elsewhere, Leo Rush says he likes Dante Martin, but if he's getting beat up, sorry, going up against my guy Black, maybe he needs some help. Does he know a dude? And then Dr. Luther. Who, <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. But who cares? The Casino Ladder Match, the second anniversary of AEW, could do something special. It's a big old schmoz of a ladder match. Pac and Orange Cassidy start off like, oh, remember their little feud? Yes. Yes, a little minutiae to it. Again, I've forgotten about Pac 
slowly realizing his body language and his face so animated. Oh, well, it's this guy. Orange Cassidy, yeah. he's, he's a little get, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> so like, slowing down and he's doing the that during the international. Love that. Love Vance Archer coming out and throwing some dude at Andrade. And I'm just looking and going, oh, well, sorry. He didn't come out with this match looking very good, though. Two separate occasions. He had about half an hour to climb the ladder. He just sort of stood there going, <laughs> it's going to look good. Aye. Just thought, yeah. oh, climb, no. the la- climb the ladder, will you? <laughs> Don't be sitting on the ladder, man. <laughs> they had a lovely sunset flip on the pack. Uh, there was the two there. big falls, weren't there? There was Andrade's then, out the ring to the floor, which was horrible. And the mystery, mystery man. No way, yeah, the Matt Hardy, because yeah. he's been very, a bit vocal on Twitter, because people are going, why are you in this other match? You're old and stuff. And he just goes, yeah, it's got the biggest pop. Did the, <laughs> still did the leg drop off the thing through a table, which I'm like, is your the, pelvis like fused in, to your spine? Yeah, like, <laughs> good God. And it's like, wow, what, what else could happen? Hangman Page. <laughs> the right choice. <laughs> yep. He's back. He came back. Boom. He gave Pack the finish off the top of the ladder. I oh died. my god! I thought he died. Which was like, oh, oh my Anybody god. else take that move? I'm like the deed. I thought he's dead. Pack, it's like, I'd be alright. Shout out to man on Twitter who put a big thread. I've forgotten this handle completely. Uh, put a big thread on Twitter about the the arc of Hangman. Oh yes, that's the start. That yeah. was very good. The good those the people who pay attention all the yeah. time. Yes, it's like previously on AEW. So worth a read if you can find that account. <laughs> Yeah. He's best. back, he's got the Dark Order. Like, what's going to happen now is win the title. Oh, looking forward. I think the best thing AEW ever did, was, or like the big turning point in that story, was like when Hangman cost the Bucks against FTR, but then they didn't fully turn him. They just made him feel really guilty and sad. Yeah. Because the fans wouldn't have liked, the fans wanted the Bucks to be the heels of the story. They were being dicks to him. He yeah. had a drinking problem and they were like, oh, look at you. You're crap, you. Mm-hmm. And I think originally we were meant to think Hangman was the bad guy. I'm so glad they didn't go that way. Well, it was there something uh, like last week or the week before where they said Tony Khan is now in charge of all the stories rather than have all these wrestlers and people have their own direction. <laughs> Tony Khan. God, man. you can tell. What a guy. Because now suddenly a lot of stuff's <clears throat> a lot more focused. Tony got Khan. A lot more direction than just, we'll just book all our individual little things in every segment and maybe Hangman Page is a heel and maybe he's not. Do, 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 something, something. I've been watching Rose to the Top. I know, I was just about to mention that. Uh, I'll try watching the first Tony, episode and I went, this is not mine. We'll thing. talk about Brian big flappy cage <laughs> there's Tony he's a flapper the, he's, he is the incredible flap yeah. <laughs> I'd say he, he's yeah. massively flappy flap Jackson <laughs> <laughs> new flap <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's hardcore when he's flapping but, hey I've uh, this idea we should turn it no it was no, this, no. Oh, okay cool they were, uh, highlighting the segment Killian between... and flappy <laughs> <laughs> oh just so, talk over no, him. Make, make like Tom and talk over they were highlighting the segment with um uh, a go go and Cody with the weigh in, mm. which was crap. <laughs> we all know that. Yeah. It was terrible. Oh, I saw the bits where they were, they were roasting it on the, the previews. Yeah. Uh, the backstage is like Tony Khan's like, wrap these guys the F up. Yeah. And he's like just shouting at Brandy, like, what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> if I was one of these big wrestlers, I'd turn around and go, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't because he's paying me loads of money as yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. But it is nice to see he's not just because he obviously at the start of AEW you, you hear about the wrestlers having roles as EVPs and whatnot. You just imagine like Tony being little Tony that he is with the money. So like, oh, but I would rather do it this way. But it's not as nice as yeah, he's right, right, right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. Go on, Tony. Yeah. 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 Or maybe Tony. it's that. Yeah, you guys can you can have your own direction storylines. Like he he he, and he's like, yeah, these are rubbish. It sh- shows them like so. Who who <laughs> young books? Are you heel or face? Um. um I'll be booking things <laughs> now. Cool. Just give me just enough rope for Tony to go, nah, I think I'll book this. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Go on, Tony. Go on, Tony. Go on, Tony. Hey, Hangman Page coming in, win the ladder match, getting the shot. Well done, Tony. He's going to win the, win the belt in the last show of the year, isn't he? Sure he is. Sure he is. <laughs> sure he is. Sure. Thank you for the fiver. <laughs> and that's that, that was it? That is that long, God, that was a long bit, a uh, long week of wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> ah, time to have a little old look in the mail bag. Oh, my phone. Dear Cultaholic folks, as a pro wrestling fan of 20 something years and an award nominated writer, ooh, ooh. I feel it would be remiss of me not to submit my entry for your definitely legitimate, definitely not already forgotten about call to arms for a cultaholic. Poet Lariat. The oh. show themselves. This is from a few weeks ago. Great. Please see below for my submission entitled This Noble Art. CV available on request. Publishing rights through my agent. 
Yours in perpetuity, David Shopland. Oh, all right, here we go. This noble art. Burked between the tops of tents, the noble art began. Interlocked sand swords they fence. Two foes, more beast than man. Oh. The grease paint stunk, the crowd did roar. But little did they know. The fight they clamoured non-stop for, in truth, was just a show. <sighs> and so this art, it grew and grew, and as the years flew by, until from out of nowhere, Q, a rather special guy. At tears by any other name, perhaps would fight as well. But this Lou, he changed the game with words like bump and sell. More and more, this art took flight. The tricks were getting old. Enter a man, his prefix Mac, to spin them into gold. The territories grew apace as time went marching on. And names like Rhodes and Flair and Race were chanted like a song. But that Mac man, he bore a child and that child did the same. Released into the wrestling wild, the man that changed the game. Across the land his foes did fall, no match was Joe cold, and so to kiss his feet they crawled to be brought into the fold. Oh. From a sideshow to the mainstream, the merchandise was rife, displaying numbers 316. It touched almost every life. Oh. But the bubbles had to pop, as bubbles tend to do, <laughs> and suddenly what was on top now seemed almost taboo. I like that. For years the Savage wilderness Tuesday. became home to this noble art. Without a finger to place blame, t'was hard to press, restart. Without a word of warning, though a man Chicago made, ignited those who'd long ago seen all their passion fade. Oh. And from his rise, thanks to his heart, more smaller beasts prevailed. A different kind of noble art was rewriting the old tale. And thanks to all technology, the people weren't alone. They shared in joyous revelry as you beamed into their homes. And here we are, a strange old breed, still roaring like before. Who knows where next the story leads? We just can't wait for more. David Shovlin, take a bow. Genuinely fantastic. Good God. I don't know what I was expecting from the poet laureate thing that I said <laughs> very briefly a while ago. But that was not it. Fan fantastic, mate. Yeah. Wow. David's got bars. There's like a few, few people resent oh. theirs in in this week's mailbag, but I thought that. For my turn, we do one a week. I think. My per yeah. If you want to send them in, I'll try and pick one a week here. Yeah. Please put poet Larry in the email so we know. Um, yeah. Now, now that Ross has got the heads up, it's like a lot of weird poems last week. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I've got to tell you. Sorry. Mate. But yeah. Also, is it prefix? 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 Is a prefix? For what? Um, like the bit at the front. Bit at the front of the name, like muck. Mm. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. Wonderful. Oh, cool. I that, I got elements of Robert Frost's sense of rhythm. Oh. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises yeah. to keep and miles to go before I, like I sleep. Like by any of the name. Yes. Like, oh. I thought you Wolf. meant Montez Ford at first. I was like, where's he going? <laughs> Montez Ford changed the game. <laughs> I mean, he is good. Right. He's really yeah. good. Ah. Oh. Well, let's we should have started with that. To be honest. Where do we, we go from there? Yeah. Now. Down. Uh, let's see. Good day, cultaholic lads. Are there any errors in wrestling you wish you knew more about? For example, mine would be the King's Road era, All Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. Thanks for everything you guys do. Cheers from Coburg, Ontario, Canada, Mac. Thank you, Mac. P.S. Matthew, have you heard the new Wild Hearts album? Wow, a guy from Coburg, Ontario does about the Wild Hearts. That's awesome. No, I haven't. But thank you for the reminder. Because now I have to go home and listen to them all from the beginning to the very end. It's like popping open a Cala Pringles. It's no, I didn't, not. Uh, thank you very much. What era of wrestling would you like to know about that you don't already know, Jack? I go through little phases where I wish I knew more about certain bits. So, like, I told you recently I was watching some of the first ever PWG shows, um, which were a thing, uh. a thing. Um, but uh, with a few dodgy characters on it as well, to be fair. Well, one in particular. But, um, but sometimes the one at the minute that I wish that I knew more about, but the the on-demand subscriptions are just too... I can't justify buying it, is um, early Ring of Honor. Like, uh. like early Ring of Honor, like the start. Because they had like, it's like, who's turning up for this indie show? AJ Styles and Brian Danielson and stuff. And they just have like 30 minutes, two out of three falls. It just seems crazy. But, um, so that would be mine at the minute, Ring of Honor. But uh, I've also read Chris Charlton's excellent book on the history of New Japan, which taught me mm. a lot. And that was very, very good as well. Um, so yeah, just whatever you fancy at the time. At the minute for me, it's early Ring of Honor. Nice. You got any Ross? 
Golden generation, new generation. Don't know enough about it. That's it. Fair enough. Golden generation. Late 80s. 80s. Is that what it's called? The, gold yeah, gen- the golden, golden generation. Gen- golden golden generation. generation. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Like the Hogan. The Golden Years? Your, Hulk, your Hogan's, your, your yeah, yeah, Flair's, yeah, yeah, your Pipers. I was just like the Hulkamania era, but... Yeah, that's just... Well. Yeah. Potato, yeah. potato. Rock and, rock yeah. and wrestling. I uh, definitely Rock was. and wrestling. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Did a, did a tier list with Tom about the 80s wrestlers, and it was just an hour of me sat there going, Tom knows things I should know. <laughs> so it was just an hour of Tom talking, which I guess is what would happen anyway, because we know he talks over. Yeah. Good. And, and now, and now of Tom <laughs> talking, what do you say? I, How are you, Tom? I didn't realize that Tom had been in this wrestling game as long as he had, because he. Mm. Uh, I know you always referenced the Biggin and Wigan that he, the infamous show that he commented, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't realize that he commentated on it. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. I didn't realize that's why he mentioned it all the time. I thought he, it was just an infamous, like funny, like Heroes of Wrestling, like an yeah. infamously bad show. But no, he commented on the Biggin and Wigan. Yeah, wow. it's it's fascinating. It's like, wait, what? Like, you, you did that? You had a life before I met you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you see someone, if you watch an early PWG, and you see, wait, hang on, isn't that Simon Gotch in the first PWG show? Like, it's just weird seeing, like, little the characters first, like that. Like, I didn't know you were there. It's such a weird... Ross, I don't know how to explain this, but the first PWG show, Excalibur's commentating on it, but is also <laughs> in the show. And he doesn't pretend that he's not in the booth or whatever. He commentates going like, great sense on there by me. It's just, like, really <laughs> weird. <laughs> Yeah. I was trying to think, speaking of that though, something I'd like to know more about and so many people talking about is, um, was it Noah's American Dojo in the same area as PWG? Okay. Where they'd have guys like Gosh and whatever working, but Daniel Bryan was there. And he, oh, what was the guy, Daniel, he roommate with someone who was in UFC. Oh. Oh, damn it, who is it? It's only, no, I don't want to search for Daniel Bran. Paddy Pimbley. Oh, ah, <laughs> scousers can't get knocked out. You see, I saw a picture of him like from this week. I'm sure it was like a month out from his last fight. <laughs> the amount of weight he's put on, sensational. Oh, really? The, he's just one of them, like Ricky Hatton. Like, just... honestly, the rate that fighters go up and down in weight can't yeah. be. I mean, I know it's a big issue. That final week be shouldn't be allowed. I don't think. No, cutting weight and. No, I mean it's all very scary. The lengths I have to go to to do it. Uh, I can't find thing but it was one of these things that Dan Ryan offhandedly man- mentions oh yeah I room with he was like this very famous UFC star right and all this other stuff and it just seems like a lot of <coughs> stuff like wait there's this dojo in m- the middle of nowhere in the early 2000s and no one talks about that it's like oh okay there could be some stories there <laughs> I like hearing about when was it Gargano or someone someone talked about going over to Dragon Gate because they were wrestling for Dragon Gate USA yeah. and they went over to like Japanese to main main roster Dragon yeah, Gate yeah, yeah. and uh said that it was just a weird experience and that the dojo flooded and that they nearly got left behind, like all the Japanese lads left. Yeah. And they were like, someone maybe. should warn the Americans that the dojo's yeah. flooding. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I'm trying to get some... Joseph Weirdness has done some good videos on um, King's Road and all Japan. Yes, yes. And also, to tie it in device, they did the FMW episode. And I've not seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read the reviews and summaries, and again, because I've watched every episode of the 50-part History of FMW series. Oh, really? I'm like, 54? Yeah, because he does FMW every year. Right. And then he's like, well, yeah, all these guys who left FMW because he died, went on to do these things. Lots of lots and lots of drama and stories involved. So to put the history of FMW and the story of it into 45 minutes was like, okay. It wasn't really one incident. Like, oh, I was just like, yeah, we had barbed wire and it looked cool. I've seen the start of it where Terry Funk's being introduced and he goes like, I'm Terry Funk. I can't do this one. Yeah. And he's oh. like, I'm the Terry Funk, I'm the basically the biggest badass ever. I'm Terry Funk. And then it's a bit of an awkward silence. And he goes, no, ask me some question. Yeah. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> they make follies on there. And he's like, yeah, I only wrestled for FMW twice. <laughs> Hi. But yeah, Bahu has a great series on YouTube and a Facebook page and everything like that. Just weird and stuff. All Japan. And even such periods that Colorholics covered. Like Ooh. FC Dub, Tom Campbell, that lad and your friend, um, did a bit, lovely video covering a lot of uh, the crazy period of the other other developmental. Mm. I love Tom's um, curiosities. Mm. Um, I, don't, I love Tom's curiosities. I love his series called <laughs> called Wrestling Curiosities. But um, when I went for my second vaccine jab, right, you know, when you go in and there's someone who checks your details first before, not the person who actually gives you the jab or the actual medical person, like the, just the person on the desk who just like kind of goes like, oh, so you're coming in for your second one, it's Pfizer, blah, blah. And who should it be? But former WCPW referee, uh, Chris, so he was. He Chris was Thompson. also an FMW. Chris Thompson, no, he wasn't. But he was saying, <laughs> he was saying as well. He was like, I don't really keep up to date with like modern like WWE or whatever. But 
he was saying like he the stuff he watches the most on our channel was um the like the historic content and stuff so i'm pleased we do that big shout out to tom and justin henry as well who is an encyclopedia of historic wrestling knowledge yeah mm. jack so, atkins also writes a few and jack atkins as yeah, well there's, some people actually watch wrestling here yeah it's good isn't it? yeah, yeah. i'll watch they're all over 35 like <laughs> 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 miserable <laughs> Well, well, I'm, I'm joking. That's, broken down. They go hand in hand, those two fights. <laughs> Hello, podcast lads. This is going to be a long email. That doesn't sound like our people. No. Uh, so I will try and keep the introduction brief as we hear the elephants going above us. Thank you for all you do. The podcast has been a highlight of my week since the first one way back in January 2018. That can't be right. Mm. Good God. I enjoy yeah. the constant local references. Yay. Hey. Hey. It helped me learn a lot about where you all live and work. Okay. I've been tracking data about the Coholic Hall of Fame <sighs> and the podcast in general since December 2020 because, well, I was bored. Here are some statistics, <laughs> hopefully different than the last ones you received. Oh. Nice, I love these. As of this email, there are 197 episodes on the podcast feed on YouTube, 194 regular episodes, and three special episodes. What were the three special episodes? He's included the WCW, uh, WCPW review as one oh, of okay. those. So whatever they are. Oh, okay. I don't know what other things we've done. We did one of them. We did the culties, maybe the mukbang. I mean, we've, done, we've done three. Oh. We've done three culties. Oh, the culties. I don't know. We've done three. Yeah, we've done three of them. Oh, well, maybe he's not counting the WCPW oh. retrospective. Oh no, he says. Oh right, okay. Oh, Matthew has been on ninety-five percent of all episodes. Whoa, with one hundred and eighty-eight appearances, followed closely by Jack at one hundred and seventy-nine. Oh. Then Ross one hundred and sixty, slagging. Jack is the only regular to appear in all three of the special episodes on the feed. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, there have to date only been eight unique hosts with Andrew Hodkinson being the latest addition to the rotation. Aww. Can we do this? Because I, I, I couldn't think of the last one. So there's the three of us. There's Andrew, Sam, Tom, Adam. I'm on seven now. Andrew. No. And one more. Wait. Who's the eighth? Owen. Owen? Owen's Did not been on it. No. Who is the eighth? I couldn't think. I think this one of the questions. Jen? Quiz. Has she done one? Has Jen done one? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't remember that. Who is it? Beats me. <laughs> we should know this. Yeah, Richard? we should. Richard? No, Tubman hasn't. Tubman hasn't done one. No. He's too busy doing stuff behind the camera. Aye. We don't know. Me. How great is that? Ross, Matthew, yeah. Andrew, yeah. Pachiti, yeah. Tom, yeah. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> sure it's not one. We haven't sacked anybody, have we? No? no. Well, we have, but then... <laughs> hmm. Who? Uh, let's move on. What? what? They have the date... Oh, I've read that. Uh, have you done one in character, uh, Adam Ross? Pichini has appeared... Oh, Puppet Jack. That can't <laughs> be. Can't be. <laughs> Adam Pichini has appeared the most of all substitute hosts at 32 times, one of them being the WCBW special. Okay. The average start time... <laughs> the average start time with all the fame segments is around 18 minutes 32 seconds <laughs> that's class that's, that's longer that's than I thought start. that's longer than I thought of the regular hosts Ross has a dominant winning percentage at 42 yeah we know this with Mafu at 27% read out properly I didn't hear what you what percentage 42 ridiculous <laughs> Matthew at 27%, followed closely by two time DDT Iron Man <laughs> heavy metal weight champion Jack right. at 26. In 2021, Matthew was the tightest winning percent of 16 wins out of 38. Tight. 42%. I think that reflects Matthew's change in strategy when it comes to the Hall of Fame. I know he keeps going for dead people. Yeah. I know. I really got cheap. <laughs> I or, wouldn't realise at the time thinking, like this will be good. The and then next week it's like, what a cheap pick. The NHS. <laughs> Definitely really picked the NHS. Shop, shop workers. <laughs> at the height of COVID. Yeah. I think I was just getting mad at people. Uh, in, well, COVID, come on. <laughs> but yeah, shop shop workers, I meant every word of that. They're getting torn apart by people. They're no, yeah, working harder right. than you lot. Right. If so-and-so and so-and-so and some stupid business didn't show up to work in the office, maybe. no <laughs> one would care. But if Aldi should, you know, there'd be riots in the street. Oh. <laughs> I meant every word of that. Um... The shortest regular episode is an hour, what? An one hour, a minute 29. Oh, episode what those 25. This is one thing. Days. This is one God, they were doing an hour. This is one thing I didn't realize. Oh, there was, there's COVID pandemic episodes that only clock in at like an hour and a half. Because it, it was, this, this, yeah, it was this weird three having the chemistry. Hour very recent, yeah. Yeah, because it's hard to have that great a chemistry and make it going on where you're like, oh, there's a bit of a lag, so I don't want to talk over people like a certain other presenter on this channel. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the I longest really regular episode that. is three hours, 25 minutes, and 11 seconds. Uh, episode 181. I'm going to guess Tom was on that one. To be fair, I don't know. 
Which one was that? Oh, I mean, all the Adam made oh, it. I have, I'll have a look. I'll have a look. Yeah, yeah, Adam made a thing, didn't he? Like where? Well, we, one time we went. Oh yeah, because I was like, keep it short and sweet. And then as soon as he did one, he was like. I was born on this year. Just give his entire life story. It's like, oh, we went a bit long. He went, oh, everybody kept on watching it. Oh, it's Gun, gun, gun Raj. Colour Podcast 181, was it? Sorry, the longest one. Yeah. Was, what will be better, AEW Road Rager or NXT Great <laughs> That was recent. That's... On Whoa! Yeah. Was it us? Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm actually happy with that. Common misconception. I think, did we deliberately go over that long because of like, we don't want, because Tom was proud that he went long. I don't and know. And we were like, well, we've to got be to be fair, the longest. We're to, the regulars. To be fair, though, the only reason the podcast is this length is because of this week in wrestling. <laughs> when you think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a lot of wrestling. Uh, anyway, here's a quiz. Ah, please hand it oh. over to whoever selected this message to run the quiz. There you go. From near Pismo Beach, referenced in Bugs Bunny cartoons. Okay. What the left turn at Albuquerque? Uh, it's only seven questions. Ross has them. Number one. Matthew loves Volta. This has been well established, but Volta only recently got into the Hall of Fame. Which legend prevented Volta from going in the first time in episode 30? Is it A, Penny? Is it B, <laughs> me? Is it C, Rampage Brown? Or is it D, Vampiro? Uh, it's got to be Penny. I was going to go for... Are you, are you asking us both? Yep. I'll, well, I'll go for Penny as well this time. It was actually me. Oh, was my the birth, other legend. My birthday self-nomination and win <laughs> paid off keeping Vault out of the Hall of Fame until episode 169, in brackets, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, the Cultaholic Hall of Fame has many wonderful uh, multi-time inductees. Who right. was the first to become a member of that club? Was it Chris Jericho? Was it Linda, the WWE security guard? Oh. Was it still Wata or was it Geordie Pack? I'm going for Linda. Uh, Jody Park. It was Linda. Yeah. Oh. I remember I was laughing saying she was like the horse, but like the Ric Flair of the Hall of Fame. Interesting fact, Linda was also the first non-wrestler inductee in episode three. A true trendsetter is written down there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving the comedy. He's, he's doing good. I'm loving he's the doing filler, good. yeah. Number three, every once in a while there is a repeat nomination. Which of the following has been nominated more than once? Kevin Nash's pastor eat and shoot interview. Uh-huh. Negative ones commentary. Both A and B. <laughs> so I guess that means in the both yeah. of those things. Or none of the above. Nash's pasta. None of the above. It's actually C. Both A ah. and B. Negative one got twice? Yeah. Wow. Huh. Also nominated Oops. twice but not in was Kid Lycos. Oh. oh. Number four. Everyone who uh, everyone who has hosted the show is in the Hall of Fame in some form. Even the Hall of Fame is <laughs> in the Hall that, of Fame. What does that say? Wait, did we do the Hall of Fame in the Hall of Fame one week? I thought it was me. Yeah. Oh, that's crap. I went really meta. Of course people voted yeah. for that. Who was the first to receive the honor? So the people who have been on the podcast are all in the Hall of Fame. It's but who was, the, who was the first? Was it A, Sam, B, Ross, C, Jack, D, Mafu? Uh, Ross. I've got to say, it's all I know is that it's not Ross because I, not Ross. I remember... Pachiti put me in because I was off like early on, but I don't know if I was the first. I'll go for uh, I'll go for me, but I don't know. Ross, what did you say earlier about believing in yourself? Mm. That's 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 come true. It was Jack. Yeah. Episode sixteen when he was put in. By I was embarrassed Adam about it. By the Pacitti. way, I didn't, I didn't want it. I'm not an expert on this own podcast. Like <laughs> <laughs> my ninety five percent attendance. Number five, the longest streak of wins is shared by Mafu and Ross at four straight weeks. Oh. Which of the following hosts has the most three week win streaks? Oh. Is it Jack, Adam, Matthew, or Ross? I'll go for Adam. It can't be Adam. No. I'll go for Adam because I think that he's hosted, as we know, he's hosted the most. No, he's not you, a regular. You, you have a good streak now then with your crazy random stories about, ah, oh, last night, you know what? I realized how good shoes are. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll go <laughs> with you. Do you believe that I'm not a stoner? And then people, <laughs> go, people go, like, yeah, shoes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Yeah, shoes. <laughs> it's actually me. Hey. I've had seven unique three-week win streaks. Matthew's had four. Jack's had three. Adam had one oh, three-week streak. Okay, fair enough then. Adam had one three-week streak. Yeah. Wasn't... Oh, okay. So he well, it must be when I was off. Oh, okay. Podcast three weeks in a row. Yeah. Um, he did a lot of Zoom ones. Yeah. Number oh, six. Yeah. There have been five honorary members of the Hall of Fame, which... F- which of the following isn't one of them? Is not an honorary oh. member? Is it Titus O'Neil? Is it Oronda Rousey? Is it Marcus Rashford? Or is it Shad Gaspard? Who isn't in it? Who I, is who not isn't an honorary member? So who got in the normal way? I'll go for Ronda. It's Ronda. 
Ooh. Oh, why am I thinking? Why would we put Ronda in the thing? Ronda was nominated twice in episode 33 to guarantee her a win, but is not an honorary member. She won us the predictions contest against WrestleTalk. Yeah. Uh, oh, ti- oh right, do you remember right, that right. one would beat WrestleTalk. Uh, Titus was inducted following his greatest Royal Rumble slip. Marcus for his adv- advocacy. I can never say that Go word. Uh, Shad following his passing. Uh, other honorary members are Hannah Kimura and Brody Lee. What about Matthew's man? Matthew Mann got in proper. She's in. Oh, she year. got actually nominated yeah, and voted. She won the proper way, aye. Wow. She's in this year, isn't she? She's Fan on the, favorite. On the board next to me. Honored. Big Mama Botch. In brackets, don't call her Mrs. Botch. We're not married. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the Hall of Fame is typically voted on uh, out of three choices, but one time it wasn't. Oh, what? What was the fourth option? Swerico? Corbin's <laughs> going bald, the UK tra- chant. Corbin's going oh, bald. Oh, you said Corbin's going, going bald. Oh. Corbin, sorry. Oh, that makes more sense. Ryback's Airbnb or Jay Lethal is Ric Flair. Oh, oh my God. I've got no idea. Ryback's Airbnb. Oh, my God. I'll go for the Corbin Jan. Oh, yeah, right back, Airbnb. It was right back. Yeah. Uh, Tossed into the voting by Ross. The other items were winners from previous weeks. Okay. That's weird. Why, why, why did we do that? No idea. Weird. No Ric Flair. Because have an Airbnb. What was it about his Airbnb? It was all sort of like there was pictures on the wall of something in the, in the bogs. I can't right remember. Back. No, it wasn't right back. My hamstring's gone again. But there we go. There's the quiz. Oh, it's over. Fantastic. Thank you. Who's quiz? My... Yeah, your, yours, yeah. I think. Sorry, can you just log into there? Because I don't know why Zach's being weird. It's, it's nothing. Oh, no, you're the Feed Me More Townhouse of Positivity. <laughs> that's the. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the. Hello, oh, welcome to the. You'll be able to pick up on yours now. Next question. There's like, a motiv- see it now. There's like some sort of motivational thing on the toilet wall. Something about together. Great things are done together. We've got, a, we've got a dilemma now. Oh. Hello, lads. I've come across a bit of a dilemma. It starts. Oh, my stomach is grumbling. Nah. They, they, like I said, the message just ends. Don't don't know why that is. I've never seen that ever oh. happen before. Do you want me to your phone. Sorry, lads. Well, I don't know, it, don't know why. Hello, lads. I've come across a bit of a dilemma. So you won't lie. No with- matter what I do. No. With a wrestling twist. As you may or may not know, making friends in your 20s post-uni can be difficult. Yep. And making friends to watch and talk wrestling, which is nigh impossible. However, I've noticed uh, that the lovely young couple about my age who live next door are wrestling fans. Seems perfect, right? Here's the problem. (laughs) Now, I know this might make me want them to put a restraining order on me. Oh, God, where's this gun? Let me explain. My driveway is long and winding and goes past their living room window, which has their big TV on display as their curtains are always open. So every night when I come home, I can't physically help but see their evening entertainment. Sometimes they are playing many of the same PS5 games as me. Okay. Sometimes they're watching that episode of Friends where Monica hired Joey so <laughs> she could berate him at her job to earn respect from her co-workers. They, they just watched that one. But every Thursday, without fail, they are lighting the fuse, bringing the boom and watching Dynamite. <laughs> I live in New Zealand, hence Thursday. What time is it air in New Zealand? Thursday, isn't it the early morning? Yeah. Maybe I can't help but go out at 8 a.m. and okay. I've never <coughs> actually to work? talked to or met either of them, so I can't exactly knock on their door and say, hello, I've been looking through your windows for the last year and a half. <laughs> One of the mates. Year and a half. Oh, oh, that's a long time. Or they'll think I'm a stalker like DDP and call the cops or worse. But if they call you a stalker, or, just or call go... the cops or worse, bury me at King of the Ring. But if they say that, you're a stalker, just go, like DDP, they'll go, oh, he's a wrestling fan. And they go, I wasn't watching wrestling back then. You go, box. <laughs> so my question is, how can I introduce myself and hopefully find some new wrestling buddies without them thinking I'm a diddler? <laughs> and not even in the cultaholic <laughs> sense of the word. <laughs> I started to wear wrestling shirts every time I take the bins out. That's strategic. Good That's to know good. it fails oh. so far. <laughs> but if by chance they listen to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast, yes. hello, the guy in Come 37A on. who drives a white Nissan would love to watch the wrestling with you. <laughs> this is like those creepy- Cheers, boys. Love your work. Sam from Wellington, New Zealand. Thank you, Sam. That was really funny. That was funny. That was really well written because I think it's a bit self-deprecating as well. But He knows. Yeah. But um, it reminds me of those like things that used to be all right for some reason in the paper, like to the gorgeous woman sat opposite me on the metro. I remember them. I do remember How them. How is that allowed? Mm. Um, 
There's still a met- the Metro newspaper on there. I'm reassured immediately. Yeah, possibly. I'm reassured immediately by the fact that he's not after romance. It's just for friendship. It's a yeah. couple. It's not like a girl on her own. I think it's fine. But I don't know how to answer his question, though. I think it's quite simple. You look out your window and see where they're outside in the front garden, parting about doing whatever they're doing. They might be getting in the car. You've got to be quick. In that run, a- yeah. run after them. Just <laughs> pretend you've taken up jogging, right? And you see them out in the front and you think, right, now's the time for me to go on my jog. Go down your driveway and just as you're passing, just shout over, hey, that Cody Rhodes is a bit of a dick, isn't he? And then get the conversation going. You know they like the fuse and bring the boom. Yeah. They watch the dynamite. Just, say, just yeah. bring up anything from dynamite. Or, or you see them and you go, oh, um, wrestling. And they just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then you go, oh, you're not like wrestling. No, 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 we don't know yet. And you go, oh, you didn't know. <laughs> you better cause. Oh, I'm tripping. When he walks past the window and sees them watching dynamite, put your face almost on the glass of the window <laughs> and go, it's clobbering time. <laughs> I was going to say that's the other option. You could just wait until they go to bed, right, and scale. <laughs> The side of the house, and just at the window, tap on it like that, and just say through the window, two sweet me bros while they're fast asleep. Knock on the window, go, get the Glock, shoot the. <laughs> ah! Get a bin, right, and fill it with petrol. Get some of your clothes, throw it in there, set it on fire, ring their doorbell, <laughs> steal a coat off the wall rack. Throw it in your bin and set it on fire. They'll understand. Uh, <laughs> They'll understand. It's just that the two super one really got me because I didn't imagine it from the point of view of him. I imagined them in the bedroom and you can barely hear him going, Who's me? <laughs> Through the glass. <laughs> Who's me? <laughs> me? What? <laughs> you see the Forty Towers episode where Basil's up the ladder like that on the window and he falls back. It just reminded me of that. Oh, man. So you got yeah. multiple options there. Yeah, all, plenty. All feasible. Or walk past them, you know, like, Oh, it's them. Oh no, someone's ringing me. And you like go on YouTube music. Boom, it's time to ignite. <laughs> Hello. <you know. laughs> Nothing. Oh, bastard. <laughs> oh, Friends <man>. is crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a brilliant aim at my oh, cheeks. Right but I mean, it's part of me like, ha ha ha. But I'm like, oh yeah, what would I do in that situation? Because I'd absolutely be like, hey, we can, you know, no sense us both, you know. Paying for fight TV, well, bloody week. Um, it's just. I feel like that's not going to solve the wider issue, which is very true. That after uni and school and everything, oh, you have where you where you're with your friends every day, and then suddenly everyone's off and doing their own stuff, and then after uni, all those friends go off and that. Yeah, it's not going to solve the wider issue. You're just going to find two friends. So maybe find some local wrestling shows or whatever you're into. Apparently, there's some sort of app. I saw a lad, right, this pre-pandemic I went to school with. I hadn't seen him for years, right? He's called Chris. And I was like, oh, how are you doing? I just saw him in the pub, like, out of nowhere one night. And I was like, oh, who are you here with? And, and I was I was all like, oh, I'm just here with people from work and stuff. And then he was like, um, I'm here on this app. And there's a group of us over there. And I looked over, and there was a table of people having a wonderful time. And it was just called, like, Meetup or something. I don't know what you're talking about. And yeah. I was like, oh, that's crazy. And I thought, he's a braver man than me. I'd be so scared in that situation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is, the weirdest thing is, you don't appreciate, obviously COVID's obviously taught us a lot about, but you don't appreciate when you, without having that mutual thing, like wrestling, to go up and meet to and stuff, how bleeding hard it is when you reach your mid-20s, late not in the teens, 20s anymore, and you're like, hey, friends, let's meet up like we used to. Can't. Working, got a kid, got the wifey, got the blah, 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 mortgage, blah, excuse me. Like it's, it's just very, very hard. But if there's an event, like there's a bit of wrestling, oh, okay, you know, go meet up there. So I really appreciate how easy it made it to meet up with yeah. lots of people at the same time. <coughs> mm. Go to wrestling, where everybody knows your name. It's probably where like, everyone's glad that you came. It's like <laughs> normal, normal people will meet up and go to the football. Right. We go to watch the fake fighting. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. so so yeah, yeah. That's the thing. What, what? There's no no resting in New Zealand. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, of course. Because then will you be. go there, and they'll go there. Oh, excuse me, do I know you from oh, the Bushwhackers? Yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so new, one New Zealand person says a new New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> Just go past the window. Like that. Good day, mate. Lick their heads when you <laughs> <laughs> when you get thrown out the house. Walk like that. <laughs> 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 rumble. Uh, <laughs> wow that was 
a mailbag that section and a mailbag half. That. Good that. God, all hits this week. Mm. Uh, if you have any wonderful things, poet lariats, queries about your life, or the word diddler, please, 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 <laughs> please send them to mailbagagotholic.com. Mm. Now it's time for Riss Piss, according to this. <laughs> Hello, lads. Hope you're all doing well and have eaten something before doing this week's probably already two-hour-long podcast recording session. Let's have a quick look. Three hours. Haha, three hours. Jokes three hours? Yep. This week in wrestling took two hours. Let's crack on. Yeah. <laughs> what? There's no pay-per-view? What are we doing here? Well, we kept, stop- draft. We kept stopping to talk about, like... Tom. <laughs> no... <laughs> Let's crack on. Anyway, right, yeah. um, you see what I said. You see what I said a little bit when I get my explanatory anecdote for this email of the way. Oh, this will help. A new season of Hell's Kitchen is on Netflix in my country. I have no idea if this is true in the UK. Hell's Kitchen. And one of the contestants talked at length about their love of root vegetables <laughs> and how if they could be <laughs> anything at all in the world, they'd be a root vegetable. What is going on? After seeing that, my sister and I decided that if we were edible instead of you, <laughs> oh, God, we'd be French toast and a sunny side egg. Sunny side up egg with a nice runny yolk, respectively. Okay. That, along with the common <laughs> description of wrestling and AEW specifically as variety shows akin to buffets, having something for everybody, inspired me to send in this Reese's Pieces Try Not to Get Hungry Challenge Edition TM. It's pretty simple. Mafu will read the wrestlers' names and you guys will tell us what kind of food or drink they are in the buffet that is what? the wrestling world. What is this? Feel free to also name food groups like root vegetables <laughs> or elaborate food experience type things like Korean barbecue that you have to cook for yourself even though you're in a restaurant or silly birthday... I know a Korean barbecue work. Or silly birthday uh, party chocolate <coughs> fountains or anything else like that. All right, I'm sticking on the buffet theme, Lee. I love the, the, the what this brings out in people, the creativity and imagination. I love the acid people. Well, no, they and the to, drugs. <laughs> yes, we have to, we have to, we have to come up with the food. Oh, so these are all the good gods are names. Delete one if you want. Uh, Kenny Omega, what? red wine. Why is that? Just like red wine, isn't he? I think Ooh, Kenny Omega's. He's probably a, a a steak, but a fancy one. Or a volavant. He's a fillet. He's a volavant or red wine. Uh, cheese pizza. Cheese pizza, right, okay. Don Callis. Don Callis is a very, very sassy prawn. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I can't think of anything better than that. The bag of salad I get with a palmo that I say I'm going to eat, but they never do. Oh. <laughs> the Young Bucks. <sighs> what are they? They're a They're, like, um, cheese string. Popping candy. Uh, the feeling you get after you've eaten an entire bag of sweets by yourself, even if it's got shareable size on them. Regret. Hangman Adam Page. He's a he's a steak. He is oh. a T-bone steak. Yeah, he's a steak. Aye, right, fillet steak. Adam Cole, baby. Oh. He is a nice fruit smoothie. I think Adam Cole Health. is a... Oh, man. I'm really struggling with Adam Cole. Uh, oh, man. I've re- yeah, I'll go with Ross. I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, One with a good kick. One of those pot noodles where you just get the amount of water per <coughs> noodle right and it's perfect. You don't want it too watery. Adam Cole's not a pot noodle. No, because they're good in small doses. Okay. But you don't want a 45-minute pot noodle. Uh, Britt Baker. She is chewing gum. A carrot. Uh, there's Pink Panther wafers yet from Asda. <laughs> mm. Becky Lynch. Um, mint sauce. Becky Lynch is a vindaloo. Ooh. A vindaloo? Straight fight. Oh. Ah, boo. She's the best flavor of Doritos, red. <laughs> Unless you're in America. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Bailey. Bailey uh, is. Jelly Baby. Just one. All right, packet of Jelly Baby. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, she's something that used to be good, but now is melted so down nice. into one human sized Jelly Baby. The cost of Freddo's? A Freddo is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, it used to be lovely, wholesome, lovely price, but this today, bit of a bastard. Oh, I know. You know the really long uh, strawberry cable you get? It's supposed to be a snake. Uh-huh. I swear they used to be nice. God, the crap. Oh. <laughs> Even for 20 pence. It's like, these don't taste any... Anyway, yeah, you're that. Sasha Banks. Oh. Ooh. Packet of frazzles. What's this? Frazzles. Bit of a dirty... Good f- God. Sasha Banks is a doner kebab. <laughs> no. 
a dirty That's a sign <laughs> to bring to a wrestling show, Ross. <coughs> dirty food, but also <laughs> so nice. Oh, because she's oh, a heel. All yeah. oh, right. I think this is a nice clean meal. Like, like do I eat those? Um, spag bol. Okay. Charlotte. My mom does a nice one. Charlotte is what it. Oh. Charlotte <laughs> is. One of those restaurants where you go and you get served, it costs like a million pounds and you get served a meal which is like as big as that Windows logo on the back of that laptop. One of them, whatever that is, insert food there. What? Aye. <laughs> you ever been to one of those restaurants where you just get served like a tiny bit of food but it costs like a million quid? I'm aware of no. those places. Like, I'm aware they me. exist, but I'm I mean, I've aware. never been personally. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Uh, but this is, this is Matthew Bocciolini <coughs> we're speaking to. True, me. true. <laughs> oh, Mr. Botchamania, right this way. Uh, Charlotte is American bacon. Okay. She's not as good as others' bacon. Oh. Um, jungle Boy. Oh, 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 oh. Those little biscuits with jungle characters on. When you were a kid, they got like biscuit uh, on the outside and a chocolate uh, yeah, inside. Yeah. What are they called? Andrew, you must know. Jungle <coughs> biscuits. <coughs> Cadbury's, yeah. Like the bottom bit were curdy. Oh, it was just the bottom, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. just the yeah. 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 What were they called? Jungle jungle biscuits. I, I think Jungle Boy's something like refreshing, like a Solero. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like uh, a sexy sausage sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what have we got? <laughs> Sammy Guevara. Very oh, it might, very might see, might see a, a trend. A lovely there. paella. <laughs> I'm going to say he's a panda pop. He used a to wear that pop. panda hat. Oh, okay. Do you remember Panda Pops? I do remember mm. Panda Pop. What uh, was your favourite uh, flavour? Mine was blue. blue yeah, yeah, blue. Oh, sent, nice. Sent the, me uh, wild when I was a kid, Panda Pops. It was like stro- strawberry ice cream flavour oh, or something like that. Oh, got something ridiculous. Panda Pop. Andrew, do you remember Panda Pops? I do remember. Panda what was your favourite flavour of Panda Pop? I like the red one. Red one? Thank fair you, enough, fair enough. Yeah. Oh, Panda like Pop. Bring them back. No, they're full of crap. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Kids shouldn't be, no, no human being should be drinking. Oh, you finished school? Have this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll get you through until tea time. Sammy Guevara um, was also called Four Locos. Okay. Speaking of illegal things. Oh. Darby Allen. Dust. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, probably a... <laughs> do you remember... All right, okay. Um, you remember when Homer makes a thing? It's like a stick of butter and then he fries oh. it. Well, and then he just peels the bit off. Darby Allen's just the bit that's peeled off. Oh, God, yes, I, I was trying to think what's like the most gothy food. <laughs> gothy food. I'd say Darby Allen is a pizza that I've just cooked. And I haven't had anything to eat all day. I've took out the oven. It's fallen right on its bastard face. <laughs> I've looked around and then put it back on the dish and pretend uh, the five second rule is a real thing. Half the top has fallen off. Yeah, like, it's this mess on the floor. And I'm like, ah, MJF. Um, sour skills. Oh, I'm going for sweet more, more than buffet food now. MJF is a bottle of mustard. Yeah. Hate. English, people. English mustard. Disgusting. Because it's English. Do you not like English mustard? No. No, French mustard's oh. all right. I can't all deal mustard. with mustard. Not really. Ross strongly dislikes mustard. I strongly oh. dislike mustard. <laughs> I hope Matt Hardy's not on this list. <sighs> He's bitter, like myself. So I have to go with uh, expensive coffee. Okay. Wardlow. Wardlow is just a giant ham. Yeah, he's like a honey glazed gammon. Yeah, he, went to Toby Carvery a couple of weekends ago. Oh, by the way, did you? They've changed the glazing from honey to I've forgotten, but they've changed it, <laughs> and I was furious. Got the edge of our seat. We were. I know. I f- what was it? It was pomegranate. No, uh, pomegranate. What does that taste like, I don't know. Didn't get it. You didn't get it. No. Oh, I'll be trusted to see what it tastes like. Still be ground. Just didn't Fair look enough. as appealing as a honey glaze. Because mm. it looks so good in the adverts, yeah. please. Oh, it looks good in the yeah, flesh. You love as well. honey, don't you? Even when it's behind the perspex in the, the new Toby Carvery. Mm. Not like the old Toby Carvery. <laughs> Toby Carvery is <laughs> definitely an indie name. Yeah. Toby <laughs> Carvery. Comes out with a butcher's. Yeah. Mm. Let's have a butcher's. <laughs> Done. How much do you want? I'll give you a lot. <laughs> and the stubs are uh, I'm going with one of those hams you can boil. I'll go for ham as well. John Moxley. He's a proper rough honeycomb. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's it. um, Moxley is a... Like a a greasy spoon burger. 
Like it's good though. It's proper. After hearing the stories uh, on Rennie's thing, I'm gonna say he's one of those sandwich shops you go in where old women serving you like eighty. Hello, love. What can I get? But you, you know it's gonna be good though. Yeah. Oh, you know that yeah. the older the biddy, the even better if, the food. Even if they are smoking cigarettes while they're serving like, you the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They actually died years ago. Like, I've got I've got work, baby. <laughs> Can't be bothered with nothing like dying. Uh, Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth Rollins is a. Uh, He's some form of taffy. <laughs> annoying, mm. annoying and complex, but also like very, very nice. No, like a taffy, like sweet, like oh. gets stuck on your teeth and stuff. And you just He's a around. meringue. He's a lemon oh, meringue. I don't like those. I like meringue. He's one of those packets of, oh, the worst sweet in the world. Whether those velvets. Purple velvet. Oh, per, um, yeah. In the quality street. No, no, like no, the no, little no, fizzy no. ones. Oh, then the 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 brown ones. Oh, yeah. uh, p- p- palm palm of violets. Oh, palm of violets. Them. Like they they, they taste, taste like what my grandma's bathroom would smell like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. foul. That's Seth Rollins. He's palm of violet. <laughs> oh God. Roman Reigns. Um, oh, we've pulled. We've got people to I'm going to play my fillet steak card here again. Yeah. Okay. I know. I, I gave Hangman a T-bone. Mm-hmm. I'll say that Roman is. Um, I've used my I've used my card. Uh, just loads of sausages, <laughs> brisket and burnt ends. Oh, oh. oh. big E. Oh man, oh, um, bollocks! An entire cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mixed grill. <laughs> mixed A rack grill. of ribs. That's it. Uh, the entire meat counter at a Tay Barnes. I've never been at Tay Barnes, but I've heard I've it's like... Tay Barnes, but yeah, good. It's lots of things from around the world, isn't it? One of those Texas steakhouse places. Mm. That's that's biggie. Horns and all. Bobby Lashley. Full English breakfast. With extra everything. Bobby Lashley is a lean chicken breast. I was, I was about to say the uh, grilled chicken breast <laughs> you can get from certain places in town. Yeah, yeah, it looks, you know, not a lot of trans no, no, no. Now on him, is there? No. <laughs> Watching what he eats. I'm finding the podcast host favourite, Volta. Well, I'll let you sour, that sauerkraut. One. <laughs> a bratwurst. It's not a sauerkraut. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's bratwurst. Okay. Yeah. I had one at the simple, that fancy market that came to Newcastle last Christmas. Oh, it's never oh. Come up. Never oh, come we're getting them soon, won't we? Yeah. No, it's never come back. That big fancy market. It's never coming back. Yeah, they said it's in, bollocks. In the Chronicle. It was. It was they really? They no. reported it. They remember that nice market? It's never coming. It back. wasn't really? very good. Like, it just wasn't very good, was it? Wasn't I mean, it? I like the. It uh, went all the way down Northumberland Street, all the way down oh, past no, Monument. God, no, you're right. I'm thinking of the selection of foods. It Christmas time for shopping, busiest time for that area. What you did not uh, want? Was, no, no, yeah, no, true, uh, true, yeah, true. Anywhere else other than. Uh, yeah, you're there right. wasn't so much variation. Right. You're right. So, yeah, but you got a nice brot verse there. No, so no, you're completely right. Rob. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah, no, that was not a good <laughs> idea at all, was it? Uh, Tamina. <coughs> not Tamina. Tamina is just like a box of chocolates. Never know that forest. You know you're gonna uh, get. Yeah. Oh. But you I, do. I do. Know is it gonna I be like, gonna go is it gonna be like WrestleMania? Is it going to be like, you know, she's tag teaming with Natalia where she's playing the subdued role? Probably that Is it going to be like... It's, it's going to be that. No, that no, one, yeah. is, it, is it going to be like April 2020 where she's 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 telling Bailey and Sasha Banks where to go? It's like a box of chocolates. Tamina is a wonderful skewer at a barbecue with some meat on it. It's got some peppers on it. I just want one of them right now, I think. <laughs> That's what I'm just thinking. Uh, yeah, I think she's a... a she meal... deserves more. A meal deal where you get the sandwich you want and you just get the two things you don't want because just because it's cheaper to get that oh, even though you didn't want to those. You are disgraceful. I agree. <laughs> Lindsay Dorado. Bag um, of ready salted crisps. See, I'm trying not... No, well, no obviously not. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something that's not Mexican, but I can't. So I'll say he's an enchilada. <laughs> so bad, isn't it? That? So bad. Not even walkers. L walkers, they call them. <laughs> That other uh, one, that, that one you buy at Asda that's got like the white packets. No. Nah. Oh, what's salt and shade? Do you know what? Is it that one that's got? I don't know. My oh, no, you mean like, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> cheap, cheap knockoff ready salt and shade. Oh, you don't like Lindsay? Do you know what? Lindsay's like, oh. my, actually, Lindsay's my favorite, and my favorite Mexican dish is fajitas. So I'll go fajitas. Okay. He's fajita. Lindsay Dorado is fajitas. <laughs> this is a dumb question. Is he still on WWE? Yeah. I legitimately couldn't tell you about checking. Like, yes, he is. He is. He? But oh. Grand Metal League's request is released, so it could get awkward for Lindsay. Oh no, he's gonna get what? 
What's a number lower than zero? Come on, man, Lindsay. Come on. Sorry. Not all of them, but I mean, is what it is. Uh, BLT. Okay. Well, I'll do. <laughs> Say that for Lindsay. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very anticlimactic, wasn't it? But what a lovely, lovely wrist piss that was. Yeah. Refreshing, wasn't it? It certainly was. Like all the foods and drinks and condiments that we were asked to describe them as. Yeah. I'm so hungry now. I know. God. Thank you very much for sending us that. You appreciate the originality and imagination that went into that. Do we say that person's name? What's up? Oh. Say it again, just in Speak case. Yourself, Why are you doing that? If you have any wrist piss of your own, does it have to be food or weird? But you know what? You let your imaginations run wild. Oh my god! I just read what the shit. Oh. Moi, moi, keys, keys from B in the Philippines. B man. <laughs> moi, moi, keys, keys. What does that even mean? <laughs> well, it's the editor's thing, isn't it? Ooh, keys, keys. Mm. Yeah. Sweet. He's Andrew, do you feel sad that Owen's proven himself to be like a despicable friend and he casts off one friend for the next as soon as someone else comes along? Well, he's he a doing, career boy. Has he been yeah. doing that? Yeah, of course he has. Course. He was my friend first, man and Sam's. Then you came along and he ditched us. And now he's Joel's best mate. The other, Joel the editor. Is he? Hi. What are best mates down there? <sighs> oh. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah. Camaraderie in the workplace should not exist. <laughs> we are here to work. Exactly. Ask Jack. You go home to play. Mailbag at cultaholic.com. It's Cultaholics. The question. Ah, what an even longer than usual episode. Smack, Smackdown. Oh, God. Yes. They've benefited from the They've draft. They've benefited, yeah. Smackdown, I'll Smackdown. say as well. And there's just time for no, one last Smackdown. Jeff Hardy. They can read the title. Roman Reigns. Ah, the Smackdown. big question. No, no, Our favourite bit of the show. Drew McIntyre is there. Smackdown. Who's benefiting from the draft? From Smackdown. Smackdown. That what we yeah. have just done. Um, should we do individuals as well? Jai Lee. Gili. Yeah, not Hit Row. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a bad oh, time. Hit Row are there. They're good until yeah. Brucey Fee starts writing their rhymes. Smackdown is the answer. Smackdown. What do you think? Okay, in terms of brands, oh. yeah, I'll say Smackdown as well. But There we go. Any particular things you're looking forward to seeing nah. for one person? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow, I'm really, I'm bailing on this. I'd say Kevin Owens going to Raw. There's an individual okay. I see where I'm thinking, yeah, we'll make you the focal point. Uh, Apart from Big E. <laughs> excuse me. I'm looking forward to seeing, at first, because Big Sweaty Men get a chance, uh, Ridge Holland and see what he does. But I don't know mm. how it'll go. Shame is having five-star matches on SmackDown. Mm. Roman Reigns is his another one Gables for Smackdown. Smackdown's one. Yeah. Well, I Gable Stevenson's benefited more than anyone, I guess, bypassing NXT. Completely. True, true. Mm. So there we go. Big question answered. <laughs> 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 That's what you waited for. No, yeah. one, no one waits for the big question. So we got, no, really, we, do we got till there was three hours on the recording before wrist piss. So Godness knows how long this podcast is. Godness knows. But we've had such a lovely time. Mm. Though, it is Smackdown, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But no one's getting drafted at NXT again, though. No, no. That? Well, so some people leave there, but nobody goes there. I swear, did, am I imagining things? <laughs> Have they not drafted that before? Was someone with NXT before? 2019, though, was three ways, right. wasn't it? Oh, right, right, yeah, thank you. But we've had a nice time. Bye. Oh, I Jack, know. what have you got for us until next week to keep people tied and over? I'll be back on the right in on oh, Wednesday. Good. It'll go out on cultaholic.com. Also, um, I didn't do the stream this week with Owen because I couldn't talk. But my voice is slowly coming back. Hopefully the cough goes away. And we should be doing the uh, Cultaholic FC um, end of season awards on next week's Twitch stream, where we'll give awards such as, uh, oh God, uh, player of the season, goal of the season, and the five pound Ken award, Mm. which is because he won fan favorite three times in a row. So now it's named after him. Yeah. And who... Who owns Call Hog FC? Adam Pacitti. Oh, In so it's K- another evil billionaire. That's fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Ross, what have you got for us on top? Uh, while we're hearing about the end it's of one billion, story man. there with the end of season thing, I'll be bringing in a new dawn for insert pun name that somehow con- contains Cultaholic in it. For on FIFA 22, I'll be creating a Cultaholic FC variant and then creating the oh. presenters to play in that team positions well I'll be on to be determined oh, yeah you're on the wing what position will Yay. I be I don't know where did you play in real life aye fullback fullback but, but these days obviously in modern football the fullback's a way more important role and I don't think I'd have been able to do I mean that. I'll be playing a 4-3-3 like the old Chelsea way okay. Makalele Lampard Nessien Drogba Robin and Duff I'd probably be a right back <laughs> in that yeah I'd be a right you'll back you'll be either Robin or Duff 
<laughs> I'm Duff. <laughs> it's Robbie, I'm Robbie. <laughs> um, so that'll be on Wednesday at 1 p.m. BST. Um, <coughs> Sunday, 4.15 BST. I've got a straight to hell with Jonah. And I've said that loudly because his name's all in oh. capitals for emphasis. Uh, the yeah. former Bronson Reed of NXT fame. He's on there. Learn some things about his, uh, his his release and how that came about and how he's been telling everybody he signed a contract at a certain point, but his wife reminded him, no, no, your release was much worse than what you've been telling people. So find out what that is all oh, about oh. during Straight to Hell Ooh. on Sunday, 4.15 BST. Oh, lovely tease. I'm good at the teasers. Ooh, uh, don't don't we know it? Uh, I will have the lovely return of the Cold Dollar Classic Smackdown review, Ooh. myself and Tom. And that's her. <laughs> no, I'm making it short and sweet. Thank you. Also, before we end our CD, oh, well this podcast was executive produced by the accolade. You can go to patreon.com forward slash call the holic and sign up for oh, and, that, and only that. I'll get my phone out. Slack, I do not recommend for anybody. I don't know what's happening with my phone there. <laughs> Reno 2200, Noah Anderson, <coughs> Mark Leslie. Lewis Markham and Michael Staley, the last bosses of Cold the Holly. Thank you, everyone. And sorry for coughing there during the middle of that. I'm sorry. He was coughing out of nervousness to be in the presence of such greatness. I was. Uh, yeah. And of course, mailbag, I call it.com for all your thoughts, queries, and stalker needs. But right now, we've been doing this for a while. Jack is currently dying. We've enjoyed doing this. So we're going to point at the screen. This one right here that's gone off about twice during the recording of this. And on the count of three, say the very famous expression to send us all home. One, two, three. Join, join us. us. We also said join us as opposed to else because we couldn't think of anything. Isn't that great? Yeah.